It's getting foggy. Hello everybody and welcome to the stream. I hope you enjoyed that weirdness. You guys were enjoying the carriage sounds from the game so much I decided I'd play around with my ASMR soundboard. I <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed that. That was a good start to the day. Everybody guessing one by one what the hell the sounds were. I liked people thinking that the carriage was keyboard ASMR. <laughs> when it came to the rain, we had a few interesting ones. Some I won't mention. Some were just funny and just off. <laughs> you didn't throw us out the window? Not yet, but I could. I could. Oh my god, Nate already with the Akasupa. Oh, Jisan. <laughs> Thank you for the huge donation. I hope you're having a good day. I also saw an Akka came in through Streamlabs. I will check those at the end of the stream today. I had a fun morning. I don't know about you guys. It turns out it's still icy where I am. It didn't look icy. Uh, <laughs> um, 
I fell on my ass out there. <laughs> Uh, and then Dog decided it was a good idea to try and protect me by climbing on top of me. That was fucking fun. <laughs> I struggled to get him off of me to get back up. 160 pound Dog deciding he wanted to lay down on top of me to protect my body. Oh my god. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I have a really badly <clears throat> skinned knee and elbow. And like a really sore left side of my neck. Other than that, I'm perfect. And we're going to be fine today. Don't worry about it. But yeah, that was just a fun, fun moment. <laughs> oh, she's on your back. How dare. How dare. I got up. I'm doing fine. He's doing his best. Yeah, dog thought he was helping. But it was an interesting start to the day. That's why I was slightly late today. But we're good anyway. I feel comfortable. I got home. I got into a warm shower. I had some turkey bacon and eggs. Now I'm perfect. Okay. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good start to the day. Um, we are back with the house in Fada Morgana. It should be another interesting day. If you don't remember, when we left off, we were given the choice whether we wanted to look into the mirror or not. And me, being the smart ass that I was, was like, oh, I'll finally see what I look like. And instead, when we looked into the mirror, all we saw was pure darkness. So then we reached out, touched the darkness, and now we've been sucked into this beautiful moonlit night. Or apparently it's getting foggy, says someone named Giselle. Means I probably shouldn't have done that in my own voice. That's probably a beautiful young maiden I've just given my old man voice. You are the darkness, now I know. And knowing's half the battle. But yeah, we're going to continue this story. We're going to see where it goes. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. I hope you're all having a good day. Um, was there anything else I had to say? I don't believe so. Just that we'll actually finally do a proper super chat and everything else reading at the end of the stream. Okay, <clears throat> let's kill my personal music and we will dive into the game. It's getting foggy. Looks like it might rain. Maybe we should take a little break. You want to keep going? Oh, all right then. Wow. Imagine that was the entire... Oh, shit. This is the house. That's the tower. The tower at least had while it was in Spain. So does that mean this has got to be connected to the beast? Which on the wig? I have many wigs, but if you're telling me to use a wig right now, then you're spoiling me. I don't know who Giselle is yet. Chill. <laughs> this deep in the forest? Thank you. Very much. You must be tired after such a long journey. This is the mansion I'm looking for. Yes? Oh, I love that sound design. I realized immediately that was a different sound effect from the recurring one. This is the carriage actually coming to a stop. You even heard the horse neigh a tiny bit. Oh, that's great. He could have said something. Oh, well. I should get going, I guess. Does no one live here? But if that's the case, Legato. then why was I... such a big door? Please open. It's not locked, I guess. Okay, so she's gotten into the mansion. Legato. That may be a mistake, my lady. <laughs> but hopefully, you'll be okay. I wonder... If the window's open... Oh, I didn't mute my phone either. One second. Apologies. There we go. Don, what a hint of light. Hello? Is anyone there? Please don't tell me it's actually abandoned. I suppose I can't know without looking around a bit more. What do we have here? Drapes? I see a little light beyond. Oh, there's the angel window again. Michael the Archangel. And new beautiful music. God, I love this game so much. It's always so beautiful. Sorry, I'm just vibing with this for a minute. 
this. It's so beautiful. Okay. <laughs> it's so pretty. It looks like an angel. Why would someone cover this up? It's beautiful. With a little more light, it'd be... Oh, this has to be. Please, do not touch the drapes. <gasps> or the windows. Oh, it's... N Hello? No, different hair. Similar, though. Hello! White-haired man. Mick Mikkel? Michael? Mitchell? Oh, whoa. He is gorgeous. Look at the green tunic. Oh, my God. He's wearing my favorite colors. Like a maroon purplish top over top of it. The robes. Uh, um. Michelle? It's Michelle. Michelle. Thank you. So, French then? We're in France right now? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry for coming uninvited. But, um. I did announce myself. Is this, um, your mansion? It is. Thank goodness. I was afraid it was deserted. I suspect you would have preferred if the house were abandoned. Oh, not at all. I'd be scared to death staying in this dark mansion all by myself. This seems important. Is this like the original timeline or something? So somebody said in chat it was Michelle. So we're going to go with Michelle for now. Um, yeah. If it happens to be something else, please tell me later on. <laughs> but I saw some other people suggesting it was Mikau. Um, we'll see. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we were well intended. But I do think I could. it could do with some light. That way you could see where you were walking. I'm sure this room would look splendid illuminated. Not necessarily. I make do perfectly well as things are. How can you see when it's so dark? I have an abundance of candles and oil for lamps. I am not in want of means of creating light. Oh, he... This is awesome. It is Michelle? Okay. Michelle, Michelle. My shell? Michelle? Okay, we're gonna go with Michelle for now. We're getting conflicting information. It is not your place to criticize my lifestyle. If you need light, you are free to leave. If you are in need of money, help yourself to some of the furniture. There's a village not far from here. Trade it for food and make your way to a larger town. I'm no longer able to freely return to the city. I cannot go back there. Michel. Michel. Okay, Michel. Okay. <laughs> Michelle. 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 Oh, please. Don't chase me out. I see. And do you ask this of me aware of how people refer to this mansion? They say... That a witch lives here. Not merely a witch. A cursed witch. If you remain here, you too shall likely suffer your own destruction. You're worried for my well-being? His face is great as well. The emotions are changing so slightly. And yeah, the way he aligns with the wings and his name being Michelle. Right in front of the angel Michael taking on Michael's wings. That's great. Which or not, my mind is made up. Which will strike you first, I wonder? Regret or the curse? You seem to be doing just fine. It's only a tale. The witch is real. Very much so. It is not a legend, nor a fairy tale. I love the closed eyes as well. He's speaking from memory right now. The witch. Well, the witch's name was Morgana. He 
is me. Well, now that's a lie, because we know your name's Michelle. N nice try, Michelle, but it's Morgana that's the witch. Unless he's just basically saying, I am cursed too. Oh. Now the mansion's all black and white. Except for the glowy mirror. It's actually reflecting now, though. Do we want to look at the mirror? Mishkan. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Reincarnation, maybe? It could be. I would think, if anything, he might be a reincarnation of... Not that one. Whoops. Yeah. God, I forgot what her hair looked like. The girl with white hair, if anything. We never knew what her name was. Maybe Michelle turned into... M Michelle. <laughs> I don't know. He had that look about him, though. He was very beautiful. He looked very similar. So yeah, that could be a thing, but no way. Not me, Sal. <laughs> Not me, Sal. <laughs> God damn it. What was that? Giselle. Oh my. What is the master, ma matter, master? Why are you just standing in place? There's nothing there. The maid did not seem to have seen anything. You made to ask her about the scene you had just witnessed. What, what the f- Sorry. What the fuck? Yeah, I'd say I have seen a ghost. Master? You look like you've seen a ghost. What is the matter? How about a little rest before we move on? You do not wish to remain here? <laughs> Still not fond of mirrors. Yes, yes. Now let us be off. I too dearly wish for you to return to your old self as soon as possible, Master. If your desire is to push onward, then I could hardly be happier. Now, follow me. Please tell me she's not going to stay like that. Should I have not looked in the mirror? Maybe I didn't shouldn't have touched the mirror <laughs> oh god what in the junji ito yeah that was very uzumaki mm. and we're just rolling with that apparently he followed the maid's lead returning to the living room from there you climbed a set of stairs your hands sliding through the dust that had settled on the ebony railing when you stepped out of sight of the mirror the maid returned to normal oh thank god you had been on the verge of remembering something but you were no longer in a position to be concerned about such things. But the chill in the air within the mansion seemed to have intensified. Standing at one end of a long corridor, you asked the maid. When was the mansion built? I'd imagine you know more about that than me, master. <laughs> yes, I know. You've not yet regained your memories. I was simply teasing you. I've been a servant of this house for many, many years. But the truth is, I do not know everything about it. All I know is that the mansion is cursed, and that it has brought misfortune upon its residents. Since times of old. I can make a conjecture as to when it began, but I believe you should figure it out for yourself, Master. There's no guarantee my perspective is the correct one. Now, let us proceed. Interesting. So even she hasn't been here since the beginning. But that doesn't mean she isn't still the witch Morgana. I still don't trust her. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know that the witch Morgana is evil. I just still think she's probably Morgana. I'm glad we have finally figured out, like the game has handed it to us immediately that yeah, the witch's name was Morgana. I was on the verge of remembering something when looking in the mirror. And when that happened, she started to distort. So, I guess she isn't the mansion either if she doesn't remember when it was built. Unless she came into being, maybe she's a manifestation of the curse. The curse that the witch put upon the building. That's why she doesn't remember it being created, but she remembers pretty much everything else and is tied to it. And that's why when he started to remember things about the mansion, he started to not see her as herself anymore. That's a feeling that I'm getting. Maybe, hmm, maybe I'm Morgana in this if i'm the original master if i'm her master rather than the master of the manor i would be morgana mm. 
You and the maid traveled down the dimly lit corridor. While the layout of the house was the same as in the eras of the flaxen-haired boy and the beast, the bleak, colorless gloom felt incredibly dreary. On the wall, partway down the hall, hung a painting. The painting, which depicted a beautiful landscape, was oddly entrancing. You did not have time to appreciate the artwork. Your hand in the maid's, you passed by the painting. Oh, can I travel into the painting as well? Because it's got color. The mirror had color, so maybe I could pass into that as well. Maybe if I didn't look into the mirror. Either way, I love this piece of artwork so much. The fact that like the color almost leaks out with darkness. Before long, a door came into the side at the end of the hall. Yeah, I love that so much. It's so beautiful. Can we? Maybe we could have. I don't know. But either way, it's probably another memory we could unlock later. Hand holding? I know, right? How dare. <laughs> this door is what I would like to show you next, Master. Listen closely. Do you hear the voices? Lively but rough. Energetic but coarse. What lies beyond this door is neither a period of elegance and abundance like the first, nor one of ruin and savagery like the second. Technology and culture had become quite developed. Cameras and photography had been invented. It was a time of great progress and many breakthroughs. And for that reason, those who lived in it were constantly seeking to try new things. The tale I'm about to tell you is one of a man who wagered everything on his ambitions. I hope that what you see, Master, will stir something in your heart. Now, through the door we go. Please, do not let go of my hand. The maid pushed open the door. Colorful balls bounced around atop a long, dark green table. One man, dressed in black and standing by the billiards table, turned toward the door. The room was inundated with eye-watering cigar smoke, causing you to squeeze your eyes shut. And when you opened them... They're playing billiards of pool. The third door. The third door. 1869. I was going to say, this had to be relatively modern. They've already got photography. I don't remember when photography was invented, but I figured it was around the 1800s. I can't remember any pictures being older than that, but... This sounds more like the 1920s than the 18th... <laughs> well, I don't know what the 1860s sounded like, but goddamn, this is a fucking bop. This definitely reminds me of like a jazz club. That's the feeling I'm getting. Especially, I guess, if they're playing billiards and everything, it could be. Let's find out. <laughs> this is great, anyway. That era was a rat race of innovation. Wait, no. Normal voice. That era was a rat race of innovation and development. <gasps> We've got cogs on... They have been changing the text box every time, haven't they? I didn't even realize that yet. It's only now that I've seen the cogs that, yeah, in the first door they had flowers. I don't remember what the second door had. But yeah, they change the text box as well as the music every time. This is so cool. The smoke was so thick, you could hardly see more than a few feet in front of you. I could compare it to a dense morning fog, but that might give the impression of beauty, and of that there was little to be found in this haze. Do you see the silhouettes of several men in the smoky room? The one in the middle, the one looking in your direction, master, was the present master of the house. Oh... <laughs> Okay, Jacopo. I like your style. And, thanks to the wonderful Age Hasno, we have a wig ready to go for you. <laughs> His name was Jacopo, and though he dressed in such fine attire, I sincerely doubt he understood how splendid the furnishings left in the mansion truly were. I am a faithful servant of this house, and I would not for the life of me dare speak ill of my master. However, this is a time long past. I imagine God would be so kind as to turn a blind eye to a little bit of honesty. I was not terribly fond of my master back then. He had wavy hair the color of overdried tea leaves, a piercing gaze, an arrogant smile, and he wore a hat that made him look rather haughty. He put his trust only in money, renown, and rank. 
He loved only iron and steel that had revolutionized so many industries. He had not the slightest bit of love or care for other people. At the very least, that is what I believed at the time. Take a look around the room, Master. Jacopo had remodeled it into a recreation area. A billiards table sat in the center of the room, and the downward-facing lights hanging from the ceiling were specially made. The lights shone upon the dark green stand like a stage, cigars and bourbon-lined glass cases installed in places of bookshelves. The cases were always fully stocked, their contents available to partake of readily. At that particular moment, as he had many times before, Jacopo had invited several friends and acquaintances, and they were entertaining themselves. Oh, it's pronounced Jacopo? Jacopo. Okay, thank you. His wealthy, high-ranking acquaintances had a variety of hair colors, from polished brass to the brown of a baby robin the color of sunburn wheat. There was also much greater variation in skin tone compared to the visitors and residents of previous eras, but that was hardly any surprise. For the mansion sat upon land inhabited largely by immigrants. The New World. I figured this was America. What's the matter? What are you looking at? Oh god, what do we give the Jacopo? Uh, um, so used to pronouncing J's and H? Yeah, yeah. There's different like versions like in different parts of the world. The J's and H is Spanish, right? Yeah. Like Julio. <laughs> yeah, in this case, Jacopo. Hmm. <laughs> Irish. No. <laughs> oh, man. Italian-American? Oh. No. Let's see if I could actually... What's your best Yankee accent? I mean, I just kind of did it with the whole, like... Wise guy, eh? Sing. This feels like a time of mobsters. What are you looking at? <laughs> God damn it. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. We're not doing that for him, too. <laughs> Do Godfather? I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Nothing. I just thought I heard someone say my name. No, no. Oh my God! What the fuck? How dare? Um, too old. Too old for Jacopo. Hmm. Let me look at him. He's arrogant. He's smarmy. He's haughty. He doesn't look too old. He looks like he's in like his late twenties. Nothing. I just thought I heard someone say my name. What if I just give him a very overly confident kind of voice? One that just swims with smarminess. Not really much of an accent, but just very much like, hey, fuck you, I'm better than you. How about that? That sounds like a voice that would piss off the maid. That works? Okay. He looks like a Draco Malfoy. Potter. Nothing. I just thought I heard someone say, no, no. I think he's too cool for that. <laughs> like, he's not a child. He's not a spoiled child. I think, yeah. Nothing. I just thought I heard someone say my name. Oh, also. And now we immediately don't need it anymore. I like his style, though. Is that an ascot around his neck? I don't remember the exact name for it. What is going on? I pressed the wrong button. Ignore me. <laughs> Ain't no one there, unless you're seeing a ghost. <laughs> oh, I don't believe in such nonsense. I, st I keep pressing B. I'm so used to the PS5 controller now. It's an old house with a long history. Wouldn't be surprised if it had a ghost or two. But if this place is going to be haunted, I'd take a princess over a bloody broad any day. A princess, eh? When she showed up, you'd have your way with the ghost lady, am I right? Telling me impressed, son. You jump her bones and you don't even got any to jump. Come on now, that's hardly fair. How much you can even do with a ghost? These guys having a weird conversation immediately. <laughs> God damn it. Wait, what voice did I give him? Wait, what if I go like full? Hmm. Out of sight, but never out of mind. My god, are you men or children? This is my house, and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Yeah, I think I'll do that for him, actually. I'll go P.O. Chan. <laughs> Gave him confident, cocky voice. Yeah, I kind of lost it immediately. <laughs> Just the blatherings of a couple of drunks. Pretend you didn't hear nothing. For the love of God. In any event, whatever happened to that printer you invested in? I haven't heard their name come up in some time. 
Yeah, we're just going to stick with confident. Uh, can we please avoid that topic? It's been quite the headache for me. I thought it'd pay off, but... It always sounded sketchy to me. I'd recommend you pull out unless you want to find yourself with nothing left but a nice fat pile of debt. Yeah, he's an asshole. <laughs> you can't have mentioned that beforehand. Ugh, this is killing me. Yeah, okay, I hate Jacopo immediately. <laughs> yeah, we gave up on P.O. Chan. I can't do that. I don't know how he does that voice so well. Well, men's deep voices resonated in the cloudy room. As they imbibed out... Imbibed? Yeah. Imbibed alcohol and puffed on their cigars. They conversed mostly about business and money. Jacopo and the rest of the men were breed known as investors. You might also call them tacticians. They survived on information attained before anyone else by making swift decisions and having foresight. Oh no, they're stonks bros. <laughs> Though instead of flesh and bone, their soldiers were made of ink and paper. To an outsider, this meeting might appear to be a congregation of friends, but in reality, they were observing one another, gathering information and anything else they could choose to get ahead. At times, money and information were exchanged directly, and when they were no longer of financial value to one another, their relationship would pop like a bubble and dissipate into nothing. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Jacopo is actually planning on investigating in the printer and wants his friend to get his friend to get out from the printer first so he can swoop in and take it for low, lower money. Oh, God, investors, let's fucking go. But you know, Jacopo, you can't be sure this railroad you're so passionate about is going to bear fruit neither. Okay, he's making money. <laughs> you don't know if it'll even get finished. And even if they do connect the tracks, will it really be in any shape for people to ride? It's a pipe dream. This transcontinental railroad of yours. Oh, the face. He is pissed. He's like, you don't talk about my investments. Jacopo went silent, but I'm certain this is what was going through his head. <laughs> You're a bunch of damned imbeciles. If you can't see, the entire country's put their weight behind this endeavor. This is why you have so much trouble making even a few thousand. Which was a lot of money back then. Oh, damn. Historical crypto, pretty much. <laughs> He's a man of the future just like you. Hey, I don't invest in things. I invest in myself. It's a poor investment choice, but I do. <laughs> Over the, at the time, a great railway was being built across the breadth of the continent. Construction was spearheaded by two large rail companies in competition for both prestige and a bigger share of this massive national enterprise. The Union Pacific Railroad Company started building from the east and the Central Pacific Railroad Company from the west. But government bonds alone were not enough to finance the massive undertaking. By the way, there have been some less than pleasant reports about workers dying on the job for the company you chose, Central Pacific. Ah, you mean how they're using explosives to blast through the mountains? Making quite a bang, they are. <laughs> That's a terrible pun, dude. But if this gets to be much bigger of a fix, they're not going to be able to continue construction. You should have at least put your money in the more sure bed of the two, the Union Pacific. It'll cost you to hire replacement workers. And if they keep kicking the bucket, you're going to have trouble finding more. Oh, no. I'm going to think of it. Yeah, this this was a bad time. This, oh, God. Oh, man. My goodness. And here I thought you had spines. You think we're going to run out of workers just because a few ate it? <laughs> there are so many we don't even know what to do with them all. There's not a chance that well will dry up. And if by some chance it does, all we have to do is buy up a ship full of blacks or yellows. Or the Irish. Or Italians. Um, uh, God, yeah, they were fucking horrible at this time. You won't get anywhere if you spend your time worrying about a few measly laborers. This is an endeavor backed by the entire nation. Their debts are honorable in service of their country. The biggest loss is not of people's lives, but of time. The longer a project takes, the more money it costs, and the less profit we make. What we seek is rapid progress, even if the methods to obtain it are messy or deadly. As long as it's not you working the fucking railroad, isn't it? Piece of shit. He said that so fucking proud of himself as well. Oh, fuck me. 
The other men in the room chuckled uncomfortably at Jacopo's distasteful choice of words. Even the other people from this timeline are like, fuck, dude. That's a lot of dead people you're talking about, and they're making your dreams come true. Jeez. I don't like him anymore. I didn't like him from the beginning. He's got a cool dress sense, too. That's the problem. He looks cool, but yeah, no, he's a piece of shit. Finds people expendable. Yeah. Finds people expendable is racist. Would probably not much care even if they were not minorities either. From the way he seems, he's just like a piece of shit. He wouldn't care as long as he's making a money. The other men in the room chuckled uncomfortably at Jacopo's distasteful choice of words. Do you agree with his way of thinking, Master? Perhaps he does have a point, in that great sacrifice is necessary to accomplish great things. And it is true that tragedy often lies in the shadows of the splendor of times long past. Furthermore, the way people see the world changes with the times, so I hesitate to criticize him too severely. Now, as I'm sure you've already picked up on, he was an investor who had put money into a railroad company. He also possessed several crude oil refineries, riding on the world's second wave of industrial development. The mansion too bustled with life, in a way it never had before. Dozens of maids, including me, gardeners, chefs, sculptors, artists. At times, we even had riders coming in and out of the house. There was rarely a moment of silence. However, I was not terribly fond of the hustle and bustle personally. But please, do not get me wrong. I am hardly opposed to the mansion being cheerful. It was just... How should I put it? And the splendor of the time seemed... Uh, superficial. Heartless. It was as though everyone was being rushed along by some unknown invisible force. Part of it was, I expect, caused by the growing divide between those standing at the top and sitting at the bottom. Or perhaps the mansion was simply taking after its master. That's a good line too. <laughs> Perhaps the mansion was taking after its master. Looking beautiful, but having nothing really interesting within it. Everything just rushing around, being fake, being un... What's the word? Substantial, not interesting. That's him. He invests money in other people's dreams. Uses other people's deaths to create his money. Shows off how rich and powerful he is. Has people around all the time just to talk to him and show him how impressive he is. Maid son is savage. Maid son is awesome. <laughs> Unnatural, perhaps. I, it's superficial. Superficial is good. The word I was looking for was unsubstantial because, yeah, it's just the idea of him being, like, yeah, presenting himself as, like, upper class, a gentleman. But every gentleman we've seen before at least, like, tried to hide their horribleness before. This guy just doesn't give a shit. He's just immediately like, yes, fuck other people. As long as I get my money. Oh my god. Aidsan is spilling tea? Yeah, she is. There's no time to waste. Everything is resting upon the success of this project. Whatever it takes, I will ensure it happens. I need more money and more power. More money. More power. Metabots. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've never heard somebody actually say before, I need more money, more power. <laughs> god damn. Suddenly, a restrained knock on the door stopped his trade of thought. From beyond the door came a woman's voice, gentle as a soft spring breeze. Pardon me. I have made some tea. May I offer anyone a cup? Please don't be. No! Why are you always trapped here? This is a terrible time. You do not deserve to be a maid in this shitty house. God damn it. Okay. Her dress looks absolutely fucking gorgeous this time, though. Look at all the flowers. Her hair is lovely as well. Oh, my God. I just hope she's happy this time. She's never been happy so far. Why is she here again? I think she's the actual master of the house. Either that or she's like the split version of Morgana. Like the pure version of Morgana. I don't know. She's definitely attached to the house somehow. But yeah, this look is incredible. I love this. Also, this is another wig made by Ageha Snow. <laughs> the links to Ageha Snow's works are in the description of this video. But yeah, all of these wigs are so beautiful. I fucking love it. Love her hairstyle. Yeah, I love her hairstyle. I love her dress. I love all the flowers. I love those frilly bits at the wrist. Oh my God, everything's so nice. When the door opened, 
In it stood a beautiful woman with pure white hair. It was indeed her. Are you surprised? Or did you anticipate her appearance? But she was not the same age and dressed differently. The white-haired girl, whom you saw fall into the hands of misfortune in the era of roses and the era of beasts, was also present in this era of innovation. Furthermore, she was Jacopo's wife. Fuck me. That's such a waste. Fuck this dude. Okay. T, I don't recall asking you for that. When were you asked to make it? I wasn't, but I had these leaves with the most wonderful aroma, and I thought you might enjoy... Shut your trap and know your place. What do you think we have all these maids for? Jesus. Hey now. Oh, I gave him the acquaintance voice. I just turned him into that. No need to treat your lady like that. She was just trying to be courteous. These are my personal affairs. Please keep your comments to yourself. His friends were unsure how to react, but ultimately nobody stepped up to stop Jacopo. They merely shrugged, tossing lances at one another. Jacopo stomped over to the white-haired girl. He then grabbed her by the arm and dragged her from the den. Look at her face right now. Bruh, this dude is a piece of shit. Again, another case where he just 100% decided something looked pretty and he wanted it. It's all for looks. It's all for just showing off to the world. Fucking. Meanwhile, she's being so lovely, making him a cup of tea just because the tea leaves seem nice. <sighs> what the hell do you think you're doing? I've told you time and time again to stay away from that room unless absolutely necessary. I... I'm sorry. But, um... I made tea, and... Shut up about the tea already. You think we're having tea parties in there like a bunch of prissy nobles? Uh, I'm sorry. If you really feel so bad, don't go in there in the first place. Get the hell back to your room. I meant no harm. It's just... I'm your wife. I thought it'd be nice if I could do something. Like I've told you, that's not your job. Don't show yourself in front of other men. I have nothing else to say to you. Got it? Now scram. Sakes alive. First them and now you. It's driving me up the wall. What is it? I told you to get out of here. Right. But, um... What? When will you... Spend time with me next? It's been some time since we last went out together. We don't even have to go out. Just having dinner together would... God, his fucking face. He gives zero fucks. I hate him. How many times are you gonna make me repeat myself, you worthless tramp? Are those ears only for show? Go back to your goddamn room! Oh god, her face right now is so devastated as well. She actually likes him despite this shit. I wonder if she was a rich girl he married just to get her money. Fuck, I hate him. He's doing the whole women should be seen, not heard kind of thing. And even then, he doesn't want to seen by other men. <sighs> yeah, I think he just used her for something. My apologies. Looking utterly downtrodden, the white-haired girl made a departure. Such a piteous sight she was. As he watched her go, Jacopo merely snorted. Just thinking about the way he behaved then angers me. I have little fondness for men who do not treat their spouses with respect. So as you can see, the white-haired girl was in hardly a joyous situation. She was devoted to Jacopo and tried to do whatever she could for him. But he not only brushed her aside, he did so in an insulting, deliberately hurtful manner. They were far from picturesque partners. Do you wonder then, Master, why she married him? The answer to that question will come to light in time. For now, let us follow her. Okay. So, the maid really likes the white-haired girl, for sure. Like, she's always very defensive about her. If people are rude to the white-haired girl, she does not like them, even if they're the master of the house. 
Meanwhile, if they actually try to look out for her, at least in some way, she cares about them a lot more. Same, though. I mean, yeah, understandable. So far in every timeline, the white-haired girl has just been some sweet girl who just, you know, wants to live her goddamn life and keeps getting dragged into everybody else's bullshit. And it's happening again. At least they've literally told us we're gonna end up finding out exactly why she ended up marrying this piece of shit soon. Maybe she actually liked him or maybe she was just married off. Maybe it was like a trade kind of thing. Free of sin, they said. Yeah, that basically, yeah, she just gets dragged along and into other people's sin and into their misfortune. This is a new song too and it's so good. We just blast this through with it. God damn. It definitely does feel like the Roaring Twenties right now. It's great. It's like jazz music. I'm loving it. <laughs> Looking down dejectedly at the undrunken tea, the white-haired girl walked alone down the corridor. Though its calming scent filled the air, there was nobody around to have the heart warmed by it. Nor was there anyone to alleviate her loneliness. Despite being the master's wife, the maids who crossed her path in the hall said nary a word to her. As a matter of fact. Oh no. <laughs> Poor baby. She's a klutz now too. Oh, she's just trying her best, man. Oh, so do they end up actually hating her? Do they hate the fact that she doesn't do work either? Maybe she was one of the maids originally and he married her just because she was so pretty and that's why they hate her. We're going to find out. Oh, no. They actually did talk to her now. I need to actually read before I do things. <laughs> oh, dear. I beg your pardon, madam. Uh, wait. Uh, it's fine. One even bumped into her, stifling a laugh as she trotted off. In all likelihood, she'd done it intentionally. The poor white-haired girl who had fallen to the floor stared helplessly at the broken cups. The tea she had made for her husband was forming a stain in the carpet. The maid's behavior towards the mistress of the house was absolutely unacceptable. Nonetheless, it was commonplace, all because of the way Jacopo treated her. The more the man in the house acted cruel to her, the less weight her position as his wife held to the servants. Day in and day out, the maids worked busily, offering little opportunity for leisure, so they would naturally have accumulated quite a bit of stress and she became the target for them to let off the steam. Not directly, but through a more subdued kind of harassment from the shadows. She must have felt quite miserable. I imagine she would have been better off as one of the maids. On the surface, and in front of others, they showed respect for her as Jacopo's bride, but behind closed doors, they acted very much the opposite. This disparity between the treatment she received around others, the treatment she was supposed to receive at all times, and the way she was actually treated made the abuse that much worse. And furthermore, as you've seen through the other doors, Master, she was a very reserved young woman. She could neither raise her voice in reprimand, nor raise her hand in retaliation. Fuck that shit. Beat them down into the ground. You're the lady of the house in this timeline. You finally deserve this. Oh, this fucking sucks. So they hate Jacopo too. But at the same time, since they see him abusing her all the time, they're just like, well, she won't say anything. We could fuck around with her too. She's a piece of shit. Oh, God, man. Timelines always just suck for her. I have to get this cleaned up. She extended her spindly fingers forward towards the shards of shattered porcelain. Ah. But even the broken cup seemed to have no concern to spare for her. Its shattered edge cut her fingertip when she made to pick it up. A trickle of warm red blood ran across her unearthly right skin. As painful as it was, a painful a sight as it was, it had a sort of taboo beauty to it. The blood spilling from her finger showed no signs of slowing down. She clenched her hand into a fist, let out a sigh, and went back to collecting the shards of porcelain. But when she did, She gets it. The maid gets it. <laughs> I know what you are, maid. I was going to say, the maid gets it, man. 
beautiful girl covered in blood yeah <laughs> i mean oh god maria actual named maid let's go madame madame what's the matter oh madame you're bleeding all the other maids ignored her one came running over shouting to the white-haired girl's side We need to get that cleaned and bandaged up. Oh, you don't need to pick that up. That's not your job, madam. It's all right, Maria. There's not much to pick up. It is not at all all right. And the rest of you, why are you standing there? Your boss's wife is on her hands and knees, and you're not even lifting a finger to help her? You disgust me. Oh, nice. <sighs> Maria, it's fine, really. Oh, madam, if you weren't so timid, this wouldn't happen. You're allowed to yell at them, you know. It's all right. Really. I'm... Um... It's my fault. It is not your fault. Oh, I hate that. She blames herself for fucking everything, doesn't she? Probably thinks the reason Jacopo's such a piece of shit is because of her. Maria Best Girl? Yeah, Maria's fucking amazing immediately. Anyway, we should get that finger taken care of. Ooh, I didn't notice how beautiful her eyes were before either until she started smiling. They're so bright green. <gasps> flaxen hair, green eyes. I guess she's more blonde than flaxen. Still, I like her. She's awesome. <laughs> Let's get you back to your room, okay? Uh, but the broken cups and the spill. As I said, that's the maid's work. Oh, come on, let's go. Uh, okay. And the rest of you, get this mess cleaned up. I love her. She's awesome. She roared like the wind in a thunderstorm. The other maid stood there dumbfounded, watching as she and the white-haired girl disappeared down the hall. But they were soon frowning and grumbling to one another. She thinks she can act all high and mighty just because the master is fond of her. Oh no, the master is fond of Maria. Oh god, is this going to end up being an affair? Fuck. The woman, the maid, did say at that point she did not think that he could feel any attraction towards anyone other than money. Maybe he's going to decide he's bored of the white-haired girl and wants Maria instead. Fuck. The woman's name was Maria. She was one of the maids. And she was the one person in the mansion the white-haired girl could think of as an ally. Though her husband paid her no mind and the maids made her life miserable, just one person, Maria, treated her with respect and kindness. And I'm sure you can readily imagine just how much of a lifesaver that was for her. I too found myself somewhat relieved that Maria was there for her. Being a servant of this house, I was also one of the maids working there at the time. However, I was unable to involve myself to any great degree in her fate. This meant that there was little I could do to assist her, even in times of pain and unpleasantness. The best I could do was pray that Maria could continue to lend the white-haired girl a hand. Mother Maria saving the day. Oh, the wink! Let's fucking go! She's so cute. I like her. I hope Jacopo doesn't end up ruining both their lives, but I'm pretty sure he's going to. The maid literally can't go against the master. No, I think the only thing the maid can do is to just literally disappear and hide like she did with the beast. I think, yeah, she's cursed to be in this place, to watch everything happening, but not be able to actually help anyone. Just to guide them when she can, not actually interfere properly. And maybe since the white-haired girl is not reaching out to her, she can't do anything for her. Either way, these two should run away together. Fuck this house and fuck Jacopo. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. And that does it. Thank you, Maria. You're always such a big help. Oh, no, 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 no need to thank me. I just did what any good mate should do. <laughs> oh, she's smiling. Let's go. No one else is in the room, you know. Oh, right. Then I can drop the act? Man, I just can't get used to talking all stuffy. I'm here doing my best, but the headmaid's still spouting stuff like, 
Your manner of speaking is improper as a servant. Every single time we meet. Were these two like childhood friends? Eesh, come on. Just shove it, would you? You're a damn creep. <laughs> now, now, you mustn't speak of her like that. Yeah, she might come for you in the darkness. The maid's, the head maid's kind of scary. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Slip of the tongue. She just kind of gives me the willies, you know? Speaking of, you drop the stuffy talk too, madam. Kind of awkward if only one of us is acting casual, you know? This is normal for me. If I attempted to talk like you, I'd freeze up out of nervousness. This is my casual. Mm, fair enough. Guess that's what happens when you're raised well. I like it though. Has a very regal feel about it. Southern accent? I don't think she comes from the south. I think she comes from the area. Like I'd imagine this is somewhere west coast. So probably out California, I'd imagine. I think she comes from around here. She's just a working girl. She wasn't like raised to be like a proper young lady. She was just hired to be a maid. She got like a lucky thing. Yeah, I don't think she's southern at all. Florida? Florida's east coast. I'm I just imagining since, like, the guy invested in the west coast side of it. That's all I'm imagining. It could be anywhere right now. I don't know. I just know it's America. But the fact that, yeah, east coast probably. That is where they made the most money. Hmm. Could be around there. I was just imagining west coast since Jacopo invested in the west one rather than the eastern one. We'll find out, though. We'll find out. Probably. <laughs> There'll probably be context clues as we go along. I don't think my upbringing is the only factor. Ah. Uh, but you know, upbringing is important. Worth a whole lot more than money, I'd say. I suppose. Thank you, Maria. You're always so compassionate. You betcha. They don't call me the Virgin Mary for nothing. I practically bleed compassion. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. <laughs> the Virgin Mary. God damn it. Uh, you know, that might be true. You very well could be the reincarnation of the Mother of God. No, no, no. You were supposed to laugh at that. It's just embarrassing if you take it seriously. Alone in the white-haired girl's room, Maria was acting much more friendly and relaxed as they conversed, as opposed to her no-nonsense attitude in the hallway. The two women were, as you could see, quite close. They had crossed over the wall separating master from servant and built a bond of friendship. And at some point, they had begun to speak frankly with one another when no one was around. Maria was the only person in the mansion around whom the white-haired girl felt comfortable being open. I imagine she very much enjoyed these moments of conversation. You wish to know who the handmaid was? My, my. Are you sure you want to ask me that, master? <laughs> Some questions are better left than asked for your own good. Yeah, I know it was you, maid. I know you're the creepy one scaring Maria. It's fine. Don't worry. We still love you. <laughs> Hello, please. You all would be cute together. I think they are genuinely just friends, but they should run away together anyway. Not even in a romantic sense. Just in a, like, best friends traveling the world sense. She should steal all of Jacopo's money and get the fuck out of there. She said, you still ask and shake my head. Exactly. She was like, oh, come on now. You know who she was talking about. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I like these two. I like Maria a lot. She's so no nonsense with everything. And the fact that when I saw her like, no, no, you don't have to do that. Like, I immediately knew she was one of those girls that would be like, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Like, she's so chill. She's so down to earth. You can see from her design what kind of personality she has. I love this game for that shit. It's so good. I even read that the wrong way at first because I was like, I know her. She's the kind of character who's like, no, 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 no. Don't worry. We're fine. You got this. <laughs> I have to say, madam, madam. I keep trying to say madam. I have to say, madam, you have the prettiest fingers. Mine are all rough and dry and nasty. You think so? I don't have the slightest bit of muscle. Are about as frail as dead branches. Ah, uh, who needs beefy mitts anyway? I... I still think healthy-looking hands like yours are far more attractive. Oh? Maybe I was wrong about them just being friends. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> what? 
What's to like about these things? Women all over the world dream of having hands like yours. Slender, feminine, and perfectly cared for. I don't know, just looking at them lights a fire in my loins. No, Maria! Makes me want to lick every last one of them. <laughs> shit! She went immediately into the hand fetish shit. If she was talking about toes right now, I'd be like kind of scared. I, I do jet. Actually, say, can I lick them? Can I run my tongue up and down all 10 of those sweet little digits? Come on, can I? What do you say? S stop that, Maria. Seriously. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I... I... I think Maria is just kidding. But this may end up going the wrong way for the white-haired girl. <laughs> Maria is probably just playing along and having a laugh. But at the same time... It's rare that the white-haired girl goes out of her way to compliment someone's looks. That might have been the first time we heard it outside of when she was choking what's-his-face, uh, Mel. So maybe she's actually into her, unless she isn't kidding. I mean, you never know. I just feel from her personality right now that Maria is just fucking around. And if the white-haired girl actually did anything, it might be a problem. We'll find out. Anyway... Oh, Maria. All oh, right. How did those tea leaves turn out, madam? The ones you imported. All the maids just adore it. You can't get enough of that aroma. I'd like to get a taste of it. If you, uh, end up with extra, you think you could spare a sip for me? Tee? <laughs> she really teed. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, yeah, no. Maybe, maybe she is into this. This is the way she talked there was kind of like. Oh, I said too much. Let me backtrack. Yo, we finally getting some GL on this channel. About fucking time. Uh, that was, um, what was in the cups I dropped? <sighs> really? Wow, ain't that a crying shame? And Jacopo wouldn't have any of it? Fuck that guy. God, why does that man have such a stick up his ass? Went through all the trouble of making it for him and... He was busy. It's not his fault. Busy? You mean playing billiards, drinking bourbon, and puffing a damn cigar? It may look to us like they're just making small talk. But I'm certain their meeting has some importance to their business. It was imprudent, imprudent of me to step into the man's world. Wow. She. I hate it when she defends shitty people. I just feel so bad for her. She's so fucking abused she's always in these kinds of relationships where she's on like full-on stockholm syndrome shit i hate it that's just not right i mean you're his wife why shouldn't you be allowed in the room it doesn't bother me you don't have to pretend oh yeah she saw right through her there i liked that that was really good. Like, the visual novel, like, sprites were really good there, too. She was smiling with the whole, like, it doesn't bother me. And then as soon as Maria said, like, you don't have to pretend, her face just immediately went back to sour and sad. Now she's just like, oh, it's okay. Let's just move on. She's trying to defend herself, pretending everything is fine when, yeah, she's hurt by this shit, too. Here's an idea. How would you like to have some of the tea now? We also have some orange marmalade she likes so much and a scoop of that and a tray of cookies we have the perfect tea time you're singing the siren song madam but you really should be doing that with him he would not have the tea i suspect he does not like it i just don't want it to go to waste so madam i know it's none of my business and i have no place at all saying this but it's not impossible for a woman to file a divorce these days. True. You don't have to sit down and take it. Not one bit. You're pretty well-educated and still young. There's hope even if you do leave him. There are plenty of other men out there. And other women. <laughs> you aren't obligated to stick with that arrogant jerk. He's just very busy right now. There you go again. There was a time when he was kind. Uh, 
He wasn't like this when we first met. Back then, he was a little awkward. But a kind man. Him? A kind man? Yes. Believe it or not, there was indeed a time. Say, Maria, would you mind giving me a little bit more of your time? I'll make some tea and we can talk. All right. If you're telling me about when Jacopo was decent, I'm all ears. Indeed. So are we going to get a flashback within a story now? To when they first met? <laughs> yeah, okay. God damn. Wow, we're immediately getting into this. He tricked you, darling. He might have. Yeah, it might have been like an infatuation kind of thing and him like pretending to be a good guy. I mean, this is just like analysis, guessing, theorizing, even though we're about to hear it for sure. But yeah, that might be the case or it might be that he genuinely was a good person back then. It's just that then money got in the way. Some people just become so obsessed with money once they get a taste of some. They don't. It sucks. They end up like giving up on their work-life balance, throw themselves just into work and ruin their actual lives just to earn more money, which I mean, you're not going to be able to spend it when you're dead. Fucking stupid. As I'm sure you're aware, our parents arranged our marriage. Before I emigrated to this country to be married, I lived in a misty island nation. Ireland? <laughs> Misty Island. I don't know where else that would be. Misty Island. Iceland? Anyway, I guess, yeah, all of, like, Britain is technically a Misty Island. It's pretty small. I'm just deciding it's Ireland. <laughs> Portraits of my ancestors hung in the house where I lived. I remember as a child wincing in fear at the sight of them staring down at me. My mother and father were constantly telling me to show them respect, as it was their hard work that kept our bloodline alive and well. However, they were fighting an uphill battle to do the same. It would have been clear to anyone reasonably perceptive that our house was coming tumbling down. Valuable furniture and paintings slowly disappeared, and eventually, the portraits were gone too. As our house collapsed, so too did my parents' health deteriorate, rob robbing us of any source of income. And though I was educated, I lacked the skills necessary to obtain work. Just as we were about to run out of money and options, my parents received Jacopo's parents' marriage proposal. Proposition, even. Both of our families stood to benefit from the arrangement. I had social status, and he had wealth. We each had what the other lacked. One needs more than money to make it in the world. Without at least a semi-reputable name attached to you, you're liable to get laughed out of most social gatherings. I first met Jacopo here, in this country. We didn't even know what the other looked like until our wedding day. To be quite honest, I was scared to death at first. I was so nervous. What kind of man could he be? Was I to be wed to some middle-aged stranger? We were not marrying because we had fallen in love like a normal couple. I knew I was in no position to be concerned with such things. When I thought about our future, I shook with fear. But the man I saw through my veil at that wedding was remarkable. He was young, had strong, masculine eyes, and at the same time, he too appeared nervous. <laughs> he was shaking so much. Oh, even more than me. Seeing that, the priest gave an emphasis to smirk when he asked Jacopo if he vowed his eternal love to me. I counted myself among the happy, and I still do. For in that moment, I experienced true love. You wanted to hear about when he was kind to me? Well, after the wedding, we were given a week to ourselves. I suppose you could call it a honeymoon, but we didn't take a trip overseas or even go very far at all. He looked at me with uncertainty and asked, Where would you like to go? Oh, he did have the hat on. I thought this was the reason there was a hat wig and a hatless wig that he didn't put on the hat. He, he became evil when he put on the hat. But no, he always had the hat. <laughs> That's not how it works. She, oh my God. Um, She's just doing her best. It sounds like, yeah, her family essentially traded her. But at the same time, she's too much of a pushover. She's too nice to just 
accept that fact. She'd rather just count herself as happy because, I mean, yeah, other people are in worse situations in the world. Jacobo was born with a hat. I know, right? <laughs> Apparently, he always had the hat on. Um, Seika said earlier, I, I like locked onto this just to make sure. Probably British. British. Though it was more common for American girls to marry to England, they were called dollar princesses. So yeah, it could be a trade. I, I figured, yeah, pretty much anywhere in the UK, you could call it like a misty island. There's a lot of mist in the UK. They're, like both are pretty small islands compared to like fucking massive continents of like America and Europe. So it could have been anywhere around there. I just liked the idea of it being Irish because obviously I am biased. <laughs> Plus the fact that I thought it would be kind of cool like if the storyline went that way with because during this time there were also a lot of Irish people being essentially imported to America for basically slave labor as well. Like they worked the railways a lot. Like a lot of the signs back in those days didn't just say God, I don't even want to use the term. No bad word for black people. But they also said no bad word for black people and no Irish. The Irish were put in a similar position of not being allowed to go into certain buildings, not allowed to use certain fountains. Yeah. And before that, it was the Italians. And then the Italian-Americans started to flourish. So yeah. America had a very fucked up history continuously. But yeah, that's why I thought it would be interesting if he was talking this way now, but then she was actually of Irish heritage as well. And it would be a lot of her countrymen working the railways. Okay. Beg your pardon? That's what this week is for. I don't even know what a voice to give him when he's being fine. That's what this week is for, right? I'll consider granting your request, so tell me where you want to go. Uh, um, I, um, it's all so sudden. Hmm? Nothing? Well, this whole engagement was spur of the moment. Normally we would have planned a trip in advance. But unfortunately, our purpose is served so long as we act the part. You must be disappointed that you have to plan your honeymoon as it's happening. Well, the way he's avoiding her eyes too, he still sounds like a bit of a stuck-up prick. But he's trying to be nice to her, at least right now. And the way he's like, before he was looking down at her, in this case, he's looking at her and he's like looking away like he's embarrassed about it. He wants to take care of her right now. This is interesting. Yukimasa was Irish when he was... <laughs> so in conclusion, nice joke composer, so Irish. No! How dare! <laughs> I just failed that accent roll. <laughs> no. Um... What? Speak clearly. I don't like it when people don't speak their mind. Uh, I'm sorry, but I... I'm happy. Even if this is a political marriage. Jacopo is clearly Italian by his name. Oh, Anton, we know we're joking. It's just like the fact that Yuki Masa, when we figured out his name, was very clearly Japanese. <laughs> but I gave... A mixed accent <laughs> to Yuki Masa with a weird growly voice plus an Irish accent. It was a very confused chapter. <laughs> so don't worry about it. <laughs> Things are painful. <laughs> I'm aware. Okay, yeah, I was just making sure. It was just like a joke from how much I fucked up on door two. <laughs> but we had fun with it. <laughs> well, you're quite the positive thinker. Your parents say something to make you think that way? I... Um, well, either way, if you're so glad to be in this arrangement, then hurry up and decide on a destination. Though, there is a limit to how far we can go. If you want to take a trip, I'll consider it. What? Is something funny? It just seemed comical to me that our honeymoon has begun, and we're only now deciding where we want to go. Not in a bad way, though. I'm glad our parents didn't arrange everything for us. Perhaps you've heard, but I'm quite sensitive to sunlight and not in the best of health. So it would be rather trying for me to spend a full week out of the house. We couldn't go on a trip, but um, if it's not too much trouble. Well, the way she's looking up at him right now, she's so shy. She's so hopeful. And him with the fucking aggressive eyes 
speak up. Could you show me around town? I'm new to this country and unfamiliar with its customs. And I'm rather afraid to go wandering around on my own. Show you around? Yes. Would that be possible? Hmm. On a rare bit of time off, you asked me to show you around town? Is that really the most exciting idea you have? Yeah, no, okay, he's a piece of shit. Fuck me. He really went from, oh, if you have an idea for a destination, I'll consider it, to just immediately, like, on my time off. Really? Wow. This, yeah, he isn't kind. She's just lying to herself. She's just deluding herself into believing there were happier times. He was just less cruel to her then. Fuck, man. I... If, um... If there's somewhere you would like to go, I'm fine with that. I'll accompany you anywhere. As if I could drag someone who just professed to being sickly all over the country. My god, I've lost all interest in a trip. And he just left? Oh. Hello? What are you doing? Go get ready. Now. I... Beg your pardon? Didn't you want to go see the town? You... Will show me around. You're the one who asked. Unlike I have any other options, so yeah. I'll show you around. Thank you. Don't just stand there, you dullard. Get a move on. Ah, uh, one moment. Wait for me, please. That's her happy memory with him. Are you fucking kidding me? Soon soon? I'm not sure yet. Um, maybe he's nicer to her after this. But Jesus Christ. To her, this is him being nice. Just being like, okay, you dullard. I'll take you out to show you the fucking town. He sounds so uninterested. He's such a dick. Oh my God. Cinderay, but actually annoying. Yeah. Maybe she just thought he was Sundere. He did have that moment when he looked shy around her. I don't know. We'll probably hear more as this goes on. We'll find out. He hurriedly climbed into the carriage he had called for. A look of frustrated displeasure on his face. And then, as if he had forgotten about me until that moment, he returned. Grabbed me by the... Oh, fuck. And then, as if he had forgotten about me until that moment, he returned. Grabbed me by the arm and led me to the carriage. In retrospect, I realized he was not being very gentlemanly, but I was pleased that he was making any attempt to interact with me at all. As the carriage trotted down the streets, I saw so many new things. I had spent most of my time cooped up inside at home, but it was like stepping into an entirely new world. And add to that the rapid industrial advancement currently taking place, I saw men shouting back and forth as they smacked newspaper articles with the back of their hands. I saw corner cafes crowded with cigar-smoking men on break from work. It was like the hustle and bustle of a festival. But every festival has its underside. I also saw overworked men, looking like they were on the verge of collapse, drinking water from a spigot on the side of the road. By way of contrast, I wore fine clothing and had a carriage at my disposal. I imagine every day was a struggle for them just to remain afloat. Had I not married the man I had, I too might have found myself on the streets in a similar situation. But it was not relief that spread through my breast at the sight of them. It was pangs of guilt. It felt to me like a life of opulence was wrong. Sinful. It broke my heart to know that I was living so much better than them. Jacopo snorted disapprovingly at me, seemingly reading my mind, and then said... The poor, man who envies the, the poor man who envies the rich covets his wealth and finds the ambition to make the same for himself. And the rich man who pities the poor, thinking it's his duty to give them offerings of philanthropy? To me, the latter is far more nefarious. Excessive charity will ruin a man, making him come to expect handouts. And then there are those with the wrong side of pity, who let themselves fall down in the same place, mistakenly believing it will somehow make the poor feel better. What a joke. If you're going to do anything for them, you might as well encourage them to climb upward. Spur on economic growth and the flow of capital. 
Doesn't that sound like the better option? What a piece of shit. <laughs> the man really said, trickle down economics. I promise it'll work someday. <laughs> Three. So many fucking years. So many fucking years. It's, uh, ah, I hate him. This is a, a reverb foo. Yeah, the reverb's on for a reason. This is a flashback. I always have reverb on for flashbacks. Not just for narration. It's for narration and for flashbacks. It's black and white. So we we have reverb on. Can we fight him? We can. We can fight him. But unfortunately, in fact, at a good time, the man's dead by now. The man is long dead by now. And hopefully he's going to have a terrible misfortune. Misfortune seems to befall just about anyone who lives in the mansion. So this should be good. This should be a good time. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. I say nothing. Oh, right. Whoops. She's narrating. I say nothing. Simply smiling and giving an ambiguous nod. He had a point. My sympathy and guilt mount nothing to people actually experiencing hardship. If feeling guilty of my own fortune, I acted upon the pity in the way he described, it would accomplish little more than self-satisfaction. He seemed to have seen straight through him to my very core. This was a man who had built his own fortune through investment, which I imagine required him to be rather astute. But doesn't a world where everyone is constantly trying to climb higher and higher sound rather... exhausting? I personally would prefer to be in a position where I could watch, if only from a distance as others climbed. But obviously, I could not say as much to him. But it sounds like she is just happy to chill. She got gaslit. I mean... <sighs> He's right that if you give a man a fish, you only feed them for a day. But that doesn't mean you can't teach men to fish. That doesn't mean you can't find better ways to invest your money in the actual economy. Like he's talking about, oh, if we like make the economy better, if we keep investing it this way. Meanwhile, he's spending how much money on that fancy mansion, the fancy billiards table, smoking cigars and drinking all this shit every day, living a life of abundance. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll fix the entire economy and everyone will rise up. He just doesn't give a shit about them. At least she cares. And him making her feel bad just for caring about them. Let her do her own thing, man. Let her do her own thing. Sometime... Oh, right. Fuck me. I keep doing that. Sometime later, the carriage came to a stop in front of a shop. As I looked at the building perplexedly, he gestured to the door with his chin signaling for me to get out. Lost and confused, I stepped down from the carriage, and before me spread a showcase behind a large glass window. However, lined up in the case were not precious metals or expensive clothing, but machines. At first, I had no idea what kind of devices they were. I see now we're going to take off reverb because it looks nice and close to it, this whole thing. You never had your photo taken before. No. I have had a portrait painted, though. Are these machines for taking photographs? A portrait, eh? Why am I not surprised? I did not mean to boast. Go on, get in. Oh, please, wait for me. Oh my god. He's just kind of leading her around. This is an interesting time period, because she genuinely sees this as a nice memory, which is even more distressing. Oh my god, and he's still talking down to her with the whole like, oh, a portrait. Why am I not surprised? Oh my god, I want to punch him. The owner came out to greet us with a wide smile as we entered the shop. Well, if this ain't... Well, well if this ain't the strangest thing I've seen all day, you bring in a lady and a real looker at that. Where on earth you catch this pretty little thing? She's my wife. <laughs> the stunned silence... Oh, well, I, I beg your pardon. I'll be a monkey's uncle. This goes to show you never know where the cards may fall. You make it sound like me getting married is some kind of miracle. I always saw you as one to choose money over love, sir. <laughs> wow. Oh, pardon me. This isn't appropriate to say in front of your wife. Wow. He really just immediately said, wait, you can get a woman 
Really? <laughs> God damn. Just the immediate shade. How often does he come here to get his portrait taken as well? The fucking camera portrait shop, whatever, knows him this well. That's wild. Uh, um, do you come often here to the shop? On occasion. I need some things here from time to time. He's avoiding her eye contact again. I do think that's a sign that he's kind of nervous about things. Is he embarrassed that he takes so many photos? <laughs> I'd imagine just of himself. There's new technology, so of course. Maybe that's it. Maybe he just... It's a, like one of those things he wants to show off, so he takes pictures of things when he can. Maybe he brings his friends there. Hmm. I see. And you go smirking again. What's so funny? Gotta have our photo taken, yes? I'm so nervous and excited. I've never had one before. And to think it's taken side by side with you. What are you talking about? Arden? Who said we're getting our pictures taken? And side by side? Please. You're sending shivers down my spine. But, but this is a photography shop. Hey, shopkeep. The product I contacted you about, is it ready? What the fuck? I thought he was asking. Like, I was like, okay, they're taking a photo together. And then I was like, oh, he just wants a photo of her to show off. It's neither. He just literally got out here because he's got something to pick up in town. Wow. Oh, oh, yep. Sit tight. I'll be right out. You take a seat. There's a chair over there. What? I'm going to show you something much more exciting than sitting still and waiting in front of a camera lens. Uh, oh? Just do as I say. Uh, okay. Oh my god. What is this shit? Why is she going along with this? I sat down in front of a large mirror, which I presume was normally used to check your appearance before having your picture taken. Sitting before a mirror with someone else present was quite nerve-wracking. Out of embarrassed, I dropped my gaze to my knees. But when Jacopo returned, I was entranced by the curious object in his hands. Okay. That's kind of beautiful. Look, look at this CG. He actually looks like a fucking gentleman there. Much as I hate him. I don't even like the hat in this shot. The hat is very small. His normal portrait makes his hat and suit look much cooler. But his face there and his hair there, oh my god. Kind of sexy. Meanwhile, she's absolutely fucking gorgeous. Oh, they're going to make a movie together. That's one of those things where you spin it. Oh, okay. That's cute. She's smiling so much. Her hands are so tiny. Yeah. These hands are like three times the size of hers. She's so fragile. She's so pretty. Yeah, she is. Glad we actually get to see her happy for once. Never see her happy in CGs. Man. What is this? You know what persistence of vision is? Huh? <laughs> the human eye does not perceive the world 100% accurately. This is especially true for objects in motion. It remembers images for a short time. If you put a new image in the same place, your eye perceives it in motion. Um... Seeing for yourself will be faster than explaining it. You see the slits in the disc? Look through the bottom one and into the mirror. Uh, okay. Good. Just like that. Bring your head in nice and close. Here goes. Standing behind me, he slid his finger across the top of the peculiar toy, causing it to spin gracefully. And then... The first animation of all time. A camera obscura. This is cute. Aww. So now she's seeing the beauty of like modern technology. He's really into technology and advancement. I guess that makes sense. He's an investor. He likes to see technology in this and like this and invest in it. Maybe this is what made him his money. They did focus on cameras a lot when they started describing this era. That's so cute though. <sighs> so? What do you see? A 
dancing. A man and a woman are dancing. Sounds like you're not having any trouble seeing it. Are they dancing well? Yes. Yes, they are. It's the most adorable thing. What? Adorable? That's funny. I asked to have it modeled after a ballroom dance. Uh, um, yes. It's a very elegant dance. But you see, they're small. Like little dwarves. Which I thought was kind of cute. And they seem so close. Going around and around without ever letting go of each other's hands. This is incredible. Why does it look like they're dancing? They were all lined up in a row a few moments ago. Goodness, I just explained that to you. It's playing a trick on your eyes. What you're seeing is lots of different pictures in a short period of time. To put it in words you might understand better. It's an illusion. Your eyes are being fooled into thinking the image is moving. An illusion? But they're dancing. They really are. And they look like they're having a wonderful time. Are you sure it's an illusion and not something else? To me, it does not seem to be. I cannot see it as anything but two tiny people dancing. That's how it works. Reach out your hand and try to grab them. You won't be able to. Ah, uh, you're right. That's a shame. I didn't think you actually would. That's so fucking cute. She actually tried to grab them. Oh my god, I fucking love her so much. And at least he's trying to share some happiness with her. I still don't like him, but I can see why she sees this as a good memory. I wonder if he had this made specifically for her as a marriage gift. It's the most precious thing. <laughs> they look as though they're dancing atop my palm. I was mesmerized by the strange phenomenon. Pictures were moving after all. Still images had begun dancing before me. It was almost as if God had breathed life into them. He caught an illusion, but I could not grasp that. It was such an adorable, heartwarming sight. I imagined the two were off living in some other world, separate from our own. They looked so happy. I was almost certain that they were off dancing in their joyous world, free from all the sorrow and loneliness and pain of this one. Eventually, the speed at which they danced began to slow, as if they were resting their legs. I almost thought I could hear the sound of their feet with each step. I like how it's slowly getting darker too. Like it slowly started to fade, the colors. That was so good. Definitely feels like a metaphor. Oh, it 100% is. The idea of romance, of love being fleeting. It's just an illusion. You spin the disc, you watch the couple dance. They seem so happy. They have such a good time. And eventually, that fades away. All that you're left with is the memory of it. All that she's left with is the memory of this kindness. And that keeps her going in her own little world, even though he really doesn't give a shit about her. And it's also a pretty good metaphor for, like, love in general. Love in general, especially when it came to, like, Mel and some of the previous people where there was, like, feelings of love. But there were other things that got in the way. Which I'll stop. Never I will run into this pain as much as I need to. Love is all about chemicals in the brain. And after that, you're left with attachment. You're left with feeling. That's what matters. As long as you actually choose someone you care about, you can love people forever. But yeah, you have to get over that puppy phase. She got through this honeymoon phase and she's just been living with that in her heart for that whole time. Hmm. Ah, uh, stopped. They can dance forever. They don't get tired. I see. I'm amazed such an incredible device exists in this world. It makes me wish I'd gone outside sooner. I'm sure someone from as distinguished a house as yours has seen plenty of amazing things with your family. Hardly. I rarely ever left the house. I'm ignorant about all the ways of the world. If you had not told me, I would have probably never known about moving pictures. The illusion of moving pictures. You like it? Yes, of course. More than the portrait you had painted? Yes. Yes, I do. The painting was wonderful too, but... He 
You can't seem to make up your mind. Go on, tell me. Which do you like better? Bader? Which do you like better? The portrait or this? Uh, um, I like this better. I see. He looks somewhat pleased. Hmm. But when it comes down to it, this is a simple trick only a child would fall for. Then, I suppose that makes me a child. If it means I get to watch something as splendid as two tiny people dancing, I'll happily fall for the trick. Oh, did I keep two on? Whoops. <laughs> Quit describing it as two tiny people dancing. You're gonna lose your head that far up in the clouds. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know how else to describe it, though. It's a toy called a fenikistoscope. Fenikistoscope. It's a toy called a fenikistoscope. Wow. Yeah, I, I feel you on that white head, girl. Fenikistoscope? Fenikistoscope. Fenikis... Wheel. Close enough. Where did the wheel come from? <laughs> That's fucking cute. I kind of like that. <laughs> it was invented around 30 years ago. I had the shopkeep make one modeled after the original design. So, the shop owner drew this? He did. A lot better than you'd expect, isn't he? Yes, indeed. I'm surprised he could draw something so cute. Say that to his face and he'll go red as a bead. What I'd give to see a load of that. You should tell him the next time you see him. <laughs> He's such a sweet man. Despite how he looks, you mean? It, it's not right to judge people based on their appearance. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't take it too seriously. Yeah, a lot of people say that when they're not kidding. The shopkeep here loves new technology. That fenikistoscope is one such invention that caught his eye. You can trick the eye into thinking drawings are moving. Using a sequence of photos, you can perhaps make it seem as though real people are moving too. And if it becomes possible to show those images to many people at once, these developments could broaden the options artists have to express themselves. The man's really saying animation, animation is the future. And he's not wrong. 1890s, that would actually be when the first animated like sequences were coming out on like film material. Damn. That's what he should be investing in. Getting on Disney super fucking early. <laughs> Not drawings, but photographs? Yes, photos. Oh. Oh, he's going straight into movies. Okay, he's going into ca video cameras. Whoops. <laughs> he's not into the 2D, everybody. He's into the 3D. <laughs> yes, photos. By taking hundreds or perhaps thousands of photographs, it would be possible to reproduce the world as we see it. This room, people walking down the streets. There's no point in recording boring everyday life, though. If you're going to leave a recording of anything behind, it should be the projects and enterprises that move nations. Say, for example, a moving record of the opening ceremony of the railroad. That would be something worth watching. And then in time, it would expand beyond a mere record-keeping technology and find its way into the hands of artists. Wow, he's got a lot of big theories about the future. Is such a thing possible? It must have remained still for a long time just to take a single photograph. Right now it isn't, but eventually it will be. And I'm not simply fantasizing here. Is that so? It sounds so very futuristic. Do you... What? Do you want to support people who work on that sort of thing? Is that why you're friends with the owner? It has nothing to do with my wants. I merely think there's money in it. The rich starve for entertainment, and artists create that entertainment. I have no interest in their pretentious self-expression. I just want their money. Oh, God. <laughs> what? What's so funny? You look like you're enjoying yourself. Honestly, it's just about the money. As you say... It does sound like he's kind of lying to himself a little bit. But he did directly tell her, hey, it's just about the money, baby. 
But yeah, I think on some level, he does actually care about this. He's actually interested in new technology. He's interested in things advancing to the future. Yeah, the pause, exactly. The dramatic pause. And you could tell by the way he was saying things there, like just by the way it was written. When he actually showed her that, he was very excited to see that she liked it. And he specifically was very interested in making sure that she liked it more than the portrait. The idea of her liking what he produced for her rather than what she had had produced in the past. The fact that she came in here just expecting a photograph and a portrait with him and her. But he made her something else. He wanted to make sure she preferred that. It's kind of cute. I still don't like him. <laughs> I still don't like him, but I don't have to like him. She likes him. And yeah, he is keeping it very down to earth and just saying like immediately, hey, it's just about the money. I don't care about anything else. Whether he is gaslighting himself or whatever, like he made that very clear from day one. <sighs> and then there's also the possibility <laughs> that he didn't care about her at all. And now I'm misreading him and doing what she's doing and trying to see some romanticism in him. Maybe he was just like, do you prefer it to the portrait? Because he's like, rich people like this, right? Rich people will like this more than portraits. This is going to make me money. Uh, who knows? Who knows? We'll find out as this goes on. You never really understand anyone. That's the thing. You need to get, take time to know people. All right, let's get moving. Next is dinner. What? You're leaving already? Does that displease you? Uh, n no, not at all. Tell you the truth. I wanted to spend a little more time playing with the Fenicus wheel. <laughs> she still calls it Fenicus wheel to this day. That's so fucking adorable. I could not bring myself to say as much. Reluctantly, I approached the owner to return the wheel. Don't bother. Bring it with you. Well, but if you don't want it, that's fine too. Just make your decision quickly. You're making the driver wait. Having said that, Jacopo exited the shop. I alternated between looking at his back and the Fenicus wheel, debating what I should do. And then, with a smile, the owner whispered to me. You're allowed to You're allowed to keep it, really. Your husband's out there has made it as a gift for you. For me? A little while back, he came to my shop asking if I could make a Fenicistoscope. Now that about knocked me out of my chair. He's a man who almost never asks for favors. Pretty damn brusque, and he's got a tongue sharp enough to cut steel. But he's not wicked to his core, I swear it. But please, ma'am, be a pillar of support for him. Oh, God. It was a gift for her? I figured it was. It was a marriage gift, yeah. So he did make it for her. He is very Sundare. That whole thing where he was just immediately like, if you don't like it, just leave it. Otherwise, bring it with you. I don't care. You're making the driver wait. Like, he's very no-nonsense, but at the same time, I think he does care. Like, if she hadn't brought it with her, I think he'd be kind of heartbroken. But at the same time, the way he treats her is just absolutely horrible. Uh, it's a complicated relationship. In that moment, Fenicus wheel became a precious treasure to me. We'd only just married days earlier, and yet... He commissioned it for me without even knowing what I looked like. It was filled with a warm, pleasant elation. I agreed with the owner. Jacopo was not a bad man. He merely had difficulty expressing himself. Hurrying back to the carriage, I gave him my deepest thanks. He glanced over at me for a moment and turned back towards the window and muttered, Yeah. From there, we went to a restaurant for dinner. You call this a pizza? The crust is an atrocity. Like I'm chewing on rubber. How can you wave my country's flag and not serve spaghetti? Do you have any shame at all? <laughs> oh my god, yeah, okay. This wine is pitifully unbalanced. Far too high levels of acidity. Listen to me carefully. The house wine is the face of a restaurant. He complained about every little thing. It was a complete disaster. But curiously enough, I was not at all put off by his behavior. Why? He sucks. He's terrible. Why are you fine with him belittling everyone and shitting on everything? 
He's a Karen. He's worse than a Karen. He didn't even ask to see the manager. He's probably bitching at the waiting staff. Fuck me. Although it is kind of wild that they advertise themselves in an Italian restaurant and can't get pizza right or have spaghetti. That's that's a problem. <laughs> in the sunset, the carriage made its way to a nearby hill. Cool nighttime breeze felt wonderful on my skin, flushed from the alcohol, and the light from the gas lamps had a comforting warmth to it. Though Jacopo had complained about the quality of the wine, once he had intoxicated himself, his mood improved visibly. It made him unexpectedly talkative. <laughs> Great, so he's nicer as a drunk. That's awesome. Look out at the city. A gloomy town that shuts down at night isn't suited to expansion or growth. But this city isn't like that. You can see people walking beneath the lamps, and you can hear the bustle of them talking. This is a city that still has plenty of room to grow. As they ride the rising wave of the economy, many more, many, many more people will gather here. More people means more money in circulation. More money in circulation means the city grows. Companies are founded and more goods are bought and sold. Will it really change so drastically? It can be difficult to see what's happening from the inside. The majority of people just go about their daily lives and the next thing they know, things are different. No. I'd wager most don't notice the changes at all. Those things with their eyes sharp enough to realize what's happening can see success. I cannot afford to overlook even the most minute change. Man's really dishing his fucking manifesto at every fucking chance he gets. <laughs> he's just an NFT, bro. Just 100% every time. He's a stonks, bro. He's just like, you see that city out there? As soon as the business springs up, I'm going to invest in it. I'm going to make so much money. I'm going to be so rich. Oh, God. Do you have a dream of some kind? A dream? I'm not sure if it's easy enough to attain to call it a dream. Others might call it greed, or perhaps ambition. Don't laugh now. My intention is to make the world mine. The world? Yes, the world. And to do that, you need neither physical strength nor kindness, but money and influence. People have no choice but to kneel before those forces. Why are you so intent on attaining power? Because I want to change my country, I imagine. Your country? Ah, oh, fuck. You're aware that you're aware that I'm an immigrant, right? I emigrated from an island in the Mediterranean, though not the same island as you. My country is a peculiar place where candor and violence go hand in hand. As a whole, the country is on the poor side. And if nobody does anything about that, I'm one of but a few of my fellow countrymen who has, his eyes, has set his sights on the new world. They're falling far behind other nations. If I find success here, perhaps that'll catch their attention. But if it doesn't, then my country is doomed to collapse. Did he come from... I was going to say Sicily, right? Sicilian, yeah. Hmm... Maybe he should establish the mafia. <laughs> is that is that where this is going? That's an interesting direction to take this, though. So even though he belittles all the other immigrants who come over here to work on the railroad, he's just straight up, like, doing his best to be a good representation for Italian-Americans? Fuck. Now that's a deep fucking character. Ah! Oh. Yeah, Mafia is a big thing in Sicily. Yeah, even the actual, like, Godfather Godfather was Sicilian. Ow, my brain. I don't know how to take that in. That's an, that's why... Uh, that's part of why he hates immigrants as well, I guess, because he sees himself in them. He sees them as like him, but they didn't, like, struggle hard enough to get above in the world. Even though it's different situation... Mm. Okay, okay. You're a complicated character. You're interesting. I don't have to hate you anymore. I just have to disagree with you. <laughs> I have much love for your homeland. My feelings are a little more complicated than mere love. But that's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Well, I'll have to remember not to get myself drunk around a woman again. Forget everything I just said. It's about time we head back to the house. All right, but, um, 
What is it? Is it alright if I provide you encouragement as you try to obtain your dream? I know my presence is more likely to be a hindrance, but I'd like that to be, be there as you watch, as you trek forward. I suppose. Do as you wish. Thank you. You have my support then. Um, <laughs> darling. Mm. It's sending a shiver down my spine, though not an unpleasant one. Oh, the smile. I'm glad to have you as my partner. Okay, so he actually let a bit of himself be real there for a moment. And I can see why she found him attractive when he was talking about animation and like the future of things. Whenever anybody's talking about something they're passionate about, it makes them way, way, way more attractive to you. Because yeah, it's just like, wow. This person actually cares. This person actually has dreams. This person has ambitions. This person has things they care about. It's it's a very normal like human thing to be like, damn. I don't even like these things, but it's cool to hear them talk about them. He's an interesting character. This is going to be like an interesting chapter, is what I will say. And yeah, you don't have to like him. But you don't have to hate him. We just have to see how his story goes. I still hope he gets punished for all this shit. But I'm very interested. I just hope Whitehead Girl doesn't get dragged down with him. I was without a doubt happy then. His smile. The things he said. The Fenicus wheel he gave me. They were all undeniably real. And those memories give me the will to wait. The day things go back to the way they were. They allow me to believe. Now that was a powerful chapter tr scene transition. God damn. They're getting vocal lines for the scene transitions now? Let's fucking go. Um, yeah, I'm interested. What was I going to say? There was something that hit me harder there. Fuck, I can't remember what it was. Oh, but yeah, that metaphor of like the illusion of a couple dancing. That is 100% being like dived into with the white haired girl's feelings here. She saw one little glimpse of him in a, like, a more real state. But his dream is also an illusion too. Because he talks about wanting power and money and to like, essentially control the world. He's never going to be able to get that. You're never going to be able to get that much money. And the problem is, when you're seeking the kind of money that can literally change the world, that's unattainable. Even if you have like enough money to change like a city or enough money to reinvigorate your own economy back home, he's still going to think it's not enough. He's still going to keep striving for more because there's going to be new technologies emerging, new things going on. He's never going to be happy with what he has. And so that is an illusion for her, the illusion of the happy couple dancing because that's never going to happen for her. He's never going to just give up on his trying to gain money and be like, okay, now I'm happy with you. Um, The other thing that I was going to say is maybe because he did that whole line where he was like, oh, I'll never get drunk in front of a woman again. Maybe he was embarrassed that he let his soft side show as well. That he actually said that he liked being called darling and that he shared some of his passion and that he talked about his reason for wanting so much money being because of where he came from. Maybe that soured the relationship a little bit for him too. The fact that he had been soft in front of his wife. And in that time, maybe his thought process was he was supposed to be a hard ass to her and she was just supposed to serve him kind of thing. And so he was embarrassed about that, and that pushed him away from her even further. Possibly. These are all interesting ideas. Anyway. Interesting. <laughs> but yeah, if he's so, like, soon soon about hiding his emotions, then yeah, the fact that he said that in front of her would probably make him more angry at the fact that she knew that. Every time she smiled at him and was like, Oh no, it's okay, I'm happy being with you. I just want you to achieve your dream. I want to support that. It would make him a little angrier each time that he had shown her that sliver of goodness rather than the mask that he wears. This is probably the maid. This is something that actually happened to another maid. She heard a sound in the middle of the night. A sound like dripping water. At first, she thought it was raining, so she looked through the window. There wasn't a cloud in the sky to cover the stars. Maybe it's a faucet, she thought. So she stepped out of her room and into the corridor. 
Compared to her room, it was unearthly chilly. The maid regretted not being bringing something to cover herself with. But that didn't make any sense. Normally, the temperature wasn't that much colder outside her room. Her night clothes had always been more than enough for a trip to the lavatory. Wondering what the reason could be, she made her way towards the sound. But then, she realized something. There were no faucets in the direction she was going. Rather, she was headed towards a hall. The mansion where she served had many halls, but they want, this one was off in a far corner of the house, the least used hall of them all. It had a high roof, but not a lot of space, so it was difficult to make good use of. It also had a somewhat heavy air to it, a very curious room. It was the kind of place you might assign someone to clean as part of their hazing. Anyway, when the maid realized the sound was coming from that particular hall, she, as you might expect, let out an uncomfortable sigh. But there might be a leak, and having noticed, she couldn't simply ignore it, you know. So, as much as she hesitated, she pushed open the doors to the hall. There was nobody there, and it didn't look like anything was leaking either. There were no puddles or water stains anywhere to be found, but she could still hear the sound. Drip, drip, getting louder and louder, slowly stepping further into the room, looking left, then right, then left again. She searched for the source of the sound, coming to a stop in the center of the hall. She stood there, still, quiet, and then a chilly spot on the nape of her neck. With a little yelp, she reached back to feel her neck, but it wasn't wet. Confused, she slowly, warily tilted her head backward. And there hung a bloody skeleton from the ceiling. <laughs> it's just Maria messing around and telling a story. It's all good. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That's rich, amazing. Oh my god. You scream like a little girl. But Maria, you little. Oh my god, are you men or children? This is my house, and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Whose words were those again? Sh shut your mouth! How do you know about that? Were you eavesdropping? And another thing, I do not care for that kind of stupid fantastic tales you women so love to pass around. Because they scare you? <laughs> You're never gonna be able to handle anything scary, Jacopo. Grrr. Whoa, don't glare at me like that. You're gonna destroy my sights. God damn. <gasps> Uh-oh. He likes her. <laughs> the way he's looking at her is not very good for me. I love her. I love her too, but this is worrying. So, did you come here for the sole purpose of telling me that cheap tripe? Acting tough just after the fact makes you look like twice as much of a wuss. Well, I mean, I did make up a good half of it. But the maid really did hear a sound in the middle of the night. And it came from the back hall of this very mansion. Did you know? They say it used to be a chapel. Again, I have no interest in your women's little ghost stories. Is that so? You sure you're not just scared? Maria! Well, that said, the rumors aren't completely unfounded. This is a pretty old mansion and it's had a lot of work done to it. it kind of feels like it's barely holding itself together. Like a big old quilt with pieces from all different time periods. The back hall is one of the oldest patches. There's a huge window on the far end and supposedly there used to be stained glass in it. It was a depiction of an archangel, they say. Such a shame. I wonder when it was broken. If it was still there, I bet it'd be worth a fortune. I find that hard to believe. First of all, why would anyone put a chapel inside a mansion? I mean, in a big enough mansion, they actually did back in the days. A stained angel stained glass again? Yeah. So that's the hall. That's the one that's creepy. It's one of the oldest ones? Hmm. 
the original like story we've heard of like possibly the original witch and the original person locked in a tower had the tower so i wonder if the hall goes all the way back to like the original tower structure of the building the mansion that would make sense oh but she didn't have any windows in her tower maybe in the bottom though she was kept at the top of the tower it was giselle then no idea but michelle yeah michelle seems to like that room standing in front of the window all bold like although what's her name liked that room too um like the beast and his girl not pauline the other white-haired girl liked that room too even though she could barely see it maybe she just has an attachment to that area too the back of the house who knows who knows you got a point i guess now, how about you do some actual work instead of distracting yourself with all this nonsense? I do work, but, uh, the other maids can be a bit nasty, you know? Dealing with other women is like walking on glass. Am I to blame for that? What if I said you were? I, I don't know what voice to give her. She sounds too similar to Jacopo, but it's fine. <laughs> don't give me that look. They're just not fun to me. Simple as that. Nothing you can do about it. Is that so? Oh, yeah. I was talking to the madam, and she's telling me you want to be... Yeah. You used to be quite the gentleman. Were you perhaps actually in love back then? Sure don't act like it, so it's easy to miss. I guess you're not made entirely out of steel. Just like when you were younger, you're still... Do not speak of that. Oh, so she knew him before. I wonder if she comes from Sicily too. In which case she wouldn't be Maria, but Mario? No, it would be Maria. Maria is an Italian name too. Hmm. Interesting. They might have known each other as children. Deep. The past is not worth remembering. It's unnecessary. So to you, the past exists just to be cast aside. I Nah, it's not important. If you don't want me to talk about it, I won't talk about it. But your wife... Never mind. I'll leave you be. I have to get back to work soon, so I'll be staring down the head maid's art expile. <laughs> they need to stop bullying the maid, man. <laughs> Alright. If the fancy strikes me, I'll drop by and we can trade more ghost stories. Maria. Hmm? What? No ghost stories? No, not that. I've not forgotten about those days. But... No, it's... I... Oh, that's a lot of awkwardness. Hold the fuck up. Maria becomes sus. I mean, it's not really too sus, but yeah. That pause there. Like, I haven't forgotten about those days. It's just... Uh, oh. There's some deep emotion there between these two. I'll be off then. All right. If the fancy strikes you, drop by and we can trade something other than ghost stories. <laughs> what did I tell you? I'll consider it. Goodbye. Oh, that fucking sprite. Now that's conflicted emotion. God damn. God damn it. I can't escape anything. Maybe they did used to be in love. Maybe that's why she teases him so calmly about the idea of him being in love. Did you actually used to be in love? Or... That could be bad. Ah, you've grown to be so beautiful. Such a wonderful fragrance. The scent of roses is so calming. I wonder why that is. Would it cause any trouble if I picked one? Oh, shit, she's actually here. And she's in the Rose Garden at night again. Okay, maid. Okay, we're doing this again. Is she going to drain the color from a rose again? <laughs> oh, damn it. This is how they met last time. In the flaxen-haired rose house. Good times. Good times. Why, hello there. Out for a midnight stroll, are you? Quite the peculiar hobby. Madam? Uh, um, I 
cannot spend as much time as I'd like outside during the day, so I end up coming out at night. Apologize if I startled you. Oh no, not at all. This is a, there is a chilling, captivating beauty to the side of your snow-white form, standing there in the moonlit garden. I would hardly... Um, what are you doing out here so late? I saw a figure through the window. On the slight chance it might be a burglar, I thought it my responsibility to ensure they did not break in. It was also the middle of the night when the grocer's servant broke into their safe. That's a direct quote. Hold the fuck up. She's breaking timelines right now. That was in the Flaxen Head storyline. News of that spread quite far. I'm sure you would have heard about it. Oh, but Gamash was in prison some time ago. Dear me. I cannot seem to get my head out of the past. Uh, um. You intend to give that white rose to someone? Yes, I was thinking about giving it to my husband. I expect he has a little fondness for such feminine tastes. The scent of flowers has a truly calming effect. He might find it relaxing when he needs a reprieve from his work. Reprieve, even. Oh, is that so? You are very kind-hearted. Speaking of white roses, the rose he meant to give you was the same shade of white. Oh? He? But when you touched it, it turned a deep shade of red. What the f- Yeah! Different- different thing. Different thing. Different timeline. Made you are breaking. Made quit this. <laughs> this is freaking me out and it must be terrifying her. But she's telling her about the different timeline. Mel? Yeah. A white rose that she turned red. Interesting. There was but a single white rose in the garden, so he was unable to give it to you as he had wished. In its place, he had a decorative rose fashioned for you. Uh, um, what exactly are you referring to? Oh dear, do you not remember? But I am to assume you've forgotten what happened to the rose accessory as well. He was unable to give that to you either. But that time, because you rejected the gift, I'm not criticizing you for that decision, of course. You had a perfectly good reason for not accepting it. Heartbroken from having lost you, he buried the rose in this garden. Over the years, the roses in the garden withered away, and in their place grew a thick, unsightly nest of weeds. Many, many years later, that accessory was dug up by a beast, and then he did get to give it to her. And curiously enough, it had not a speck of rust on it. Uh, beast. You do not remember him either. The foreign man who, through his interaction with you, almost regained his humanity. Uh, I'm sorry. I have no idea what you speak of. The only gift I've ever received from a man is my Fenicus wheel. And furthermore, I've only lived in this mansion for a year. While the garden was not thriving as it is now, it was certainly not in ruins when I arrived. Because I had been taking care of it, yes. But for whatever reason, by my hands alone, I was unable to make it into anything quite as splendid as it is now. Once you arrived, I began to work on it, however. Just look around. You've restored it to its former glory, to the magnificence of the flaxen-haired family's time. I promise I'm not trying to fault you for anything. Now that I think about it, it makes sense you would not remember. Though you are still you. You're different from before. Different, though not in the sense of a wholly distinct person. Tell me, is your name again? My name is... Yes, but you should already know that. Again? More proof that you are indeed you. Did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person you're waiting for? 
Her name is Michelle. His name is Michelle. Brain, work. Is Michelle the master of the mansion? Am I Michelle working along with the maid? Are they the same person? Person waiting for Michelle, 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 Michelle. That makes sense to my brain. Maybe not. <laughs> what are you talking about? We got her. I've met you many times, and I know of your past, of events that transpired long, long ago. Uh, um, I, I, I'm telling you the truth. I first came to this mansion just a year ago. Until then, I'd never left my country, or even set foot out of my house. We did not have any servants either. So where then are you saying we met? This mansion, of course. But I... I'm telling the truth. It was a year ago, shortly after my parents fell ill and received an offer for my marriage. I knew something had to be done. I knew it, and so I... So I... I'm telling the truth. If that is what you remember, then I do not doubt you. But I also suspect I know why you seem so flustered. Are there moments when your memories seem... hazy? And it seems like important details have fallen through the cracks. You needn't fret. One day, eventually, you shall remember it all. One day. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The way she worded that was so perfect. She did the whole like, Did you know the one you're waiting for? Their name is produ pronounced the same way as yours. She didn't say like, You have the same name. So I feel like, yeah, it's Michelle and Michelle. Like Michelle, C-H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, and Michelle, the man that we saw who met with Giselle. Giselle, Michelle, Michelle, Giselle, brain, brain hurty. <laughs> um, but anyway, that would mean either who we are walking through the mansion with the maid, learning about all these past memories. We're either Michelle, the man with the white hair, or Michelle, the girl with the white hair, the white haired girl. And either way, the maid is no longer playing games anymore. The maid is just like, fuck you, you're going to remember all your memories. <laughs> oh, God. The maid is kind of breaking in this timeline, too. Oh, I suppose this is, like, hundreds of years since she's been trapped in this mansion. Maybe she is just, like, running out of steam. All of her own memories are blending together, and she doesn't even know what's going on anymore. This is great, anyway. God damn, they're finally breaking down the storyline. Um, this time. The hell is this? A white rose? Did she leave this here? A flower? What does she think she's doing? Is she trying to aggravate me? A garden. A damn rose garden is the whole problem. Flowers serve no purpose but to deceive. A garden is a sign of weakness. It has no place in this house. Is he going to destroy her garden? No, you piece of shit. There's nothing wrong with flowers. They make a house look more fancy. They're hard to take care of. They show that the ground is loved. Oh, a sign of weakness? Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling that. Like, that's his whole emotional state right now. I can't have emotions. Emotions are a sign of weakness. Flowers, those are girly. They make you want things. They're a sign of weakness. Fuck th feelings. I don't have those. I don't need pretty flowers. Ugh. Approximately a week had passed since then. The white-haired girl was, as usual, spending her time in her room, reading and staying inside the house. Then... Maria barged in. Madam? Madam! Oh my, you're out of breath. What happened? What happened is we have a big problem. The, the garden. The rose garden. Oh no, it's a piece of shit. The garden? All the rose you put so much love and care into growing are being chopped down. We'll lose them all if we don't hurry. <gasps> Wow, he really did that. Upon hearing the news, the white-haired girl dashed from her room and towards the garden, with Maria following closely behind. She cared about them so much, she helped bring them back to life along with the maid. When she arrived, she saw a dozen or so sweaty, rugged men at work, 
Jac Jacopo shouting orders. The men clearly had no concept of how much a single flower was worth. No concern whatsoever for their beauty. But they mercilessly, thoughtlessly, hacked away at the shrubs like they were naught but weeds. Each flower they tore from the earth extinguished another of the many lives the white-haired girl had put so much time and effort into tending for. I like that wording too. That was really good wording. Each rose, oh God, represented another one of the lives the white-haired girl attended for. This is her rose garden. This is her mansion. She always comes here and like makes other people feel better. She takes care of people even though she gets destroyed for it. Just like the beast, just like Mel. Oh, maybe that's why the roses are symbolic. And the roses only bloom when she's around. Shit. That's good. That's why the house like starts to flourish when she's around and then ruin happens when she leaves. The maid hinted that? Yeah. The maid has definitely hinted that before. That, like the mansion needs her. It needs the master. Hmm. I fucking love this game. There's so many things that feel like they could be hints towards the darkness. The, the future. I read in darkness she blooms and kind of laughed in my mind. <laughs> In darkness, she blooms. <laughs> because she's the master. I'm not sure if she is the master, but I'm starting to think that. I'm not sure if he, her and, like, male Michelle are different people or if they're the same person, the same soul. Because we haven't seen them in the same timeline yet, but maybe they are. We've only just barely met male Michelle, and we don't know who's being shown around by the maid. But it could be the same person since it's always, like, the white hair and the red eyes. Who knows? We'll find out. <laughs> okay Jacopo, what are you? Oh, hello, Maria I didn't expect you would come with her Why? What'd you do? Why? Why, it goes without saying This house has no need of a garden Damn flowers have no place here Might as well do something worthwhile with the soil A miniature railroad would be better use of the space And certainly a great deal easier on the ice I could even get my hands on some genuine wheels. The same wheel is being used on the revolutionary transcontinental railroad. 10 or 20 years down the line, they'll be worth a fortune. You absolute piece of shit. God damn, he's so obsessed with the railroad. When he said do something useful with the soil, I was thinking like, you know, a garden. <laughs> something to grow fresh produce. But no, he's just like, oh, I could advertise my railroad and show everybody railroad. Railroad, the future. Fucking piece of... Jacopo. You know how much this garden meant to me. Don't you? Oh, look at her fucking face right now. I don't think I've ever seen her pissed off before. Except for when she was angry with Mel that one time. And even then, she immediately like switched back after she choked him for a bit. Holy fuck. Yeah, I hope you feel bad, Jacopo. Did it honestly have no place here? I was have a calming effect on people. They give you peace. They are not by any means worthless. So you're saying that white rose was your passive aggressive way of telling me to calm down? Not at all. I simply thought you... At the end of the day, you're just using them for your own purposes. To trick and deceive. To you, this rose garden was nothing but... Jacopo! You've gone too far. This isn't right. <laughs> gone too far? This is my mansion. What I do with my property is my business. This isn't your mansion, you piece of shit. You're not the master. With that rose arch out of the picture, we'll have a much better view. There won't be anything blocking the sun any longer. Yeah, you piece of shit. Maybe she likes the sun being blocked because she could actually go into her own fucking garden. Weren't you supposed to be sensitive to sunlight? Spend too much time out here and you're liable to fall ill. Get back inside now. You too, Maria. Oh, I hate him so much. Oh, no. The poor thing. Though she did not say a word, was surely thinking... Are you truly that determined to rob me of my sanctuary? The words twirled around in her head, unable to make the final journey to her lips. She stood there, looking down at her own feet as her husband marched off. 
and listen to the screams of the roses being reaped. After being torn down by Jacopo, the garden reverted to a state of ruined desolation. A shame after all the work that went into restoring it to the beauty it had under the flaxen haired family. And as Jacopo had said, in its place went scraps of metal, train wheels, prototype models, carbon rods. These items may have had value for him, but I certainly do not think it was worth robbing his wife of a place that made her feel comfortable just so he could store them there. Besides, I was rather fond of the Rose Garden myself. The roses seemed to evoke a sense of nostalgia in me. I felt as though somewhere far beyond the edge of my memories, I'd seen another garden of roses, modest though it may have been, but I cannot remember when it was. Does that come as a surprise to you? I'm quite sure there are periods of the mansion's history of which I'm not aware. But in any case, Jacopo had caused many people great pain in order to repurpose that garden for himself, and he continued to walk all over his wife. Whenever she tried to do something kind for him, he would brush her off, saying, That's not your place. He paid no mind whatsoever to the looks of dejection that rose to her face each time he rejected her. I was beginning to wonder if anything she had said about the man he had been a year earlier was actually true. And if it was true, did a person really go through such a drastic change of heart in such a short time? What do you think, master? I... No... I've spoken enough about me already. I seem to be talking a lot about myself this time. That's hardly appropriate behavior for a maid. Now, let us return to our tale. That's interesting. And somebody asked, wait, can she literally hear the screams of the roses? I, I don't think that was a literal thing. I think that was probably a like metaphorical like imagery, artistic kind of thing. The fact that they were her roses, they were her babies, seeing them cut down. I mean, to be fair, plants do scream when you cut them. If you didn't know that. They release little, little tiny sounds that can be recorded by equipment that we don't hear. But they do scream when you hurt plants. That not that a fun fact? <laughs> um, but yeah, I doubt she actually heard that. I think it was more just the idea that she had cultivated those. They were her babies. She took care of them. And he cut them down without giving a fuck. And yeah, talking about replacing all of that natural beauty, the life in the garden, with a whole bunch of scraps of metal. Very, very good imagery for the idea of like the industrial revelation, revelation, revolution, like taking over the world. We got rid of like our big open spaces and repurposed them as factories. We didn't need parks anymore because everybody just went to school. And... They send out distress signals we can't sense to. Yeah, chemical distress signals. They warn each other when shit's going on. When people are like coming and shit's happening. Yeah. Will she break the Fenicus wheel? Oh, that would be heartbreaking. If anything, I hope she gets over him now, though that may spell her downfall as well. We'll find out. We'll find out. That evening, the white-haired girl sat in her room staring sorrowfully at her Fenicus wheel. A small mirror before her, she tried spinning the paper disc, but it was just not the same as before. Her husband was not there at her side, and even more critically, there was not a smile on her face. And then, she heard a faint knock on her door. Who is it? It's me, madam. It's me. Wait, I, I pressed the wrong thing. May I come in? Oh. Maria, of course, come in. What are you doing here at this time of night? <laughs> was just wondering how you were doing. Should I have left you alone? No, it's no trouble at all. I'm always glad to have you. You're making me blush, madam. I got the feeling you were a little down in the dumps. So I'm here because I need to be. I just kind of ended up here, I guess. Maria. Sorry, I'm not making any sense. I can be a bit of a busybody, you know. Trouble with boundaries, I guess. Never been able to fix that. Oh, no. I don't consider you intrusive at all. I don't count how many times your bright smile and cheerful energy shone a light on me when things were dark. If I didn't have you, I would have given up already. 
You seem to see right through me. Even now, you're exactly right. I am feeling a little dispirited. That garden was an even bigger life raft than I thought. Perhaps I'm being overly dramatic, but the roses were almost like children to me. I get it. I do. You put your heart and soul into tending that garden. It was obvious how much you loved them. Of course it's gonna hurt watching a bunch of men stomp all over your flowers when you cared for them like your own children. Spot on. Now I know I said this once already, but you don't need to force yourself to put up with him, really. You don't have to bond to his will just because you're a woman. You could survive without him. Anytime you want to walk away, that's your choice. I mean, I'd sure be lonely if you left, madam. But your happiness is more important than any of that. So, you know. I'm a little bit worried now. I know we were all like, oh, Maria's so lovely. She's trying to take care of the white-haired girl. She's trying to get them divorced and, you know, save her. And maybe they can run away together. What if Maria is still in love with Jacopo as well? And she's trying to get the white-haired girl to walk away. And then she's just going to sneak right in there. I really fucking hope not. I like Maria so far, but I can't trust anyone in this game, man. Thank you, Maria. I truly do appreciate it. But I... I'd still like to wait. The day I can see his warm smile once more. If you say so. Well, in that case, I guess I'll have to be there to back you up. It'll be all right. You leave everything to this holy virgin. I'll have a stupid grin on my face no matter how down you're feeling. That phrasing after we just said that as well. And the fact that she calls herself the holy virgin. I, I'm starting to think something, yeah, really bad is going on here. What if back in Sicily, her and Jacopo were together? And he said he loved her and they made love and they were together and what if she even like got pregnant but then he ran away and left her and so she was the holy virgin in the fact that she had to pretend it was a miraculous conception because otherwise things got really bad oh god i don't even know yet but that could be a very dark nickname she's throwing out just to fuck around with people and actually, she's holding a lot of resentment in her heart. Foga pause? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Her name is Maria. Yeah, I know. Mother Maria. Like, I know, but still. I'm just thinking of ways this could go terribly wrong. <laughs> it's all likelihood. She's just a really nice girl. It's fine. <laughs> you really are the reincarnation of the mother of God, aren't you? What the fuck is this? Whoops. Oh, you? I told you. It's just a joke. Whatever. So, hey, madam, how about a dance? Uh, dance? At this time of night? Yep, and since it's so late, no loud music. All you get is a little whistling, courtesy of me. Uh, but this room is too small for... We use the Great Hall. Wouldn't that put us in everyone else's way? You would probably complain about the noise, too. No need to worry. Jacopo's out inspecting some factory or something today. After that, he's got a meeting, so he'll be staying the night elsewhere. The rest of the maids are in their rooms chatting away. No one will notice. Where I come from, we dance all the time. We take eat, drink, and be merry to heart. No food or drink for us, but we absolutely can dance. Dancing's a great way to forget all your cares. I... I'm not much of a dancer. No big deal. Nobody's watching. Come on, put on a little fancy perfume and let's have some fun. I don't have any perfume, though. Didn't think so. You've got all the right ingredients, madam, but you don't try to make anything special out of them. You've got so much potential, but not even a decent-sized wardrobe. At the very least, you should wear some perfume. Which is why... Ta-da! I brought some with me! Oh my god. Maids are in love with this stuff. It's a big hit with women all over the country. The base is vanilla and it's got several other fragrances mixed in. Give it a try. It smells divine. But, but Maria, I... Come on, what's the harm? Just a little splash on your wrist like so. What do you think? Ah, you were right. It smells wonderful. Doesn't it? 
So you like it? Yes. Very much so. Excellent. Now off we go to the Great Hall. Uh, are we really going to dance? You bet your butt we are. It's not healthy to hold up in your room all day. I know you can't handle a lot of sunlight, but you've still got to have some fun and move your body. Come on, let's go. Oh, Maria. You see, this seems really cute. I like it. I just want to believe she's a good-natured girl who takes care of her. And to the bunch of people that were saying, I mean, I think it's Mary rather than Maria. Like, yeah, Italian people call her Mother Maria, though. Like, the Virgin Maria. Maria. So, yeah. I'm having trust issues. I know, this game has given me trust issues. <laughs> Everyone in this game so far has been like, oh, they're so sweet. Oh, they like to torture people to death. Oh, they're so sweet. Oh, they really hate poor people and are horrible and terrible people. Uh, the creepy story she told, there has to be something to that. Yeah, the horror story. And now she's taking her to that hall, I'd imagine. Unless, well, she said back hall. So maybe the great hall is different from the back hall. They said there's a lot of holes in this building. But she could be taking her to the creepy hall. <laughs> Find out. Man, I fucking love this game. I theorize so much through this game, but it's because I have so much fun, man. Though she looked outwardly uncertain as Maria led her forward, and through her wrist, the white-haired girl seemed to be enjoying herself on the inside. Having spent her life without a single friend, she never dreamed of the day she would come. Uh, she never dreamed the day would come when she would find herself being dragged through the empty halls of a dark mansion by another woman. Maria's presence seemed to shine a light upon the quiet corridor. It would have been a very lonely trek without her. Maria spun around. Mar Maria spun around, gave an impish smirk, and raised her pointer finger to her lips with a soft, shh. The sight of it caused the white-haired girl to chuckle quietly. The two of them, on their way to their secret private ball, were like two adolescent girls. In short order, they arrived at the Great Hall. My heart was pounding all the way here. What's there to be nervous about? It's not like you're breaking any rules. Only kids get in trouble for staying up late. Once you're grown up, you're responsible for yourself. <laughs> I will say, though, it seems rather odd for two women to dance together. Lest. <laughs> tell her, Maria. Tell her. <laughs> exactly. Oh, if you're having a good time, what does it matter what's between your legs? Damn straight. Fucking let's go. <laughs> Maria just said buy rights. Let's fucking go. Where I come from, there are dances where families lock arms in a big ring and go round in circles. So who says two girls can't have fun together? I imagine you had many good memories with your family. Well, I don't have family anymore. What? Wait. All right, I'll show you how it's done. Watch carefully, because you're up next. She doesn't have family anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, just, she does that a lot. She lets things slip out where it's just like, yeah, let me trauma dump on you for one sentence. Just kidding. No, I'm kidding. Ghost in the main hall? <laughs> Don't be silly. But really, it happened. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> what damn it. Ah, uh, uh, okay. With a wide grin on her face, Maria began whistling softly and prancing across the floor with an energetic rhythm. It was not the kind of complicated dance you'd see at fancy parties. The motions were simple, flowing, unembellished. A folk dance, I suppose you might call it. She seemed to be improvising a little bit as well. But in any event, the white-haired girl was captivated. Despite it being a sequence of steps anyone could replicate, Maria breathed life into the dance. She was neither as lithe as an acrobat, nor as light on her feet as a professional dancer. She was her own lively, beautiful self. Maria twirled in place, the skirt of her maid uniform billowing gently up around her. With a smile, she extended her hand toward the white-haired girl. She hesitated for a moment, but as if being pulled forward by some invisible force, she took Maria's hand. Hand in hand, Maria ushered the white-haired girl into a dance. It was just the two of them, but you could almost see the crowd forming around them. The other people stepping up to join in. That's it, madam. Doing great. 
Now lift your leg up. Good. And spin like so. <sighs> this is not easy, Maria. I'm having trouble following along. You can do it. Looking good so far. You're a natural, madam. Oh, Maria. I won't fall for your flattery. I mean it. The whispers of the two girls. Their muffled laughs. Step, hop, step, step. The rustling of fabric. Many different sounds led atop one another, creating a little bubble of happiness in the center of the hall. The white-haired girl's movements were a great deal clumsier than Maria's, but Maria would never disparage her for that. On the contrary, she showered her with praise. As flustered as the white-haired girl appeared, I imagine she was quite pleased. Before long, the tightness in her face muscles loosened, a smile spread across her lips, and she began to brighten up. See, what did I tell you? Fun, huh? Yes, I'm quite surprised. Both that I can dance, and that I enjoy doing it so much. <laughs> Glad to hear it. They exchanged looks and both laughed. That might have been the first time I'd ever seen the white-haired girl so delighted. However, because of her infirmity, she quickly find herself out of breath. Her porcelain, her porcelain skin flushed red. Maria immediately stopped for a break. She could surely have continued dancing for some time yet, but Maria was conscientious of the white-haired girl's physical condition. She looked over at Maria regretfully. Apologies. If only I had more stamina. I'm hardly a suitable partner for you, Maria. Sure you are. This is all to cheer you up, madam. So as long as you're having fun, nothing else matters. Heck, I'm enjoying myself plenty too. What you think? Wouldn't it be nice to do this again sometime? Whenever you're feeling down, let's dance. If you... If you really do enjoy dancing with a frail girl like me, then I'd be glad to. Have a little more confidence in yourself, madam. You're so pretty and kind-hearted. I have loads of fun when I'm with you. So you don't need to be so hard on yourself, got it? Thank you. The pleasure is mine. It's an absolute honor to have the rare opportunity to see such a bright smile on your face, madam. <laughs> My apologies for keeping you out so late. Oh, she is smiling so beautiful as well. This is so nice. This is definitely the calm before the storm, but man, I'm just glad she's having a good time. She's got her fennel wheel, whatever she called it. Fennel wheel. <laughs> And she's got Maria, at least for now. She's got some happiness. But, I mean, she always has some happiness right before shit goes bad for her. I should get back to my room. Oh, I didn't even realize what time it was. I'm more than up for a little more gum flapping. You've improved my mood more than adequately. I don't want you to be tired for work tomorrow. Okay. Well, then. Let's get out of here. Yes. Let's. Smiles on both of their faces, they made to exit the Great Hall. However, before they reached the door, it swung open. A man's towering shadow cast the two women into darkness, his cold, bitter glare affixed on them. If I had even the faintest premonition this might happen, I would have done anything in my power to stop the two cheery girls on their way to the hall. But I am eternally powerless. What are you doing? Dude, why do you have to ruin her one bit of happiness? Oh, this music. We turn this up a bit. Standing before them in the doorway was the master of the house, Jacopo. Ah, uh, I thought you would not be back until tomorrow. And how would you know that? No, oh, forget that. Does my staying the night elsewhere have any effect on you? You were just waiting for this opportunity, weren't you? No? What would I possibly want you out of the house for? I'm sure you knew better than anyone. What? What is that smell? Perfume? When did you get perfume? I have to say, you must seem to be having quite the time. Look at you. You're out of breath. 
Red is a bead. I made the right decision coming back. Where the hell were you going? Oh, you piece of shit. That's no... Mm. Oh, I wasn't going. Jacopo, calm down. Seriously. You shut it. Now you're taking this tramp side? Tramp, I fucking hate him. I've told you before, you are not to leave this house without first consulting me. What do you mean to tell me you've forgotten? God, your ears aren't just for show, all right? They're better than that. I even throw out the parts you don't want to hear. Oh, I swear. I was not doing anything, you... Silence. No interest in your excuses. You're always watching from the shadows, observing, trying not to step on anyone's toes. In the back of your mind, you're mocking me. No. I... Listen up and listen good. You just try stepping out of line again. You just try disgracing me again. You will not get away with it. What a piece of shit. For the love of God, get back to your room now. You too, Maria. All right. God, what is this sickening, sickening sweet smell? How utterly infuriating. It'll take forever to get this off of me. I always thought you had at least some sense of taste. You like the smell. A piece of shit. I bet it smelled like roses and vanilla. Man's high key insecure. Yeah, he is. He's scared of his feelings. And he just decided she must be trying to sneak out of the house with someone. If she had any fucking sense, he would realize, oh, she's out of breath and flustered now. He must have been doing something here. <sighs> but that's his own problem. God damn it. Why did he have to disparage her so? What did she do wrong? Why did she do deserve that? She did nothing whatsoever wrong. She deserved none of the ridicule he showered her with. However, she was not a strong-willed woman. She did not have the courage to retort to the man yelling at her. And neither did Maria, it seemed. Without another word, they both scrambled out of the great hall away from Jacopo. The white-haired girl was a painfully miserable sight to behold. The cheer had drained from her spirit, and the rosy hue from her now pale cheeks. She was hunched forward slightly, looking like a small, scared animal. I hate that. She was having so much fun. The way the maid worded that made me afraid too. <laughs> the fact that we straight up had her say, and neither it seemed was Maria. It wasn't, and neither was Maria able to talk back. It was, and neither it seemed was Maria. Even though Maria has always been pretty good at talking to him like an equal and telling him how it is. I, I do feel Maria kind of set that up. Like with the perfume and everything. Telling her he would be out all night. And then him happening to come home at that one time. Mm. It might just be bad luck. I don't like it. Say, uh... I'm sorry. This is all my fault. If I hadn't asked you to dance, and me bringing the perfume only made things worse. No, you need not feel bad about anything, Maria. Maria. Too used to saying Mari up because Mari didn't. <laughs> Everything you did was with my best interests at heart. So, don't worry. I will be fine. Oh my god. That face is so devastating. Look at it. She barely has her eyes open. She's so emotionless. Fuck. Uh, um, so madam, I'll clear everything up. I really am to blame after all. He wouldn't even give me the, give you the time of day if you tried. He's a stubborn little shit when he's mad. I'll talk to him. He's more likely to listen to me. I'll make sure he knows he was jumping to conclusions. That I'm the one who dragged you out there to dance. And also that I forced you to wear the perfume. I'll clear everything up, okay? So please, you cheer up. It would be best if I could tell him myself. Shit. I really hoped, because yeah, she's right. It would be best if she could tell him herself. If she could tell him, you're a stupid fucking piece of shit. 
Here's what actually happened. By the way, stop treating me like shit. I've never done anything but been nice to you. Despite the fact that you continue to treat me like shit. But she's too meek for that. And so she's being used by Maria. Ah, I hate it. She's so sweet. She's too fucking innocent for this world. But yes, you're right. He would likely not listen to me. He rarely ever listens to me. I should be ashamed. I don't even hold a simple conversation with my own husband. These things happen, you know. It's not easy being married. In a lot of ways. Yes. Yes, you're right. I apologize for having you do something so unpleasant. But I would appreciate that. Oh, no problem. I'm happy to. Oh, winky face. I'm so happy to tell him all about it. I'm totally going to tell him. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> no need to apologize. I've got this. I'll dunk his head in cold water until he's not blowing steam from his ears anymore. I'll cool him down. Promise. And you never know. Maybe you'll be open to listening. You'll be back to the way you were a year ago in no time. Don't you worry. I'll take care of it, madam. Be positive. You look so much better with a smile on your face. All right. Thank you. Oh, the dramatic piano strum right as we finished that scene was so good as well. You'll cool him down, okay, Maria? Yeah, it sounds like she wants to. Um, you know. Give him a way to relieve his frustrations, shall we say? <laughs> and actually whisper more lies about the maid, about the white haired girl in Maria. I'm gonna feel real bad if I'm saying all this shit and it turns out Maria's actually super sweet and just trying to be on her side. But it, it, the game is definitely like luring me. Like, it started off as like, maybe there's a hint of some evil in Maria. Now it's like, oh yeah, you know, she's twisting shit. This is like bad telenovela, crazy plot lines going on. Shit's going down behind the scenes. Uh, I doubted Jacopo would listen, even coming from Maria. And I imagine the white-haired girl felt much the same way. However, she grabbed onto that sliver of hope. She let herself dream. She let herself believe, even just faintly, that everything would go well. Such is human nature. When, unnecessary, when uncertainty has you in its clutches, you grasp at whatever hope you can find to keep yourself afloat. That night, she did not sleep. She was afraid that even in her dreams, Jacopo would be shouting at her. She felt as though her memories of a year prior were beginning to crumble away. That's nice. I, I really like that transition. And let the memories crumble away. He's a piece of shit now. He doesn't deserve you. Just leave. I don't even care if the white-haired girl wants Jacopo. You could do better. Get the fuck out of there. Divorce him. Find another rich guy. Hopefully someone who invested in something better. Better yet, find whoever invested in camera, like, movie technology. Cuck him that way, too. Yeah, that guy's gonna be rich as fuck. Or someone who invested in the east side of the railroad. Absolutely destroy his spirit. <laughs> then there'll be a dead body hanging up in the back hall. <laughs> that maybe went a bit too far, but still. <laughs> the next morning, Jacopo stood alone in the den by the billiards table. He appeared to be rather agitated. His face was twisted into a frown. His pointer finger tapping restlessly against the hard surface of the table. Evidently no longer able to stay in one place, he paced a circle around the table and swiped up a rack in a queue, setting up a game of nine ball. I'm not intimately familiar with the ways by which men entertain themselves, but in truth, I was bewitched by the sight of him leaning over the table. It almost seemed as though a steel rod ran straight from his shoulder to the tip of his outstretched finger, upon which the queue was secured by another finger looped over it. With a smooth, flowing motion, he thrust the queue forward slightly, pulling it back and repeating the process once more, before ramming it into the cue ball, sending it rolling into another diamond of colored balls. A chorus of clicks and clacks emanated from the center of the room. Balls collided with one another and ricocheted off of the cushioned walls, a few landing in the pockets situated around the edge of the table. Jacopo appeared to have accomplished with this little trouble, this with little trouble, but I imagine merely striking the cue ball with the stick would be rather difficult for someone inexperienced. But despite his accomplishment, 
It seemed to only exacerbate his agitation. How is he positioning? He muttered, though I hadn't the faintest idea what he was talking about. What should have been a game for his enjoyment, he went about with a constant look of exasperation. I suspect he was using it as a way to blow off steam, and as a result, the tension in the air was palpable. I felt it would be improper to intrude in Prada, even considering my distaste for the man. There was an undeniable beauty in every motion he made, every perfectly audible clack of billiard balls flouncing off of one another. It was an enchanting sight. But then, someone with the slightest regard or appreciation for beauty came marching in with a hammer to shatter it like glass, without the slightest regard. My bad. Even the maid is kind of interested. The writing is so good. Is the weird wording on purpose? What weird wording? I don't think there was any real, real, real weird wording in that one. I think she was just saying, like she's entranced by it. She hasn't seen a game like this before. She hasn't seen someone playing billiards and he's actually really good at it. The fact that he's like lining up every shot perfectly and aiming perfectly. She's just like, damn, that's impressive. He's practiced a lot of this. He's very dexterous. He's very good. Real world wording. Look, it's been a long thing of reading today. <laughs> Made him sound hot. It did. For a moment, I was like, oh shit. Is the maid kind of interested in him? I think it's, I think it's another like setup for the whole idea. The same thing of the white haired girl kind of falling in love with him because he was so passionate about everything. He described the photography and the animation so animatedly. He was so passionate about it. Billiards is another thing he's passionate about. So that's what we're getting here. We're getting the maid being like, damn, he's good. That's pretty fucking cool. I like that. Well, you meant shoot like a gun. Oh, that's very different. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, who is this going to be? Someone who has no care for beauty. Gotta say, that was pr that's the same shopkeep voice. <laughs> it's just a random... You know what? Let's observe. Hmm. You know what? Let's go David Kun. Full David... Nerd? Okay, I can go nerd. Um, <clears throat> Um, Ashley? Gotta say, that was rather impressive. A man leaned against the frame of the open door. He was neither a resident nor worker of the mansion. The man's face was covered in scraggly stubble, his body draped in grime-caked garments. His eyes were sunken so deep it was as though I was looking at a fleshless skull, but there was a feral glimmer in them. Needless to say, he was not prim and proper. Uh, I don't know, this guy actually sounds pretty cool now. Now I like him. <laughs> How long have you been there? Tommaso? Oh god, okay, now that I know he's like a badly scruffly man. <laughs> Not long, but man, I can't help laughing. You were completely in your own word there. What do you want? That's not... What the fuck is happening to the voices now? Every time I add a new voice, everything goes wrong. What do you want? And why didn't you send a maid for me? Don't be such a hard ass. We ain't strangers, man. Why should family have to go through the maids to see you? That just ain't right, brother. Your doors should always be open for family. Enough. I am not your family. We're bound by something even stronger than blood. By our family. Our Koska. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't. You only ever bring up the Koska when it's in your interest. What's a... Is it Koska? It is, right? Is that... I kind of want to Google it. I'm going to Google it. Fuck it. I saw someone literally say, don't Google it, but fuck it. I need to make sure this is a mafia term. Cosca meaning. Gruppo de mafiosa legate a una persona a una fam familia. Yeah, it's Italian. It stands for gang. So yeah, they were literally in a gang together. They're literally part of the mafia. Gruppo de mafiosi legate a una persona a una familia. Love it. Love that it just gave me that Italian translation. Yo, Zion! Damn, Fogger's voices are so accurate, though. Uh, kind of failing in this chapter. <laughs> Everybody is different from what they're supposed to be, but I'm having fun with it. Hope you're having a good morning, Zion. It's lovely to see you here. Ooh, scary. Come on now. Whatever happened to you, little Jack? Where'd the little boy who used to call me Uncle Tommy go? 
Oh, I really should have done a Godfather voice for this one. <laughs> no. Don't you dare use that godforsaken name. Get the hell out of my sight. What in God's name are you doing here? The man hailed from the same country as Jacopo. They had a peculiar relationship. Though they were not blood related, he referred to Jacopo as family. They came from a sunny island in the Mediterranean Sea, a place of many unique customs and an entire underground society. Cosca was a word that originated from and referred to those underworld families. It would be another 30 or so years before organizations like theirs received much public attention. At the time, they were not widely known. Just a short step into the future and they would grow so powerful, the very mention of them would send a chill through the room. Oh shit. So back in Sicily, he was part of the family. He considered him Uncle Tommy. Yo, let's fucking go. Learning so much lurking here. I'm glad to hear it, Zion. <laughs> it's lovely to have you here. It even gives the explanation. Yeah, that's why I shouldn't have Googled it. It actually explained it. But yeah. So, Mafia. And even our boy is ex-mafioso. Hey now. That's no way to talk to a fellow Bears Bearzadi. Bearzadi? You're on the short list to become the next couple familia. We respect our brothers. That's how we operate. Oh god, we're really doing this, aren't we? <laughs> I could go home and say you threw me out of oh I could go home and say you threw me out of your house how'd you like those rumors to be spread the soon to be couple familia wouldn't even listen to a little request I very much doubt anything you said could damage my reputation <laughs> wait is this a Jojo how dare you how dare you he's a future couple what does that mean does he like he's going to be a captain this is so annoying because I recently rewatched Godfather. And the only one I remember is like. Fuck, now I can't even remember that term. The, the like the advisor to the family. Boss. Okay, so it is future boss. Capo familia, boss of the family. Hmm. What's the one that in Godfather they talk about a lot? The guy Consiglieri? Consiglieri? Is that the one that actually like advises the top ranks? Yeah, Consiglieri. You're thinking of Consiglieri. That one. That's a cool term. I like that one. Other than that, I don't remember any of the terms. <laughs> the advisor. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Okay. I ain't been exiled yet. As long as I'm still one of them, you won't ignore me. Oh, that's some mighty fine looking whiskey you got there. Don't mind if I do. Nothing here is for you to drink. Booze is my lifeblood, man. No love for a brother. You worthless leech. Surely it wouldn't be long before you find yourself in exile. If you're lucky enough to get off the hook with just exile, that is. Why did I go British for this guy? <laughs> Child could snap that scrawny neck of yours. If I'm going to go, I'd rather go tied up, tortured for days, covered in tiny little cuts from head to toe. You sick bastard. You disgust me. Call me a carnal adventurer. I like his style. Fuck me. <laughs> I despise the mundane. Last thing I want is to go out like a wet farn. Is this what you came for? To waste my time with your insipid nonsense? Oh, hardly. Surely you have an idea what I'm here for. And how much I need. <laughs> you damn maggot. A worthless leech. A sick bastard. And a damn maggot. <laughs> what other names have you got up your sleeve for me? You son of a... Do you honestly think this is how you ask for a favor? Whoops. Excuse me. I beg of thee, oh esteemed future couple familia. I'm bone broke. Not even enough money to put bread on the table. Would you spare a little for a brother? Brought this on yourself, I'm sure. I have more than enough stories about you. And hardly any of them seem pleasant. Drinking, gambling, debauchery. I'm humiliated to be in the same Costco as you. You want to make money playing? You got to learn the game first. Says the worm who pr played himself into oblivion. How do you honestly believe I'll give you anything? Oh, but you will. You got no choice. Costco rules. You're required to help a fellow countryman. Especially considering how few of us there are stranded on this colossal landmass. He won't even notice the money's missing. 
It ain't because you can't, but because you don't wanna. But Jacopo, being a tight ass does nothing for you. Me coming to you for help keeps your good name clean. That's the thing about being boss. You quietly keep little shits like me out of trouble. But what trouble don't come raining back on you? Hmm. You don't seem to... What was his voice again? God damn it. I gave him like the silly mobster voice. Wise guy, eh? There we go. You don't seem to understand your place. Rather than lecturing me, you should be on your hands and knees, begging and crying for my help. If that's what you want, I'll gladly comply. Happy to kiss your boots while I'm at it. Don't even think about it. God, now he's turning Italian. Fuck me. I can't do this many voices at one time. Know this. There won't be a second time. I will be reporting your conduct to the family back home. I look forward to seeing how they deal with you. <laughs> Just try to have a little mercy, would you? Hey. Hey. Is there a maid around? It doesn't matter who. Oh, fuck. You don't want to fuck around with this one specifically. Oh, no. Just accept that everyone is Irish. Everyone's Italian today. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean to give him the Italian op op accent, even though he's from Sicily. It's just doing the one for the one character makes me do it for the other character. It's probably good for him. Oh, man. How may I serve you, master? Get a single stack from the safe. Here's the key. It goes without saying, but don't touch anything else. Give the money to that man as you're escorting him out the door. As you wish. Is that all you needed? Yes, now get to it. Very well. Excuse me. Well, well. This one looker of a maid you got there. But there's something... I don't know. Eerie? Strange about her. <laughs> I mean, how dare <laughs> you dare to, dare to say that to her? She might stab you, buddy. <laughs> she might make you disappear in a way you don't want to deal with. You may have heard of sleeping with the fishes. You're going to be in the fucking abyss, buddy. Ugh. Fancy that. We agree on something. How long has she been working here? Couldn't tell you. As I recall, she came with the house. Is that the kind of woman you fancy? A gal you can't read will always be interesting. Fuck. Why does this guy get me so much? Honestly, his whole attitude to life with the whole like, Hey, I'm a man of carnal desires. I want to go out covered in cuts and bleeding from everywhere. I don't want to die like a wet fart. I like him. Fuck. Is that so? Now that he mentions it, how old is that woman? Oh, I suppose it doesn't much matter. Oh, yeah. Jacopo. One other thing I wanted to talk to you about. What is it this time? And if it's more of your blather, I will shoot you dead where you stand. Now, oh, now. No need for threats. This one's about your, uh, better half. What about my wife? Well, uh, to put it simply, yeah. She came to me asking for advice, looking a little distressed. My wife asked you for advice? Yup. From the sounds of it, you're pretty rough on the little lady. That just ain't right, man. You managed to snag yourself abroad that pretty. You ought to treat her at least a little better, you hear? She looks good with a smile. You gotta make her show it to everyone once in a while. Why would she come to you about that? Yeah, I, I don't believe this. This is some fucked up shit. Unless it's literally when he's talking about his better half. He actually means Maria. Because he would have known this dude and Maria back in Sicily. Maybe Maria has been lying to Tommaso. It doesn't seem like Tommaso and this dude are super close over here. So maybe Maria is just sowing even more seeds of doubt. Hmm. Who knows? Or Maria's just literally told him to fuck around with it. Who knows? We'll find out. Don't ask me. Maybe she ain't got no one else to talk to? And you know, for whatever it's worth, I am part of the same Costca. Guess and she thought I'd get through to you easier. Really, you just have to put a little more thought into how you act around her. She'll be smiling for you like always. Oh yeah, I got just the thing. Women love this stuff. I'm sure she'll be thrilled. Is this going to be perfume? <laughs> Is that 
perfume. Haven't you heard? Everyone's been talking about it. I'm a big fan of the stuff too. It smells great. Pretty girl smiles at you wearing some of this. Any man would be in love in an instant. You never given her nothing fashionable before, have ya? May look like she scented may look like just scented water, but you can't let that fool ya. Go on, give it to her. You like a nice smelling lady too, don't you? A little bit of scent can give a different flavor to your nighttime excitement. <laughs> Vanilla. Well, I've said my piece, so I'll be taking my leave. Don't want to keep your maid waiting too long and get on her bad side. Uh, hold on, Tommaso. Why would she? Make it last. That's all the advice your old Uncle Tommy has for you. Ciao. Wait, Tommaso. Oh, that is set up so bad. Yeah, he's definitely in cahoots with Maria. Because now that he showed up and handed over a bottle of perfume, and he thinks that the white-haired girl has been going to see this guy and talking about their marriage with him, he probably thinks she's been putting on this perfume which was given to her by Uncle Tomasco. Tomaska? And, you know, that's who she's been sneaking out to see. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> Oh. Why is guy me? I could go after... <laughs> Why am I doing Italian again? I could go after him. But make a simple task to catch him. Grab him. Grab him by the neck. Make him tell me. Tell me where he spoke with her and what she told him. But why? Why will my legs not move? Asking him for advice? Fashionable perfume? Her smile? She looks good with a smile. She'll be smiling for you like always. That can't be. She hardly ever smiles around me. But she'll... She'll smile for him? Yeah, look at how pissed off his face is right now as well. He's probably gonna actually attack her right now. Last night, when she was short of breath, having such a grand time wearing that perfume, getting ready to leave the house. Cause who was that smile for? God... God damn it! Oh, he's so pissed right now. Look at his mouth and his face. Don't you think I'll let you free any long run free any longer? Dude, she already had nowhere to go. You took away her garden. Fuck me. His eyebrows were furrowed, creating deep creases on his forehead. Several servants stood off to the side, watching their master attentively as he stomped past them down the corridor. I wonder if Maria's been the one, like... Convincing the maids to attack the woman in white, the woman with white hair, too. Like, if she is as manipulative as she seems to be, maybe that's why all the maids were like more stunned than anything when she told them all off and was like, No, 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 go clean things. How dare you do this to your lady? Maybe she's been the one saying, She won't fight back. She's a little bitch. Oh, man. I think isolating her? Yeah, making her the only one she can rely on so she can control her. I think not. Maybe the other men hate her also, right? We heard that, but we don't know why they hate her. Maybe they just took out their frustrations on her because Maria originally convinced them. Well, she doesn't do anything. She just sits around all day. She's such a prissy princess. I like messing around with her. I don't know. Don't the maids hate her too? Well, she says that the maids don't particularly like her. But then she also talks about how, oh, the maids are loving this recently. The maids are loving that recently. It sounds like she hangs out with the maids, just not when anyone else is around. However, no one said a word to him. Had I not been preoccupied attending to his countrymen, I likely could have prevented it. The look on his face would have made it obvious something bad was about to happen. Something that would serve only to further her misfortune. She was already in a less than ideal situation. I was perched on the edge of a hill soon to begin rolling down into even worse territory. You know it's bad when the maid's fucking scared. Yeah. Jacopo? What's the matter? If you wanted to visit, you could have said something rather than coming in without knocking. Is that really necessary? Wait one minute. <laughs> okay, now I'm back. Pardon? Oh, you piece of shit! Is there something you so desperately want to keep from me that I must knock before entering? 
that I should have known to let you in advance that I'm coming? What? What? What are you? Well? Is there? You went to talk to him behind my back, I'm told. What did you tell him? You moan him about my behavior? Oh, that's such a fucked up CG. Oh. <laughs> that hurts. You told him I'm rough with you? You cried on his shoulder because I'm not nice enough? Him? Of all people? Oh, not the fist. Fuck off, you piece of shit. <sighs> Wait, Jacopo. You're mistaken. Let me... Silence. Not a word. Not a single godforsaken word. The only thing that comes out of your mouth is excuses. Lies and fabrication. Put on this sweet, innocent little girl act, but what's really going through your head? Maybe I should rip that mask off your face. Stop. Jacopo. You look down on me. Your nobility. I'm just a nobody who married into it. No. Stop. Let go of me, please. When did it start? How long have you been seeing him? Who else have you been seeing? Covering yourself in fashionable perfume and smiling. Even though you never smile around me. Please. Let me go. I can see it in your eyes. He's just a worthless commoner. Why would you think that? Why will you not listen to me? Silence. It's all your fault. Every last thing. I tell you not to leave the house, but you do. I tell you to do as I say, but you ignore me. Every last thing you do drives me mad. I don't have the time to deal with this. To rack my mind over you. Over a woman. I don't have time for it. Why do you not do as I say? <laughs> Do you not have enough already? Huh? You not be satisfied until you've taken away even my arms and legs? I've given you money, clothing, everything. You have an incredible life. Look around you. That life of luxury you and your parents wanted, it's right here. You have it. What more could you possibly want? Why do you insist on being unfaithful? Unfaithful? Think that what I'm doing is unfaithful to you? How else should I describe it? You leave your room despite my ordering you not to? Don't think I don't know. When you came over to the den the other day, you had your eyes on the other men. Oh, I did not. I had no such inclination. Enough. Not another word from you. I have no interest in your excuses. If that's how you're going to act, then say goodbye to your freedom. You're forbidden from leaving the mansion or your room for that matter. Or even speaking to the servants. Or I know what I'll do. I'll make you a new room. Too many people come in and out from this one. It'll be somewhere quieter. Out of the way. You like the garden? How about I put it there? If you leave that room without my permission, this time, I'll kill you. Why? Why will you not listen to me? Fuck. That's a line she ends up using a lot. Why? Why will they not listen to me? Why? Why do they not believe me? Why? She needs to speak her mind more, man. This guy's a piece of shit. And we're repeating the original timeline right now. We're getting her locked in a fucking tower. Unable to go anywhere. Oh my god. Yukimasa come over? Yeah, we could really use Yukimasa. Yukimasa would have a fun time with this guy. This guy thinks he's so impressive. See how impressive he is when he has all 10 of his fingers broken. <sighs> Jacopo, the master of the house, likely loved the white-haired girl. That is what I saw in their exchange. Normally love is supposed to be sweet, warm, wonderful emotion. It makes you care for, value that person even more than yourself. But it was the exact opposite for him. I never knew that love could be such a painful thing. How did his love end up so twisted? What did he expect to happen by confining and abusing the woman he loved? Perhaps he was conscious of that. The human is to sometimes find oneself driven by uncontrollable internal impulses. A few days later, Jacopo dragged the white-haired girl from her chamber and led her outside. The garden she had once loved was now a thing of the past. It had become a dreary space. Nary arose in sight, and being taken there did nothing to improve her mood only sadden her further. 
The cold, grey piles of metal fleckling the barren earth seemed to mock her. Her husband led her, the lady of the house, to a shed that had been repurposed into a spartan living area. She begged and pleaded, but Jacopo would not have it. He shoved her into the sad little shack and locked the door. Oh, we didn't even get the sound this time. Oh, the happy memories are gone. Fuck. The lady of the house shoved into a shack, locked in there all alone. Oh, and they're giving us the Rapunzel imagery even more. We get to have the little sewing needle. Lovely. This is fucked up. He really locked her up? Yeah, he did. He's a piece of shit. He's jealous. He is controlling. I saw a lot of people earlier on, like, saying in chat, that's not love. That's not love. Yeah, it's kind of obsession, but I mean, he sees it as love. He sees it as loving her. But he also sees his love as a weakness. Isn't the sewing needle Aurora though? Fuck. <laughs> no, you're right. That's Sleeping Beauty. Um, D Disney princess vibes then. Well, fairy tale vibes. Isn't that also Rumpelstiltskin? Why am I thinking Rumpelstiltskin? But you're right. It's Aurora. It's yeah. Which has an even worse connotation if she's going to end up falling into a deep drink, deep dream. That's for sure not love. I mean, love can be obsessive at times. It's a dark and twisted version of love, but it can be described as love. Fucked up as it is. Definitely obsession. Definitely unhealthy. Definitely fucked up. Rumpelstiltskin is also technically correct. Okay, I thought that one also had a... What do you even call that? I called it a sewing needle, but it's like a sewing machine from back in the days, right? But yeah, Aurora with that one got pricked by the needle and then fell into a sleep, right? Okay. Loom. Thank you. A loom. A spindle. A spindle and a loom. So yeah, maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe now that she's locked out here, she doesn't have much protection from the sun either. There's a giant fucking window in this room without any curtains on it. Is this going to be where she fucking dies? And... I do not be. Okay. Chat. I know a lot of you have played this game. I need one spoiler. Are we about halfway through this chapter? Or are we near the end of this chapter? Because I can't tell right now. This could either keep going for a, quite a while. And fuck me up. Or this could be like done in like 10 minutes. We're about half. Perfect. Okay. This is where we're going to stop for the day then. That's good. Oh my. That's not good. There's so much more pain left to go. How far does this story go if this is only half? Jesus, you poor white-haired girl. Okay. But yeah, this is the perfect place to stop this for now, then. Then we'll finish chapter three, ne well, door three next time. The angst never stops. I mean, goddamn. I thought, if anything, we'd have, like, maybe a reveal of Maria left. And I guess we're going to see, like, the fall of Jacopo, too, then. That's good, at least. Oh, but that means the white-haired girl is going to get abused a lot more as it goes down, too. Because, yeah, I'd imagine there's going to be more connection between him and, like, the family. Especially if he's about to become the captain. There's going to be a lot more ties happening there. Maybe they'll want to start... Maybe this will be the time they want to start expanding into America. They'll be like, hey, you've got a lot of money. You've got a big house. You've got a lot of investments. We could use that. Damn. I think it's a good way to take a breather before falling into more of the pain. Yeah, I like splitting the chapters in half. We could technically finish, like, a door per first stream if we wanted to but then it would be straight up like six to seven hours of one stream <laughs> rather than three hours and then three hours of chatting so yeah we're gonna end for now it's just man ending on our poor beautiful broken baby so heartbreaking okay let me save this we don't want a quick save what am i doing how do i get into the that's also quick save <laughs> Why? Yes, there we go. I never remember the controls for this. Okay, so we're always going to keep these two alive too. Because I don't know if me looking into the mirror ruins something down the line. So we're going to save over here. I always save two just in case. More pain, more suffering. Saving two slots, always. 
always. <laughs> she just can't be happy, can she? No, unfortunately. I'm just going to let this music play while we chat, though. This seems like good music for this. Oh, I still had the maid asset on. <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Let me turn it up a bit. So this has been a pretty fucking dark chapter. I mean, I say that as if they're not all dark, but... I can take physical abuse. I can take, like, the sadism and the murder and the fucked up shit. A fucked up, like, marriage situation. I hate that shit. I, I really want to kill this guy. I actually hate this guy currently more than I hate Yukimasa. And considering everything Yukimasa did... Uh, I don't know if that says bad things about me more than anything else. <laughs> that probably does talk a lot about how fucked up my mind is. But yeah, I hate domestic abuse. This shit sucks. I guess that's almost what you'd call a trigger for me. But we'll get through it. It just, yeah. I prefer to see people getting like gruesomely murdered than this domestic shit. It fucking sucks. And it feels way more real. Yukimasa was okay to me. I, w I wouldn't go that far. Oh, <laughs> at least Yukimasa loved her. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There was also Pauline, though. Um, I mean, <laughs> there, there was a lot going on in that one. <laughs> this is the thing about this game, though. I don't have to be like, oh, God, this is the good guy and that's the bad guy. I just have to be like, everybody is fucking suffering. Everything is a bad time. But it's also a very interesting story and it's worth watching he fucked up pauline he didn't just fuck her up shit went dark it took a long time for shit to happen too that was the thing though getting through that scene was pretty painful i'm i'm a lot more attached to the white hair girl than i was to pauline pauline was sweet and innocent she didn't deserve anything that happened to her she was so adorable full of love and kindness but the white haired girl we've now known her for going on six weeks and I am kind of heartbroken whenever anyone does anything bad to her. Seeing her be grabbed by the hair like that. And the implications. I'm glad it didn't actually like make it too dramatic. But I'm pretty sure he was hitting her there too. Because he had her by the hair. He had his fist curled into like a punch. Like around her chest as well. And there was the continuous like. Uh, kind of sounds from her. So I think he was hitting her too. And him saying like is that enough for you kind of thing. That shit sucked. At least they didn't make that as dramatic as they did for like, yeah, Yuki Master's murders where it was like text and text and text and text of people groaning in pain. I also can't do groaning in pain as the whitehead girl because I don't have the vocal cords for it. She's got too high of a thing, too high of a vocal range for me to actually hit that properly. But yeah, that shit sucked. Okay, let's start reading super chats and responding to comments. That's debatable. Yeah, shit's just bad, man. I should add that a lot of this chapter is based on the mafioso rule that they... Oh! <laughs> I'm not going to read into that, because, yeah, that's kind of fucked up. But that does suck. I'll say it. At least Yuki Masa was hot. <laughs> that's the thing. Jacopo had that one CG where he looked good. Every other time, kind of too skinny. Kind of, kind of not good. Look. He's got nice hair. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. The stupid hat is pretty stupid, though. Yukimasa definitely hot. Yeah, Yukimasa was hotter. Yukimasa pulled it off, boy. I hate the dude in this store the most. Fair enough. He's definitely an emotionally deep character, though. I'm liking diving into his psyche. And I'm glad the maid is doing that, too. Like, the maid is also trying to look at things in an open way. She's definitely like, What do you think, master? Are they a bad person? Like... Considering we started off immediately with like, yo, by the way, he's a racist, classist piece of shit, which I mean, yeah, for the times, pretty average, but at the same time, not a great look to begin with, but then they immediately complicated that with the fact that, oh, by the way, he's an immigrant from Sicily and he climbed up from having nothing. So he kind of sees himself in them, but sees a failed version of himself in them. So that's definitely a complex look on that version of things. Oh, man. There's so much depth to this character. But yeah, you don't have to like them to be like, damn, this is a really intriguing storyline, though. Complex, but still a piece of shit. Yeah, essentially. Especially, like, they try to hit us with that whole, like, oh, but he feels feelings. 
he genuinely cares about her it's just you know he's hard to tell her it's hard for him to be like oh i love you he has to hide his feelings it's like fuck that <laughs> yeah great he, he showed his emotional vulnerability one time and he clearly like has attachment to her he clearly sees her as someone that's beautiful that he wants to cherish and have in his life but he doesn't treat her like he wants to cherish her and have it in his life because he sees that as weakness so instead it's just like yeah she's in my house that's fine I will protect her from literally the entire world. Every other man in the world and every other thing in the world. He sees her as a possession that he has essentially just made his own. Uh, anyway. Adamoru characters are so well written. Yeah, so is the dialogue. The dialogue is incredible too. Nia! Duggos took my account. Oh, cute. Atsufu-chan! Brain is cooking hard today, lol. Everything about Jacopo screams Othello syndrome to me. Well, now I need to Google that. I am not as worldly as I pretend to be. Othello Syndrome. Uh, named after the character in Shakespeare's play, refers to the delusion of infidelity of a significant other. Ah. Which is sometimes used interchangeably with delusional or morbid jealousy. I've never heard that term before. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. He's worried constantly that she's going to sneak off with some other man. It, just her coming into the room where there are other men, he's like... You can't be in here. You're a woman. Oh, I have had a muscle spasm. One second. <laughs> do, 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 do. By a muscle spasm, I mean I'm petrified. I'll be back in a second. Uh, come on, get in there. There we go. Okay, we back. <laughs> No, no, no. Physically, I'm fine. I mean, that's my... Um... My... duo -verse version had a muscle spasm. <laughs> my duo -verse version was petrified. I'm completely fine. What I'm saying is... Fine. We'll break it. But my, my phone froze. <laughs> my avatar froze. There you go. Anytime I say that in the future, yeah, it just is, yeah. Uh, my phone froze for a second. Anyway... Yeah, Jacobo seems like an interesting character. Othello Syndrome does not sound fun. <laughs> Othello Syndrome, yeah, just basically sounds like being a jealous, inept piece of shit who doesn't think you can take care of your wife, which, frankly, fuck the guy. <laughs> fuck the guy for trying to lock her up and shit. That shit sucks. Tsukishiro, Atsufu-san. Honestly, relationship-related abuse is always hard to watch for me. But at least I got you and the other sheeps, Lamau. Otsu to everyone, too. Yeah, I think it feels like a lot more real to me. Like, I feel when it comes to like the really fucked up shit, like dramatic murders and torture scenes, I'm like, wow, this shit's wild. Whereas domestic violence, yeah, I think that like affects a lot of us in like the real world still modernly. And so it's a lot more close to home. But we will get through this together. We like dark stories like these, even if it, yeah, can occasionally be a bit heavy to go through. I mean, we knew this chapter was going to be heavy from the beginning. God <laughs> Oh, God. Did I read out the things he said at the beginning? I did, man. That shit sucked. But it was in character. It's in character for the times, too. Thank you for donating the food funds. That's so sweet of you, Sukishiro. And Zion's still here. Yeah. But we struggle with staying in character when things like that happen. <laughs> when glitches happen, it's like, hmm, how do I put this? I'm frozen for the next 30 seconds. I'll be back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Miss the gameplay. Can't wait to catch up to the VOD. Oh, awesome share. I hope you have a good time watching the VOD then. Uh, we're still kind of talking about the game. So if you don't want to get spoiled, feel free to head out. It's lovely to see you here this morning. And I hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy the VOD. Out of character. Yuki Master to me was like a psycho who hated, an every ooh, hated everyone equally. But this guy, he just attacks vulnerable people who can't fight back story made me so mad god yeah the sad thing is it's not even that he attacks like just weak people he specifically is just attacking his wife who was forced into an arranged marriage with him and he does have this crazy complex about it he's just so seriously locked into this idea that he hates her that she's constantly trying to sneak around on him that she sees him as less than her worth because she was noble and he was just some 
street kid who happened to earn a lot of money. He still is interested in her. He cares about her. Yeah, exactly. He didn't touch Maria. He hasn't touched any of the maids. He hasn't touched anyone else. He said some bad things about poor people and immigrants, but that's just more, again, his own complexes and things. He doesn't treat them badly. He just kind of doesn't care about their lives. The only one he's actively hurting is the white-haired girl, his wife. And that's just because he wants to possess her, because he wants to own her, because he wants to keep her away from everyone else. <sighs> but in a way, yeah, it's like a delusional, like, sadistic kind of mindset of at least I get to own her. If she's being hurt by me, at least she's remembering me. She's only looking at me. He's projecting his fears on her? Yeah, exactly. He's decided that she's looking at her with disdain. And there's so many rumors being spread, like this bullshit where this guy who I very much doubt the white-haired girl has ever met has just come in and said like, oh, she always smiles better. You should keep her smiling. She looks better with a smile. Sowing that doubt, giving him the fucking perfume. Oh, it fucking sucks, man. If it is Maria, I hope she dies painfully too. We'll see though. Ah, uh, but thank you for donating the food funds out of character. And also... <laughs> what is with the wig thing? <laughs> when did that become a thing? <laughs> I remember you having your name like that. I just don't remember noticing that avatar. Oh, that's a great, that's a great wig. Thank you. <laughs> More feed. White-haired girl needs to improve her standards. Yeah. She needs to get better at communicating with people and saying her feelings as well. Because it does seem to happen every chapter. Her freaking out and being like, oh, I couldn't possibly. Why won't they listen to me? Why won't they believe me? And it's like, maybe get a sword. May, 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 maybe learn a little bit from the beast after all. Learn a little bit from Yukimasa and just be like, why won't they listen to me? Stab, stab, stab. How about you listen to me now, you piece of shit? Ah, oh, man. Literally your wig snapped, pretty much. Thank you for donating the food funds more feed. You may hire to your wife for the stream for Chan. Enjoying this so much. The story is amazing as always. I can't wait to see what happens next time. Me neither. It'd be a fun time. My fun, I mean emotionally devastating. It's gonna make us cry. <laughs> this might be the first time I cry during this game. I know it won't be the last. I know the further we get on, the more I'm gonna care about these characters and it's gonna hurt more. But yeah, this may be the first one that actually gets me to that point. Did I say that I ended up tearing up fucking five minutes into the game yesterday? Because I don't think I made that clear at the time. And obviously, I can't display it on my face. Yet. Maybe someday. <laughs> um, but yeah, fuck. That beginning of that game hit like a fucking truck. I was surprised. Like, I didn't know Sarah at all. And yet, just the fucking first 20 minutes of that game broke me. I think that's the first time I've been stunned into silence by something as well. Because I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, going into that game blind has been fucking amazing. <laughs> I didn't even know there was another girl in the game. So yeah, it was a fun time. Anyway, uh, Distono. Extreme misunderstandings and immense regrets are two of my guiltiest pleasures. The motherfucking regret it will end will be delicious. Yum, itadakimas. <laughs> are you sure about that? I think it may be painful more than anything. But yeah, it'll certainly be an interesting storyline. It'll be heartbreaking in its own way. <laughs> I just see in chat, Distono, are you okay? Uh, extreme misunderstandings and immense regret. I, I'm good with the immense regret. The extreme misunderstandings normally piss me off. But that's normally because when they happen once, they happen like a shit ton of times. Like if they happen once or twice and it's like, oh, that led to some of the darkest times in this person's life. Like that shit's great. Like Wei Wushen being thrown into the abyss. Shit like that. And the Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation's rise. All of that, great. Meanwhile, when you get to that palace court drama shit where it's just like, continuously other bitches trying to make one look evil or silly or stupid it's like quit overusing this please <laughs> can we do something else so yeah i get kind of tired of it after a while but yeah once or twice it's not too bad then it's just like ah i hope they overcome it and prove the people wrong okay thank you for donating the food funds i hope you have a good day Sono. hopefully next week will be amazing for you too va is amazing as usual <laughs> I'm glad we got like yeah. I, the fact that at the beginning I was like, yo, maybe he should start the mafia <laughs> to find out he was in the mafia. Oh my god, that was a fun little moment. 
And then I like the fact that everyone was like, give him a godfather voice. And I was like, do you guys know what the godfather sounds like? Like that doesn't fit our boy Jacopo. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. You come to me on this. The day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> Wheeze but tired. Yeah, I think doing that for Jacopo the whole way through would be like one thing. The voice lines would take three times as long. The Godfather is more Tommy. Yeah, I gave Tommy like a... I gave him the Godfather. And then I just aged him down. I was like, yeah, how about it? How you feeling, huh? How you doing? Yeah, so that's kind of what I did for Tommy. <laughs> Uncle Tommy's fun. Luther, don't worry, Futan. We will pass through this emotional damage together. Emotional damage! Yeah, we'll survive it. Thanks for another amazing stream. Love your Italian and Irish VA. I didn't even realize I even slipped into Irish. I saw a few people being like, yo, everyone's Irish again. And I was like, when did that happen? I heard myself getting very English at one point. <laughs> like it naturally happens. Like when I slipped back into Jacopo after doing like the Italian American accent, slipping back into Jacopo, I was suddenly like, oh, now we are doing the Draco Malfoy voice. Hotter. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but it happened. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds out there. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I hope we get to see Uncle Tommy more. I like doing that voice. Shimomi! His low self-esteem let him feel like he is not beloved by the white-haired girl. While well, the white-haired girl is not confident enough to voice her thoughts. I know, right? It sucks. Because she genuinely cares about him so much. She just wants to see him smile again. She wants to see him happy and talking about his passions. She wants him to achieve his dreams. She wants to help with that. Fuck! It sucks. She cares so much about him and continuously was told, just leave, and was like, No, I won't leave. I want to see him be happy again. I want to see him achieve that. Oh. And now she's locked in a fucking shed. She could have actually been helping him, man. I mean... Uh, he's all about, like, business deals and everything, right? Like, you have a beautiful wife, you bring her out in front of people, it makes people more likely to invest in you as well. Especially since she's nobility. Like, he could have used that and paraded that around, but he was just like, no, I'll just hide her in the corner. She means nothing. I just want to keep her to myself and lock her away. Now he's literally locked her away. She could have actually been a good partner rather than just, you know, a trophy that he kept in the corner. <sighs> Thank you for donating the food fund, Shimomi. Ink. At this point, I'm not sure if I like Whitehead Girl's character because that doesn't seem to be a character. He's more of an ideal than a human. Always too good. That's why I kind of like the idea that maybe she's not a proper human. That maybe she's half a human. That maybe she's the split half of somewhere else. And I liked the idea originally that she was the split half of the maid. Because they have like the opposite, the opposing color schemes and everything. I liked that idea. She was just like the purest, like most innocent version in the world especially since the maid even talked about oh no she is ever free of sin in every timeline like that would make sense to me but now that we know there's also a michelle white-haired man maybe that's the other half of her and he did call himself morgana he said well he didn't call himself morgana he said and the witch and then it flashed to like a different unrelated thing that said their name is morgana and then he said it's me. So he called himself the witch. He declared himself the witch. So maybe he is Morgana. Maybe they're both Morgana, but they've been split in a way. Or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's just a reincarnated version of her. I don't even know what timeline that was in because there was a carriage going by. And I mean, if they're already in the 1890s at this point, it wasn't like our timeline. Our timeline should be further forward than that. I'm just very interested in where this game goes. <laughs> There's so many questions. Anyway, thank you for donating the food funds, Inc. I kind of agree with you, but at the same time, she is innocent and sweet and I must protect. It also seems like most of the time she doesn't remember her past. This time she does. This time she fully remembers her past, which is interesting in its own way. But all of the times before she's been like, oh no, I can't leave here or I don't know what happened kind of thing. She's always been like hiding everything. Whereas this time, she feels like more complete as a person than ever before. Hmm. Okay, Ske. Aha. Emotional womp. <laughs> Yay. Emotional womps are always fun. I love suffering. Let's go. <laughs> you been telling the food funds? Oh, man. 
Forgot to tell you, your VA with Michelle was so hot, sir. That, that was just like a slower version of... That was just me slowing down and being very calm. And I can't do it right now because my voice is kind of tired. But thank you. I'm glad you liked the Michelle voice. I hope he comes back in the future too. Sweet Tori, I swear this game has me on the edge of my seat. This chapter had me close to tears. That's how you know it's a good game when it brings out my feelings. You saying you don't get emotional much? <laughs> Either way, yeah, this game. This, this game is very good at summoning up emotions. And then beating you with them. <laughs> it's like, hey, isn't this a great game to cry to? He's hot, hot. He is incredibly hot. I fucking love him. For some reason, sounds like a certain priest. With the priest, I make it much more British. And much more evil sounding. But yeah, with Michelle, it's more like emotionless kind of thing. Neutral for now. I don't know if he's going to be good or evil. He's certainly, yeah, he's certainly hot and mysterious. He's big. He's thick. He got the long white hair. He's beautiful. But also very, yeah, he's an interesting dude. Sorry, I had to blow my nose there. Blech. Luscious hair, exactly. But yeah, thank you for donating the food fund, sweet Tori. Yeah, it's been an emotional roller coaster so far. Ghost chain scatterer. A lot of the tragedy in the love stories here comes from not knowing the whole story and not answering with the full truth. Either by emotion, omission or shame. Pride and fear being the downfall. That's very true. That became even more apparent last time, where in the beast storyline, we weren't even going to know how deep the pain was originally. We didn't see anything from Pauline's perspective. We were just seeing things from the beast's perspective. And so they weren't even going to let us know what actually happened on the other side. <laughs> the maid was quite happy to just see you show you the downfall of the white haired girl. But then it was like, oh, by the way, more emotional devastation for you. Because, you know, timey wimey shenanigans and memory replacement shenanigans. Amnesia is a bitch and people seeing themselves as beasts and being scared of that. Oh my god. The misunderstandings are so painful. It's happening again and again and again and it's cursing the entire timeline, so that's fun. Thank you for donating the food funds, Ghost Chain Scatterer. Eclair. Relationship? What kind of fruit is that? Yeah, fuck relationships. You know what's more sturdy than a relationship? A fucking fleet of ships. A whole bunch of them. A, sp mm. a Viking longship. Those are pretty good. They can sail through the ocean, the giant waves, as long as you're fast enough on them. Yeah. Be your own ship. Be an island, even. Be an island. That's even better. Fairy Girl 34. Thank you for the stream. I've never played this game, so experiencing it blind with you in the confidence is amazing. I also bought the game for my Switch and plan on playing later when I have time. Awesome. I should have said that as well. Yeah, I'm playing the Switch version. I think a lot of people figured that out because I have like the extended, like there's a couple more CGs in this one. They've updated the looks. They've made it more HD. Um, and yeah, I think it's got like a little bit of added content as well. That's cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been really beautiful. I hope you enjoy it too. The music has been incredible. We saw you click out of the game on your Switch. You want to see something really beautiful? Watch me click out of the game now. I pre-loaded pre -pre Fire Emblem. <laughs> now it's even more beautiful. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> thank you for donating the Food Funds Fairy Girl 34. I hope you enjoy going through it at your own time as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to do the whole main game. I'm not sure if I'll do like all of the other stuff. Because I'm... I, I think there's... I know there's like a sequel kind of thing. I don't know how exactly that works, but I think there's a prequel too. There's a couple of things like beyond the game. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through those. I will see. Like it's the same thing as like The Last of Us Part 1. I'm going to finish it and then I'm going to see what fans say. I'm going to see if like I'm still super interested in things, super invested. If I feel like it's a good ending by itself. If people say like the other things are good or if they don't like it, we'll see. We'll see. Layla, thank you for donating the food funds. No message, just a love heart. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. I hope you have a wonderful evening and thank you for being here. The Colgate's coming in. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> Do they have multiple routes too? I actually don't know. Nobody knows right now. Um, it might be a single route in this one. We'll find out. 
Noeen, thank you for donating the food funds. No message, but I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for being here. Please take it easy. Uh, Giselle. Uh, uh, Giselle. <laughs> Jump into the stream totally blind. I thought I could laugh the entire stream since the Giselle name appeared at first. Quickly, my smile flayed, faded. Yakubo sucks. I, I thought this was an in-character one when I first saw your name. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh. This was your first part that you watched. At least, like, every chapter is kind of separate. But yeah, you're seeing, like, kind of some of the mysteries break down in front of us. <laughs> but I'm glad you had fun seeing your name in the game. <laughs> and then, yeah, being emotionally devastated. Shit got real bad. Real quick. <laughs> but thank you so much for donating the food funds, Giselle. I hope you get to catch up with all the other parts. It's been one of the best storylines of any game I've seen in a long time. Giselle is a real name, Mr. Borg. I know that. Mel and Nelly are real names too. Doesn't change the fact that there were people role-playing as them the other week. <laughs> God damn it. Thank you for donating the food funds and have a good evening, Giselle. Yeah, we'll finish door three next week and see how this storyline ends. Took your shit off. But honestly, I kind of get white-haired girl, to be honest. I mean, especially since she seems to be a product of her time kind of thing. Like... A lot of the timelines that she's been in, this one especially, like the maid has even mentioned it multiple times that the women of those times were just seen as kind of possessions to their men, traded around, used as political pieces, used as bargaining chips. In this case, yeah, she was literally assigned to marry this piece of shit, thought she could be happy, and now he's treating her like literal something to carry around, move around. <sighs> They're still here? Of course they are. Of course they are. <laughs> There's Mel Rhodes right now. Mel is a real name, yes. <laughs> Damn it. Be with Pauline last time. Oh, God. Or Paulie. <laughs> Canaria. Last door mostly made me feel scared and sad, while this door made me frown multiple times. I just kept wishing for white haired girls' happiness. Amazing VA as always. Otsufu. Thank you, Canaria. I think I'm slowly running out of voices for this game. <laughs> I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, hmm, how can I do more voices? <laughs> but it's been fun to try and find some. Um, and yeah, reusing some of the old ones that we get to keep around, like the maid and the white-haired girl. Definitely not as good as like the Yuki Master chapter. We had a lot of fun with voices that time, but we, we do our best. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. Also, my comment grabber missed one, but it's from Efim Macabre. And it's a big Akasupa. And it's another poetry one again. Let's go. Let me turn this down a bit. This is a bit too loud for this. I shall cast this eye to the rift. My obsession I send you through now dead laughter of satire. I have taken their blood words, their pretty cities, and turned them into visions of those new blind gods. I sow glass you into a metal most fine, let your eye ink their oiled mines. Mine, Rubin. This one I don't get as much. <laughs> like, I understood most of them in the past, I think. I understand, like, the beginning of this one. Shall cast aside to the rift. My obsession I send you through now dead laughter of satire. Taking their blood words, their petty cities. And turn them into visions of those new blind gods. I like that bit. And then you lose me. <laughs> I think there might be a spelling error there, unless I sow glass is something I don't understand. Let your eye ink that oiled mines, mine Ruben. I don't get the mine Ruben either. Um, I like the imagery though. The imagery is really good. The blood words and their pretty cities. It's written so well. Every time I get a donation from a theme macabre, it's always something like this. Where I like to actually like read through it questioningly, slowly examine it. It's always full of beautiful imagery. But this one, yeah, I can't quite read the themes of. It's beautiful, though. Well, thank you. Genshin reference? What Genshin reference? How dare. Better not be. <laughs> but fair enough. <laughs> thank you so much for donating the food funds of Fiend Macabre. Maybe I need to start collecting these and combining them. Maybe they combine into a story and I just haven't realized it. Either way. Thank you for donating the food funds, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Uthir, forgot to tell you. you oh, that's the bit I read earlier. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm glad you enjoy the Michelle voice. Michelle. Probably Michelle, right? 
Let me. Hmm. Shall name pronunciation. Play damn you. Just say it. The French version of the name said in English as Michael. In French in France it is said as Michel. 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 Okay. French name. Michel. It's a whole essay. I yeah, I don't know why. I thought it was like how to pronounce Michel. And I was like, sweet, let's go. And then it was just like it was doing advertising at the beginning. The heck, man. Impatient. Because normally you click one of those ones where it's like how to pronounce and they just pronounce the word. Michel. Michel. Oui. French name, Michel. I guess it makes sense that it's a French name. Because, yeah, it's also like Giselle. Giselle is a French name. Giselle and Michel. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for telling the food funds, Luther. Oh, we're having fun in our own way. Michel. Michel. <laughs> Um, ba -ba -ba -doop -ba -da -ba -doop -ba -doop. Yuki Tempest. I fall asleep every single Morgana stream, so I honestly know about 30% of what's going on. But it's fun to piece together what I missed each stream. I'll wait to watch the VOD of the complete series. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I do that with a lot of things that I watch. I did that with like the entirety of what's it called? The Archivist one. Oh, brain, why aren't you working? I feel like people are going to know what I mean anyway by just being like the archivist podcast thing where they told like horror stories and then it started like building up. Yeah, I fell asleep through like a quarter of those. And so I vaguely knew what was going on in the storyline. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. The Magnus Archives. Thank you. Yes. I remember just like I probably fell asleep through a bunch in a row. Because I remember they were at like a point of being infested by rats and bugs and stuff. And it was like, this is cool. And then I remember a few decent horror stories later. And it was like, these are cool single episodes. And then suddenly there was just a bunch in a row where they were like being transported view through the multiverse. And having their own powers and stuff. And I was like, I have no clue what's going on. At some point, I really I need to rewatch like the final third of that series. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a good evening. <laughs> Miss Munchkins. I, for one, am fully invested in Jacopo's downfall. Me too. And also, what's her face is, if she happens to be evil. If it turns out that she's okay, Maria, good for her. I hope her all the wonderful things in the future. Um, but yeah, if she's part of the white-haired girl's pain, I hope Maria dies horribly. <laughs> Hopefully that ghost story of a body up on the ceiling in the back hall will be her. <laughs> the dripping of that was pretty cool too, though. I wonder if that is in reference to, like, the maid. Maybe the maid, like, being attached to the house. It's like she's still, a, like, literally attached there, bleeding, her lifeblood flowing into the house. Maybe that's where someone died. Maybe that's related to the original story. We'll find out, there. That'd be funny if it's Jacobo. Damn, people are ready for them to die. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. Aprily. Testing and peeking you. Oh, God. Peeking me. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. And I like the little cowboy G. Have a wonderful evening. Test complete. Jenin. Otsufuchan. Have a nice day. Thank you, Jenin. I hope you have a wonderful evening, too. Thank you for joining us. Rest well and have a lovely evening. Mew, thank you for the huge donation to the food funds. Oh my god. No message at all, but thank you so much, Mew. I will even forgive you. No, that's a tiny kitten. That's cute, actually. Okay. Yeah, no, I like this kitten avatar. It's better than cat avatars. <laughs> thank you for donating the food fund. Have a wonderful evening. Please rest well. Take it easy. <laughs> he deserves it. You're not wrong, Mari. You're not wrong. Jacopo has been a piece of shit. If he gets strung up to the ceiling... I hope the Mafia comes after him. I hope they're like, Yo, you ain't been showing respect. And frankly, the other captains, they want you out. Somebody else is going to take your position. The Mafia were pretty good at like, you know, painting buildings. Jacopo would just, oh, but then they come for the whole fucking family. Shit. Hopefully they just paint the walls with Jacopo and not with anyone else. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, do Shaoxiang. 
I think the CG will appear in my tonight's nightmare. He's really scary. Anyway, Otsufu chan, your VA is still amazing. Is that one an an <laughs> That's cute. Have a good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. One an hazu shang. Hopefully you won't have any nightmares because yeah. At least that CG wasn't scary for me. It was just more disgusting than anything else. I, I, I hope he gets what he deserves. Uh, that CG did suck. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean the creepy like skeleton CG? That one was pretty creepy. I liked that. The little break from the main storyline. That was actually really good. I read it in like the maid voice. It gives fun. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. Out of character. I just realized I was so mad that I skipped a word in my last super. <laughs> TY for the stream. No worries. Thank you for being here out of character. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest to I'll take it easy. Uh, boom. Hi, Moon. Hi, Fuchan. Thank you for the stream. Thoughts on Doc, you say? That's really out of left field. <laughs> I love Doc, you say. I've talked about this before. It's one of my favorite romance stories. It's a very believable, like, coming of age romance story where you just have two characters just genuinely falling in love but not being sure how the other feels. I freaking love it. One of my favorite romances of all time, just in general, let alone the fact that it does happen to be a BL one. So it's great. And I wish, because they kept saying they would, that they would adapt the other series into movies as well. Because I know there's something beyond Doc, you say. Like, the manga car continued it and started working on, like, a... I forgot what they called it, but there was, like, Doc, you say, which means classmates, and then there's something else where it's, like, their roommates or something. But, yeah, they keep doing, like, more to the story. So I hope they do more to the movies and they bring back the original staff. So it's the girl say. That's, like, graduation graduates, yeah. So, yeah, I hope they continue that. Because they said that they were going to do it. And so I haven't ever dove into the manga yet. I've been like, the movie's coming someday. Just like Twittering Birds Never Fly Part 2 is coming someday. The Yuri on Ice movie? <laughs> Why does BL have such a bad track record of actually getting made? Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it'll actually come out. Mesa Otsufu Jan. I'm going to say that says Otsufu Jan. And it was just some misplaced things thank you so much for donating the food funds i hope you enjoyed the stream today mesa have a good evening and thank you not twittering birds i've been waiting for that yeah that's completely different from like <laughs> i was like talk you say it's so cute it's so romantic it's so believable and sweet and then it's like but also twittering birds don't fly hey yo that shit's a lot more graphic a lot more fucked up but that one's definitely getting a part two like they're already planning on releasing that one properly <laughs> Maltian, Otsufu chan. Maybe we can give up the white haired girl and marry a waifu pillow. Just killing. I mean, if we give Jacopo a waifu pillow, he probably wouldn't even notice the difference. Just put a picture of the white haired girl smiling on one side of the pillow. That's all he wants. He doesn't want to talk to anyone. He doesn't want to do anything with her. He just wants to own her. So, yeah, fucked up. He can do it. He can have that. That's what he gets. Jojo VV, all my friends hate Yakub. <laughs> I will reserve my job. No, I won't. He's a piece of shit. But then again, it's the same thing as like Yuki Masa and even Mel to a point. Mel was the least much, uh, least amount of piece of shit so far. But yeah, with all of them, it's been like, yeah, they're kind of all pieces of shit. But they're interesting characters. <laughs> so yeah, saying I'll reserve my judgment. No, he's a piece of shit. He's abusing his wife. He's kind of a terrible person. He does have some interesting facets to him though. Interesting facets. Just killing? Sir. I mean... No, no. You let Yuki Masa deal with him. That'll be fine. And it'll be slightly more than killing. Where is season four of Modao Zushu? The story ended. <laughs> I mean, they could make up more story or they could do like the extras, but oh, they couldn't do the extras with what's in the extras. Um, Modao Zushu done season three is it like that ends the storyline um yeah it did you, you can watch all three seasons now like that's good that's the end of the storyline um yeah <laughs> i'm guessing you haven't watched season three yet <laughs> please do the extras they are not going to do the extras <laughs> he's so no what's that smell maria you say i don't know it smells like a bit it smells like a bit Oh, like a bitch. Sorry, this awakens the hater in me. Have a nice day. 
No, that's fair. Maria... Maria deserves all the hate. Maria has been starting shit with our problems. Uh, thank you for donating the food funds and have a wonderful evening. <laughs> no, I'm reading the books. Uh, I'd say finish reading the books first anyway. The, the Donghua is very bare bones on the storyline. It was fun watching it weekly. But yeah, nowadays it feels like it's more a supplement to the book than the actual like full storyline itself. It's still a masterpiece. I still love it. Especially like that was one of the first series that I ever analyzed to the level that I did. Where like the directors put so much detail in it where you could just watch one episode and know exactly what a character was because of the themes of music they used, because of the imagery they used. They would link things back to legends. They would put into their designs what they thought about the characters and not so much spoil things, but at the same time, like if you invested time into analyzing things, you would be like, yo, I know exactly what's coming. It's fucking great. It's fucking great. Um, bu -bu 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 yeah, anyway. <laughs> Cam girl. This is such a good graphic novel for Chan. Thank you for doing it. Ah, oh, no problem. Yeah, visual novels are pretty fun to do. It's kind of just like reading a book, but with pictures. <laughs> and sometimes heartbreaking music and pictures. Thank you so much for donating to the food funds, Cam girl. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this one. The character is so interesting. The story is so dark. I am loving it. Zune. Thank you for donating the food funds. No message. I clicked on that one. I was like, oh, there's no message. But thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for being here. Please rest well. Take it easy and have a good night. And I think my comment broke. Grab it like broke after that. Yeah. It missed quite a few in a row. Oh, no, I only missed one. Yuki Tempest. I was finally able to change my horrendous name after two weeks of shame in the chat. But for some reason, the mini Borg in the cage on my bookshelf whispered to me and told me to make it worse. Another two weeks of shame. Well, I'm glad I didn't comment grab you, although I literally, yeah, comment grabbed you the other day with that name. Ooh. Which is fine. <laughs> Tempest isn't so bad. It's kind of silly. I literally called you out on it yesterday. Thank you for donating the food funds and have a good evening. Yuna, I miss Mal. At least Mal didn't want to hurt her. Yeah, Mal was just kind of pathetic in his own way. He was a little boy who thought he was, a, well... No, he literally said he was still, he didn't like being considered an adult yet. He was just a child. He was doing his best. Pathetic. Yeah. Uh, I think Nelly was the more scary one than him at that point. <laughs> and then you just saw like the breakdown of how he actually sees the world and how little he cares about people outside of his little bubble. And it was like, mm. yeah, I'm kind of glad you didn't get the white haired girl. It wouldn't have ended well. You weren't deserving of her. Uh... For the hair? True. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds, you know. He certainly was the least painful of the bunch so far. Def Kuzu. Sorry that I fell asleep and woke up just now. Love this visual game and your VA, though. Can't wait to watch the VOD later. Hope you enjoy the VOD, Def Kuzu. And yeah, we've been spoiling a lot, so yeah, feel free to drop out if you have to. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful evening. And never apologize for falling asleep. Like, these are at pretty late times for a lot of people who watch these streams. And very early times for other people who watch these streams. <laughs> I had so many people since the Anime Impulse was on the West Coast. They were like, oh, I love watching your streams. I wake up at 6 a.m. every day and put them on and normally fall back to sleep while they're on. And I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the fact that people wake up at that time just to watch these is kind of amazing but also yeah i'm sorry that's so early it's an interesting time zone i like it though it gets everything that i want done at the beginning of the day let's me just have fun at night <laughs> thank you for donating the food funds def Kuzi. have a good evening oh man chong jing thank you for donating the food funds <laughs> thank you i hope you have a wonderful evening that was freaking adorable please rest well and have a good evening a good experience it's 2 a.m for me and i'm about to fall asleep but endurance feel free to go to sleep like it's all good <laughs> the vods will always be there the vods will always be waiting for you if you want to have watched them at some other time europeans are the real winner here because your stream starts at 3 p.m i guess that depends on if like like i always felt like the best time for a stream to start in like your time zone would be like 8 p.m because then it starts like kind of early but you can just like have it on in the background i like mainly watching streams while i'm in bed so like the normal time that I would watch things would be like 11, even 10 p.m. sometimes up until like 2 to 3 a.m. 
But yeah, I guess it depends on the person. 3 p.m., like, you might still be at work kind of thing. But at least, yeah, you're not sleepy. <laughs> you're not sleepy, at least. Adliners just dropping in to say hi and hello. Now I go back to work. There we go. <laughs> Hope you have a good rest of your day at work. Thank you so much for joining us, Adliners. Rest two hours. Take it easy and have a good rest of your day. Thank you for being here. At 3 p.m., it's perfect to study to. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I didn't even think about that. Studying while you've got it going on. Awesome. Men! Let me see these. Oopa, 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 oopa. Um... Oh, this does not get translated at all. <laughs> the furthest it translates to this is, damn, I'm pissed. I'm so mad. Oh, there we go. A guy who treats his wife that way is a jerk. I'll scold him instead. I'm sorry for using a sus emoji, Fuchan, but I'm so angry. Sus emoji? Oh, God. Why is this the second time you've had scissors? Wow. Okay. I have no problem with this. <laughs> That's a fucking tiny one this time. At least the last one was bigger. Damn, you're really <laughs> just throwing shade. <laughs> it took me a fucking moment to realize what that was. You could use cow emojis for all kinds of shit. Oh man, if we weren't demonetized before from this <laughs> domestic abuse. There we go. Thank you for donating to the food funds and have a good evening, men. What did I just hear? Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Don't look at it. Don't pay attention to it. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> okay, scary. I went to work in my pajama pants and I only realized after getting up for coffee. That's fucking awesome. Eh, I mean, it's not Friday yet, but just be like, eh, it's a casual day. Who gives a damn? You should be able to wear whatever you want to work unless you literally like need protective equipment. That's the only time they should make you wear stupid shit. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food funds to KSK. I hope you have a fun day. In your pajama. It's <laughs> at work. Have a good time. <laughs> Jesse, Futan, 2 a.m. here. Good night and have a nice day. Oh, thank you so much, Jesse. I hope you have a wonderful evening too. Thank you for joining us. Please rest well. Have a wonderful evening. And sleep well if you're going to bed now. Which I'd imagine you are because it's super late. So yeah, definitely rest well and have a good evening. Um, There were two super chats that were missed between that. Which was... Yanka, what's to Mr. Borg? Ah, I can't wait for more fada. It's always my favorite stream of the week. Happy you met my corpse slave friend last anime impulse. <laughs> Bye, you Borg. Wait. Your corpse slave friend? Oh no, Yanka. Wh which one was it? I don't remember that. Somebody, oh god. Thank you for donating to the food funds. I hope they're doing well. It was nice meeting everyone at anime impulse. <laughs> there were a couple of people that were like doing their best. YouTube's lagging again. Oh, God damn it. Now in the EU? That's interesting. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Yeah, definitely not on my end. Zero dropped frames still. Oh, it's happening to NA as well. Oh, good. It's go lagging all over the world. YouTube has been fun the last few days. <laughs> randomly dropping out numbers. Randomly dropping out connection. And then the fun that happened with The Last of Us with my PS5 overheating. <laughs> Sigh. It starts at 9 a.m. for me. Perfect, because I can listen during work. Thank you, Futan. I'm glad you enjoy the timeline. Like, it, it's definitely the good time for me. I think when we hit daylight savings again, I will push it back like to 10 a.m. So it'll be one hour later. Should be good for some people. <laughs> At least it'll be 7 a.m. instead of 6 a.m. for some people. But yeah, hopefully that'll work out. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. Well, this time Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia is working. Good. They're normally the ones who get the lag. YouTube is finally working their way around to fucking around with other places. Let's go. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food fund, Sai. Have a wonderful evening. Yo, that cow emoji. That sheep is putting in work. <laughs> Yuki Tempest. Otsu Fuchan. Belated, uh, belated Otsu for AI. Unfortunately, due to British debuff, I couldn't fly down and throw hands. But one day, EU sheep will have our opportunity. I hope so. I hope we can do them all over the world. I'm glad you and all the comfies had fun. I had so much fun. I'm actually gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna be doing like a drunk... Well, I say drunk zatsu. I'm gonna be doing a drinking zatsu on Sunday. Uh, leading into the end of the WWE experience stream. So it'll be much later in the evening than usual. I think I'm gonna do it at 6pm EST. 
And so we're going to stream for about three hours and then I'll send you guys to the WWE thing. That'll be the finals of the WWE thing. So I'm not sure if I'll still be there. I'll definitely be there on Saturday. But yeah, I'm going to be drinking for three hours and chatting, doing a Zatsudan. I'm going to be talking about anime impos and some other things that are going on. And shit, well, I guess I already have my weekly schedule out by then. But yeah, just early warning. We're going to have a Zatsudan on Sunday. The first time in a while. It's pure Zatsudan. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy that. And I'll talk about anime impos a lot more because... I know a lot of people want to talk about it. Thank you for donating the food funds and have a good evening, Yuki Tempest. Wow, that name really is going to be there for a few weeks, huh? <laughs> We're going to be stuck with that for a few weeks. Jesse, oh my god, I forgot to say. Aini. Hey, good night, food chan. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds, Jesse. Hope you have a wonderful evening. One on. Take it easy and rest a while. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Zatsu, let's go. Heck yeah. An excuse to drink? Hell yeah. I'm going to be making some interesting drinks as well. I currently have quite a bit of weird alcohol. Um, because I bought some for the holidays and didn't use it all up. Because, despite what I say quite often, I'm not an alcoholic. And so yeah, I've still got quite a bit of weird alcohol left over. So I'll probably mix up some drinks before the thing, take pictures of them and be like, Hey, here's some weird drinks that I'm drinking today. Jenin! Sorry this is so random, but does Doggo snore? Do you snore? If you both snore, who is louder? Hmm. I don't know if I snore. I sleep talk like a bitch, though. I definitely sleep talk. I've been told that. That I sleep talk, like, a lot. I don't know if I snore. Doggo does snore. Not very loud, though. He'll just be laying there, and the side of his mouth will start twitching, and he'll do like a... <laughs> Like, he won't even do, like, the breathe out for any sound. You'll just be his, like, breaths in. You'll hear, like, that kind of sound every few seconds. It's cute. It's cute. It's very rhythmic. He doesn't do it every time, just normally when he's in, like, deep sleep. And then eventually he'll wake himself up with it and, like, jump around a bit. Like, the funniest thing to me is when he wakes himself up with a fart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if he's, like, sleeping really soundly and then he lets out a fart that actually makes out sound, he will, like, jump up and freak out. Start barking his head off. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds, Jenny. <laughs> oh, it's always funny. Yeah, it's great when they end up torturing themselves with things. <laughs> Lo-fi. The way Susan kicked me out right after I sent a super. Damn. Susan really is working hard to make sure we all feel the, la feel the lag. Either way, have a nice day. Have a nice day, Lo-fi. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. YouTube really needs to fix its servers man it's been going like this for like two three months now i remember there was a time that youtube used to be like stable all the time but i don't know maybe it's because there's so many more people they're getting a lot of more people from twitch over to their side so maybe it's just so many more people watching live streams as well as just the service being used more the shit's just going by Hopefully it'll work out Fuchan, will you have your alcohol in a sippy cup this sunday no i don't own a sippy cup that is just a dream of mine I have a sippy cup laying in bed with alcohol. A cocktail in a sippy cup with a single giant ice cube in it. That's the dream, man. That's the dream. I love that somebody drew art of that. <laughs> that was a fun stream. Me and Salomon just going mad last night. <laughs> Poor Ukiki. Ukiki wasn't ready for that kind of energy. Oh my god. I'm glad they invited me though. I had such a good time. So I'm surprised nobody else joined, though. Like, it was an open invite to everyone. So it was nice to just, like, jump in and have a good time. Uh, ah, but it was so nice. Uki was traumatized. <laughs> Uki wanted normal games. Are there ever any normal Valorant games? To be fair. Oh, man. Anyway, let's dive back to the old, 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 old Super Chats. We've been going through the new ones. The first one of today was the huge Aka Super from Nate, which just said... Oh, Jisan. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. We're up to letter O. Holy crap. Oh my God. Wow, we've almost gotten all the way through the alphabet. That's wild to me. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. So many times in a row with so many huge Aka Supers. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you rest well. I hope you take it easy. And thank you so much. Especially since the messages this whole time have just been letters and like jokes based off of the letters. Nia, Zatsu drinking on Lunar New Year? Let's go. 
Yeah, that's part of it as well. I thought we'd talk about like some New Year's resolutions as well. Just kind of like an update to like my streaming goals from when we began. Just, yeah, some thoughts about things that I want to do in 2023. But I kind of missed the opportunity to do that at like Western New Year. So I thought for Lunar New Year, it'd be a good time to do that. God, I keep getting like little hiccups. Hmm. Water. Water saves us. But yeah, I thought that'd be a good time to talk about that, like some of the things I want to do. And especially like some of the things for the membership. I mean, we're going to have the proper membership stream next week where we're just riding and stuff. But like, yeah, putting things together, like I'm going to take a one week break in a couple of weeks as well. So I'm going to talk about that a bit as well. And that's when I'm <clears throat> going to actually like implement some of the things I talked about during the last like membership stream where I was like, OK, I'm putting these videos up. And we're hiring these people to do these things like that kind of stuff. So that'll be good. I also am going to have a Billy Billy stream next week. Uh, it's going to be a Zatsudan with dog. <laughs> so we'll be doing that to chill for a while as well. Uh, we're not sure about the day and time just yet, but it will be, yeah, we'll be asking questions to the Billy Billy fan base and doing a Zatsudan and just chatting with people, not just immediately going in and playing Gucci N3 this time. That'll be good. Okay, back to the old ones. From Kyo. Hi, Fuchan. It was a pleasure meeting you at AI. I'm glad you love the embroidery I made for you in Noctix. Oh, you were the one who did the all oh, the different like um mascot characters. Thank you. Your double war arms when I walked in with the finger hearts was so adorable. <laughs> Thank you so much for making me feel so comfortable. I love you. Thank you so much for donating the food funds, Kyo. That's so sweet. I had so much fun all day with that. And yeah. <laughs> the funny fucking thing is. I kept doing the forearm thing for the photos as well because I was like, ah, it'll be fine. Like, surely I know they're going to take a full body picture for the thing. But when people put them on Twitter, surely they'll crop it up to the fact that there's just two arms. Nobody cropped it. <laughs> Not one person <laughs> cropped the image up to half body. So I just always had four arms. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> It looked a bit silly, but, you know, we got to give, like, finger hearts and confidant grabbing and other silly things. It was, it was good. It was the best part. It was pretty fun. But you had more. Nah, it was forearms for all of these ones. I could certainly have more if I wanted to. But, yeah, that was fun anyway. <laughs> like, when they were introducing us to things. They were, like, teaching us how to do everything at Anime Impulse. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Fiddling around on OBS, like, arms assets more give me more putting in as many as i could before it started <laughs> oh it was fun times um but thank you for donating the food funds thank you for being at anime impulse and i hope you have a wonderful evening <laughs> kichimatsu i realized something about door two earlier today early on in the story white haired girl asked the beast if the fruit he picked is still green and he says it is before correcting himself and saying it's blue oh i wonder if that's Oh, okay, you actually, yeah, you did continue. Okay, there's a second donation from Kichimatsu. Fun fact, for a long time in Japan, blue and green weren't distinguished as separate colors. I was going to say that, yeah. Because they talk about, like, the green trees and the green sky. I mean, the green trees are green. But, I mean, they talk about, like, Aoki. Like, blue wood. Um, blue grass. Like, they use blue and green pretty interchangeably back in the past. And blue to mean fresh kind of thing. Al Sora, the blue sky, things like that. They kind of get used interchangeably. So that's interesting. Yeah, if Yukimasa had essentially learned a new language and so he confused the blue and green, that was actually a really good way for them to kind of touch in on it. Huh. Traffic light is called blue. Oh, yeah, that too. They talk about like blue apples for green apples too, don't they? Green trees are green. Look, man. <laughs> I was confusing myself, okay? <laughs> um, oh, I think they talk about, like, the forest as being blue. Because I remember that from Mushishi a lot as well. Um, the fact that they don't say, like, Midori. They say Ao. Ao for, like, fresh, for, like, green, even though it's blue. Ao means blue. But they use that for, like, green things sometimes as well. So, yeah, that was a good way for them to drop that in right at the beginning. That it was actually him stumbling on the language thing because he's used to those two being said in the same way. Uh, is it the same for Chinese as well? I don't know. Somebody just said it was the same in Korea. Who said that? Uh-oh. 
Uh, blue lights on stoplights even now, but they're green. Ah, okay. I think somebody said it was the same in Korea. I can't find the comment anymore, though. Damn. Shingo. Blue trees? <laughs> blue cheese. How dare. Oh, man. Shang? Green slash blue is similar in Viet, too. Okay. In Vietnamese, it's similar as well. But Yuki Master wasn't born in Japan, right? But I guess Japanese was his first language anyway. Yeah, because it seemed like that's what they were hinting at, that every time it was doing like the X's rather than like the dots or exclamation marks when he was speaking, rather than him just being like, Rrr. he was actually speaking Japanese. Um, so yeah, he was just trying to communicate with people in the language that he first like, like he had amnesia, so he forgot everything else, but it's like base things. <laughs> Not the blue knees. No blue knees. We, we never talk about blue knees again. We're done with that. <laughs> Uh, oh, I missed a super chat. Let's see if I can grab that fresh one. There we go. Chestnut, hope you had a good day. Thank you for the stream. I did. This was a great stream as usual. The house in Father Mora Ghana is always a fun time. Thank you for donating the food funds, Chestnut. Hope you have a good evening. Start that and continue. Um, But yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Kichimatsu. I don't think I would have noticed that otherwise, so thank you. Giselle. Already can tell I'm dying laughing the entire stream. At least it was only the beginning of that one. At least, yeah, it was only the secret through the mirror. It wasn't the entire door had a Giselle in it. But thank you for donating the food funds, Giselle. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself and have a good evening. Mira Joe, purple looks good on you. Love from Canada. Thank you, Mira Joe. That's very sweet of you. I love the purple maid outfit. It's great. Plus, it makes my booba look huge. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here and I hope you have a good evening. Oh god, that scared me. It was just a switch like going into power saving mode. It suddenly got dark everywhere and I was like, oh. <laughs> Ashole, Folger, Fusama. Not father. I like your voice acting. Emphasis on emotion and narration. How you give your opinions. Word limit reach. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food fund. Ashole, I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah, I don't think the streams would be nearly as late like, be like a quarter as long if i didn't just theorize half my way through them. oh god some people hate that but yeah i'm glad you guys enjoy that and nobody even spoils me anymore recently it's been great there were a lot of spoilers like in the first chapter or two but yeah well not even the second chapter i'd say yeah the first chapter people were so interested in like jumping in and being like yeah you got this right no it's this here's this thing um, so yeah, I'm glad that at this point it's just like, hmm, everybody's just letting me theorize and go wild, ignoring me if I say something stupid. It's great. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds, Ash Hall, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Minidu, now that I think about it, ever considered audiobooks? You're lots of fun to listen to. Glad I popped out today. We'll definitely be back, broski. Oh, thank you, Minidu. Um, if I could get work on audiobooks, I would probably be interested in it. I feel like that's a very odd thing to get into, though. I feel like you have to, like, know someone in the business. Because I've never, like, seen people ever, like, ask for people to work on audiobooks. A lot of the time, they go for, like, already established voice actors or, like, celebrities and things. Thank you for donating the food funds. It would be fun to do, for sure. Hope you have a wonderful evening, and please rest while. Wow. <laughs> that's going to be a big sippy cup, Yuki. Also, wow, that is a Fuchan in a... Cage. I'm glad you're having fun with your food chan puppet. Thank you for donating the food funds, Yuki Tempest. <laughs> Thank you for the huge haka super. I think that's more of like the alcohol funds than the sippy cup funds. <laughs> sippy cup well funded beyond that. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well and take it easy, Yuki. Oh, we even got the gift at the same time. Perfect timing. <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, it's for both. Okay, that works too. <laughs> thank you. Um, Ksenia, thank you for donating the food funds. No message, but thank you so much for donating. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. I hope you have a wonderful evening and please do rest well. And Rain, if it's hard to read, I am sorry. Oh, the next bit's in Korean. Um, I'm glad I'm watching you play this game. I hope you enjoy it. Your voice acting makes it much more enjoyable to watch. I'm looking forward to when you continue it. 
Korean says, I'm really sorry. Hi. 정말 미안해요. 안녕. 안녕. Oh, wait, what's 안녕하세요? Let me find that out. Let me use my... Um, don't tell me, chat. I would, I would mess with Google this way. I'm going to open it up. Korean. I'm going to use my microphone and see if it can understand me. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. It doesn't understand me at all. <laughs> 사랑해. I don't think it's working. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's not picking up any audio, apparently. My microphone does not work on the YouTube, on the Google Translate. This is fine. Um, So it just means hello? Okay, it, it just literally is a more polite way of saying hello, huh? That's okay, then. Anyway, what was the bit at the end, Rain? Thank you for donating the food funds. Um, Good job, fighting! 수고했어, 물결표. Fighting, 물결표. Fighting! I like he translates the exclamation mark too. 수고했어. 수고했어. I like that. It kind of reminds me of like, 수고이. 수고했어. Good job. Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening. OG Sanji for real? No, it normally worked in the past. I think it's just like decided my microphone is a different microphone right now. It's probably connected to like, I don't know. A virtual microphone or one of the many that I have for other things that aren't currently active. That's not on me. <laughs> that's on, that's on, yeah, I guess, Google Chrome, honestly. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food funds, Rain. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, I say you like one of the only ones I know. <laughs> Nia, Atsufuchan. Brain is cooking hard today, lol. Everything about Jacopo screams Othello syndrome to me. Oh, this is where we started reading them. Okay. Thank you for donating the food funds. And you're not wrong. Once I actually like read up on that. Yeah. He just kind of sucks, honestly. <laughs> I don't like him. But Chan, how do you feel about being called grandpa? I don't care what you do off the screen off the stream you know what happens if you call me that on here i'll instantly time you out i have allowed ajushi i have allowed ojisan i have not allowed the english version of uncle and i have not allowed grandpa or father you will get timed out and you will be blocked go for it wow somebody even hit me with the opa how dare folga opa sarange fighting how dare Oh, Jenny, thank you for donating the food funds. Your Korean is so cute. Taskaru. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I wish I actually knew Korean. It seems like a fun language to know. <laughs> it's definitely a nice sounding one. But this is okay. Iji Sanji Lava. Hey, Fuchan. Didn't you get to say this yesterday? But it was so nice to meet you last weekend. Thanks for naming my sheep. His name is now Riku Tazu Sheep. Yes. I wasn't sure if you'd actually like that name or not. It was a very silly name. But thank you for coming. Thank you for carrying around the little Riku Tazavi and the little sheep. And yeah, it was nice meeting you too. I'm so glad you got to meet so many other people as well. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. And please do rest well. Thank you for donating to the food funds. God, that was so fun. Anime Impulse was so good. I hope we get to do more like that soon. Okay, we're moving on to Streamlabs. There has been a lot of Streamlabs donations today. A lot of big Streamlabs. Oh my God, Joshua. What the heck? Oh my god, Shine! What the heck? Okay, so we have a couple from yesterday I have to read too. You guys got me while I wasn't taking... Uh, uh, super Chats. You got me on Streamlabs. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. I will start going through these after this final stream. Yeah, super Chat. King Roger. I just received my tiny food puppet today. He's so cute. I don't have a job, but I think my mom's Tupperware should survive. Nani. <laughs> um, I'm going to get rid of that comment. Uh-huh. I. Whatever you want to do with your food puppet is up to you. Have a fun time. Thank you for donating the food funds. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> Question mark. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this dark music now too let's put it to more gentle music okay i did save the game right yeah i saved like multiple times i think yeah i always like two save slots okay that's good because we're gonna play fire emblem 
engage this week, which means it's going to get closed and not just suspended. Okay, next up, what music should we play? I haven't heard Legatus 505 lo fi in a while. There we go. Okay, that'll be good. Put him in the top of where? Fight me. So, from yesterday's Streamlabs. Streamlabs is a word. Shine. Hi, Fuchan. I'm new here. Okay. Quite new, but I joined a month ago. But I did watch VODs. And you confirmed during the meet and greet that I'm qualified as a confidant. So I bar you. Oh, you were the one wearing red and black. Thank you for always giving the best advice. I know you love us. Love you. Thank you for the huge donation of the food funds for one thing, Shine. But that's so sweet of you. Yeah, I wish you qualified as a confidant. What the heck? I love the outfit. It was really nice. We definitely need to get everyone sheep horns, though. I think that would be funny. <laughs> like, whether you're cosplaying or not, like, if you're a confidant at a convention, we need to get everybody some sort of sheep horns. Then we'll know for sure. And confidants will just be able to see each other and just point, e point at each other like the Spider-Man meme. And be like, oh, confidant. <laughs> but thank you so much for donating the food funds. Thank you for being at Anime Impulse. It was such a pleasure to meet you. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, don't read out loud. Okay. They never did. Don't worry about it. Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening and thank you for joining us. Luther, welcome back, Fuchan. The Last of Us Ikuzo. Hope you have an amazing time with this game. I did. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> We're definitely going to be continuing The Last of Us over the next few weeks and finishing it. Um, I think it's supposed to be like 15 hours long. So we'll probably do that in like, yeah, three to four streams. Three to four weeks. That'll be over pretty quickly. Which is good. <laughs> we now have... How many do we have? Three or four long running games? Let's see. <laughs> we have... I am Living Gage, House and Father Morgana, Danganronpa 1. Danganronpa 1's probably only got like three to four weeks left as well, though. Damn, we're going to shred two like immediately. This is fine. <laughs> Dream Daddy. Yeah, at least Dream Daddy we're finishing off this week. Oh, Joel the Dream Daddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a bit different. Um, I was going to say... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, there's another thing that's coming back next week. <laughs> Something people have been requesting. A group game. Look forward to that. I love being stupid. Amagure, thank you for donating the food funds. No message, but a cute little cow emoji. What does this say? We thought. I thought. Oh. I was wondering what it said. It says, I thought. Let's go. <laughs> coming back, a group game. Alan Bink being stupid? Well, I said I love being stupid, not Alan Bink being stupid. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing the fact that there's a group game that, like, has a continuous storyline that's coming back next week. You may hire. Thank you for donating the food funds. No message, but I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you have a wonderful evening. But please rest well. What do you mean, League of Legends? Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> Bula, to check your live for the stream, fool fool. Good to see you streaming again. My first time watching a zombie gameplay and it was so fun. I can already smell the group family trope with the dad, uncle, and daughter. Yeah, I wonder how long it's going to take them to find Tommy. Because yeah, I think it would be nice if it was the three of them, but it's also nice just like getting these two a bonding, a bunch of bonding moments for now. Oh wait, you don't even mean Tommy, you mean Frank. Right, I forgot we met Frank near the end. <laughs> yeah, Frank is pretty cute as well. Not like the blood related uncle, but he definitely feels like an uncle. Like, he's the annoying uncle rather than the cool uncle. I love Ellie continuously giving him the finger and shit. It's great. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds, Bula. I hope you have a wonderful evening and rest well. Yuki Tempest. I don't like the way that's phrased, so I'm not going to read it. <laughs> it's not offensive. It's just like, oh, God. Thank you for donating the food funds. And you're welcome? Question mark. <laughs> Outer. Thank you for donating the food funds. No message. Just an adorable little cow emoji. Sending a superstar. Where can I send this? There. Perfect. Ellie was a mood. Yeah, she was. <laughs> Ellie was having a lot of fun. <laughs> Maybe Minecraft? Hell no. Oh, God, no. I saw people seeing Apex as well. Oh, God, no. 
Uh, thought I'd stop by. It's 3 a.m. here. I'm going to sleep later, Fireheart Frost. Have a good time. Thank you for stopping by and have a wonderful evening. Also, Joshua, can we talk about the triple, multiple level Arca Supers today on Streamlabs? Thank you so much for donating the food funds. That's so much. Thank you so much. You're way too sweet. The one comment says, love weight by doggy. <laughs> it didn't feel like love. I'll tell you that much. It was freaking annoying. It was literally like every time I put my arms down on the ground and started to push myself up, he would just like, not even like lengthwise. It would be like width wise. He would just like step over me and just crouch down on me. It was so aggravating. He did it like four times in a row. I had to like, like get him to sit down and wait as I got up. It was so aggravating. <laughs> A Chad for real. A Chad for real. I thought you meant dog at first. So I was going to be like, no, a dick for real. But yeah, no. Joshua and Chad. <laughs> and the second message, one of them was messageless, but the final message was, Atsufufu. I love the music and the gothic theme so much. I always get to know amazing games from you. I'm adding it to my game list. Yo, let's go. I hope you enjoy it. Like I said, this has been the best storyline I've played in like ages and ages and ages. So I hope you enjoy the story when you play it on your own time. I hope you enjoy it so much. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Rest well. Have a lovely evening. And thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Wait, what? Who's dick? No. Dog was acting like a dick. We're not talking about anyone's actual dick. Although that cow emoji earlier was someone slicing off somebody. That was an interesting moment in its own way. This is fine. Um, K Pancake Roll. Hi, Forger. Jacopo is an asshole. This reminds me of the 1920s more than the hustle in the 1860s. True. I have a law question again. I'm sorry. Is there other groups besides the Cheshire Cat or the Auxilia? I hope you had decaf today and had a good day. Ah, you. Cheshire Cat isn't really a group. Wait, Cheshire Cat? There was Chatty Cathy. There was Fellas Nix. What's Cheshire Cat? Interesting. Well, there is a couple of other groups other than like the Black Eagles, the Auxilia, the Ligati, but we'll go into those at a different time. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like Chatty Cathy wasn't really a group. It was just like a thingy thing. Thank you for donating the food funds, K Pancake Roll. Did I have a brain fart? Maybe I had a brain fart. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food funds. No, it's fine. I might have had a brain fart. Maybe it's something I don't remember right now. I've said I'm going to have to reread my own work before I can dive back into things. <laughs> oh, man. Little, little sheep, thank you for donating the food funds. No message, but that's so sweet of you. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well. Take it easy and have a good time. Collective brain cell doko. It's gone. Asoko. Far, far Asoko. But we will never find it. <laughs> I can read the message, but I can't read the name. Okay. As someone who has a variation of Michelle as her real name, it's very weird to hear you say it repeatedly today. <laughs> TY for the stream today, though. Your commentaries and VA make it much more enjoyable. I'll wait to see more in the future. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Yeah, that must be weird. <laughs> At least it's just about nobody called Folger in the world. Other than like Folger Arjunath from like Monster Hunter games. <laughs> There's a lot of food chance, but not a lot of Folgers. So I'm pretty safe with that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Michelle. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for donating the food funds and rest well. Um, Sister thank you for donating the food funds. No message, but I hope you have a wonderful evening. And Akari, thank you for the stream. What is this? Is this a butterfly cow emoji? Or is it It's a flat flower? Chat, I'm going to need your help with this. Confidence. What does this look like to you? <laughs> I'm not sure. It could be a butterfly. Or it could be like a flower in the middle of things. Sheep? I don't think it's a sheep. A dog? How would that be a dog? A face, a bear, a fluffy doggo. It's a sheep. You think that's a sheep? Am I wild? Animal? With cheeks. Dog, bear, animal face? Looks scary. I thought it was a butterfly. I didn't think it was a sheep or a bear. If it's a sheep or a bear, what, what, what's the thing up above its eyes in the middle? It has swirly cheeks? Oh. 
fluffy face. Don't you see a nose? If that's a nose, then it's like way up above the middle, though. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's a cute sheep with two hands. Okay. Could it be a pussy? Oh, okay. Okay, pancake girl. Looks like a bear or a dog. Okay. Well, you guys can see better than me then. The middle thing is a nose and a mouth. Huh. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a big fluffy. The eyes are the things to the side of what I thought was a flower. The, the big things that I thought were like the big eyes are actually swirly cheeks. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Now I get it. It's <laughs> okay. It's an ooh woo face. Anything can be an ooh woo face if you try hard enough. <laughs> this was a Rorschach test, and apparently I failed it. I did not want to see something cute. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food fund, Zakari. I hope you have a wonderful evening. And bullet again. Okay. I don't know if this is victim blaming because that's not my intention. I'm just waiting for white haired girl to break out of this repetitive loop. I get the lady maid's frustration. Repetition is the path to insanity, after all. Also, Tascari, because the fluffy hair looks so cute on you. Yeah, I have a version without the hat, too. Let me dive back to this for a minute. Um. Um. Oh, but, oh, but, oh, but that. This. And then also this. Yeah, we also have a version without the hat. That's just the fluffy hair. I think it looks really good. Ageha Snow always does, like, such beautiful assets. And this hair does actually really look nice. I love the fluffy hair. The fluffy little wavy curls. Let's freaking go. Just a shame that Jacopo is such a douchebag. But yeah, that's beautiful hair asset. With the hat. Not as cool. Not as cool. He kind of fucks it up. Without the hat? Fuck yeah. Fluffy soft boy. <laughs> Thank you anyway. <laughs> Oh man, thank you for donating the food bullet. And yeah, don't worry about it. I get what you mean. We just want to like break the cycle. Yeah. It'd be nice if she could get out of it. E boy Folger? How oh, dare. Milady Fedora? Oh. Yeah, yeah. At least he doesn't. Well, I mean, I guess he acts like a tier three simp. Kidnapping someone and just deciding that they're your wife and locking them away in a tower. She has legit repeated history at this point, being locked away. God damn. That just sucks. Yeah, hopefully she'll break out of it. Hopefully she'll start speaking her mind more often. I just want to ruffle the hair. Hell yeah. The hair looks so soft. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food funds bullet. You may hire. Places is here. Nothing to say. Well, thank you for donating the Streamlabs as well. And the Super Chats today. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for the donations. Please rest well and take it easy. Um, Satoshi. <laughs> Why are there so many Kalmoji in a row? Wait a goddamn minute. So. <coughs> sorry. So we got Satoshi who posted this one. A cute little sheep with his curly little horns. And then Yanas, thank you for donating the food funds. Posted this one. A cute little face handing over a coin. You okay? Yeah, I just coughed. Um... And then we had Stella. Thank you so much for donating to the food fund. Proposed in a cute little face giving a love heart. Oh my god. Just all three in a row. Just so many Kalmoji. <laughs> Let's freaking go. I hope you guys have a good time. Ah, uh, thank you for all donating the food funds as well. I for Dan. My final test is so terrible. I think I maybe won't have red envelopes this year. That's okay. As long as you spend time with your funny. Who needs a red envelope? I'm sure you'll get one anyway. Just, you know, it'll work out. It'll work out. Happy New Year. <laughs> but yeah, don't worry about it. We all have bad days. Just work harder and do better the next time. Um, but, 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 sheep tail. Talking about Fada Morgana, the prequel adds another story that does not tell a complete timeline and improves the worldview in karma. If you like this game, you can consider to play this one. Oh, thank you, sheep tail. So the prequel is worth playing then. It doesn't tell a complete timeline, but it improves the worldview in Karma. Okay. I know there is like a sequelish thing. I think it's a sequelish thing. Thank you anyway. Now I know that that one will be interesting. Oh, thank you for the gifted. M. James Lim, thank you so much for donating five membership to the sheep pile. And welcome to our new membership. It's lovely to have you here. 
Hope you have a wonderful evening and thank you all so much for joining. Puppy! Thank you for donating the food funds. Another cow emoji. This one's a very big puppy. <laughs> thank you for donating the food funds. The only message is this adorable cow emoji. Sleeping dog. Snoring dog. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful evening. Um, sheep tail. Correcting what I just sent. The prequel supplements the story that's not finished in the original game. Ah, which belongs to another timeline. Sorry, I'm too sleepy. My brain is broken. Don't worry about it. It's fine. So it expands the worldview and it like not telling like part of a storyline. It actually finishes the storyline from the game. Cool. So yeah, we definitely have to play the prequel. So they just must like leave something open somewhere in the game. And then the prequel will actually finish that off. That's very cool. Thank you for letting us know. Then we're definitely going to play it. Frick. I need to get working on permissions. <laughs> this is fine. Thank you for donating the food funds. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. No one in the sheep pile has a brain. It's okay. Wait, what? I hope the sheep pile has a brain. I mean, we all have one shared brain cell, right? Huh? Why so cute, Fuchan? I'm not being cute. I'm just reposting the cow emoji other people have posted. I'm being perfectly normal. Okay, that's all the Streamlabs done. So now I can just chat to you guys for a while. No more money exchanging hands. Only chat back and forth. What do you guys think of the stream today? What do you guys think of Jacopo? What are you looking forward to coming up? We're playing Played Up today on Millie's channel. It is Wednesday, right? Yeah, it is Wednesday. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yes, yeah, so we've got even more streams coming out today. Brains are yummy, not gonna lie. Ah, oh, DeSono has been taken by the zombie virus. Fungi. Ah, uh, that's a different game. <laughs> we only have one collective brain cell. That's what I believe. The stream was nice. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Jack Trade. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Don't do it, Kabalum, Kabalanimbus. I remembered the name the second time I read it. <laughs> it was so fun. Good. I want to punch him. Yeah, fuck Jacopo. Never felt so mad about a character in a long time. I feel that. Uh, he's definitely going to get his revenge, though. That's the good thing about this game. Eventually, everybody gets absolutely destroyed. Chat time. Let's go. I enjoyed today's stream so much. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Not that David couldn't voice him. <laughs> Played up with Millie. Yeah, it should be fun. Uh, probably be full of rage, actually. He'll probably be very angry. <laughs> Great. I love this game. He's cool. Plants versus zombies. We are the zombies. Oh. <gasps> What about plants versus zombies? But I mean, technically, is a fungus a plant? It's kind of plant adjacent, right? It's not really a plant. But yeah, in that case, when it comes to The Last of Us, it's plants and zombies. It's plants combined with zombies. Hmm. Blacken, thanks to the stream. Wink, wink. At least it's not a wink, wonk. I'm fine with that. Thank you for donating the food funds. Wink, wink. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for being here. Please rest well and take it easy. I always love Fada. I want to die world, Jacopo. Wait a minute. You didn't even censor it. Normally when people do that, they do the whole like D word or K word, but okay, die word. That works. Fada Moro easily became one of my favorite series. Woohoo. You always have base choices for streams. Uh, not always. But yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this one. It's a lot of fun. A die word. It's like its own kingdom, I think, for fungi. Yeah, I don't think it actually works in like the plant kingdom. I think it has its own thing. But yeah, it was just like hmm. plants versus zombies. Why not both? Plant zombies. Did you know that humans have more in common with than mushrooms have with plants? I did not know that. That's kind of wild. That we're closer to plants than mushrooms are. Mushrooms feel very close looking from afar. And that's fair enough. Okay, yeah, I, I think from now on <laughs> We're gonna say We're just gonna make it a general rule Maybe we don't use cow emoji that involve genitalia Cow emoji with genitalia Probably not a good idea From now on, even if it's a super chat You will be timed out And you will be blocked if you do it continuously <laughs> But yeah, just in the future Maybe no genitalia shown on stream and chat Oh, not a great idea <laughs> Sarah It was very nice to meet you at AI I was the Uki cosplayer with the sore throat and voice cracks. Oh, thank you so much. Want to let you know I'm almost 100% better. Drink tea, took medicine, and hydrated. Thank you, fool. That was such a nice meeting. Thank you so much for being there. I remember that. 
I, I felt your pain because like a couple weeks ago I was in exactly the same position so I understand that completely <laughs> thank you for donating the food funds it was so nice to meet you I loved your comfy jumper too it kind of made me warm just seeing that and I was like yo I need it I need it <laughs> have a wonderful evening I'm glad you feel better and pleased to continue to take care of yourself the natural world is wild yeah it is I don't usually like saving up for stuff because I'm an impulse buyer. I spent a thousand pesos on voice packs today. <laughs> no. But now I'm saving for Fada Moru. I hope you enjoy Fada Moru. That's a lot of money on voice packs. I hope you enjoy them though. Oh god. Ooh. I bought the Fada Moru game and plan to play it in a few weeks when my short-term memory kicks in. Short-term memory not working right now? Makes sense. Why would you call me out like this? You literally said it on stream. I have a comment grabber. You want me to put you in the shame corner? I can put you in the shame corner. You shouldn't be ashamed of it though. As long as you're happy with your spending habits, it's all good. It's all good. It's worth it. Voice packs are awesome. Literally dropped in again after getting dinner and Fuchan was talking about genitalia. We didn't mean to. <laughs> we just came up. You would think that would be a thing that would be like an obvious not needed to be put in the rule section kind of thing. It's just like, hey... Maybe no genitals. Uh, genitals in the chat section. Probably not a good idea. But yeah, now it's happened three times. Twice today. You're never safe in this chat. True. You never know when a genital is just going to pop out of you. Maybe that's why they call it a pee pee. Because it goes pee pee. It just suddenly appears. Certainly. <laughs> when you're going through puberty, it certainly appears when you don't want it to a lot. <laughs> Oh my god. Food chan like a kid getting caught. We didn't mean to. I'd say that's more Rex than me. Posting a comment in chat and then being like, how could you read that out loud? How could you put me on blast? That's up to them. Anyway. Def Kuzu, thank you for the fun of stream, sir. I really love this game and your VA is always amazing. I just finished watching the VOD yesterday. Now I have another to look forward to. Heck yeah. I hope you enjoy it, Defkuzu. Thank you so much for joining us. Three whole sets of genitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PP suddenly appears. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. It was a sad time in every every life. We could compile our own scolding voice pack out of all the shame, shame, shame and bad confidant sprays. You could. You could try. You could try. I don't want to talk about puberty with you, please, no. We're not going to. A comment got made, and now we're done. We're free. Can someone get me a brainwash, please? <laughs> Good luck. You never escape. You never escape. Here, I thought you meant Pepe the Frog. That's very different, Sudoku. I don't even pronounce the same way. <laughs> Pepe. Okay, guys. Okay. <laughs> Tomasa was my favorite voice in the stream, next to Michelle. Yo, let's go. I love doing the Tomasa voice, too. Thank you, Kiro Bane. And yeah... Michelle's a good one too. Michelle, I'm having a lot of fun with. I'm just interested to know what kind of character he is at this point. It should be fun. I don't need a scolding pack. I already have depression. Yeah, the voices in my head scold me enough. Why would I need more? Why would I need more? I was actually, uh, there's a lot of us missing a lot of voice packs recently just because they're giving us so many and they happen so early. We just kind of run out of time on them with all the other work we've got doing. I, I had a script written out for them. There was going to be an archivist doing a, a pampering and a goddess doing a scolding, but I couldn't record it in time because my voice was fucked. So that's fun. This is fine. Joining back in the stream, hearing that combo wasn't something on my bingo. Well, there you go. It's a bonus space on the 2023 bingo, and we caught it early. I didn't even think about that fact. I forgot about the fact that the maid's face became swirly at one point. That was kind of wild. Just because we were starting to find out more of our memories. I wonder if she's going to completely change form. Or if she's just going to disappear. I don't know. It was very creepy. But it will be interesting to find out what happens with that in the future. Uh, my god. Thank you for the stream. Otsufu-chan. No problem. I hope you enjoyed the stream, my god. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening and please rest well. <laughs> okay. We're done talking about the G word. It's okay. Oh, the different G word. The the pee pee word. <laughs> I'll recycle the previous voice packs. It's all right. Yeah, don't worry about it. Can we hear it now? No. 
No, you cannot. Now it's not a voice back. Ah, they'll probably let me re-record it a few months, like 12 months. <laughs> Double bingo. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. I'm coughing a lot today. One second. I wonder if it's because I fell down earlier. I'm kind of hurting a bit to cough right now, too. Hmm. Okay, I'm alive. The jump scare from Maria made me lose my soul a bit. That was fucking great, man. The skull face. The fact we didn't know it was Maria at that point as well made it actually feel like shit was going down. Ah, oh, it was so good. Maybe as we gradually remember, we will remember or see her actual form. That could be. Which would be interesting in its own way. If we see her revealed as Morgana, if she is Morgana. Or if it's something else. King Roger, you of all people should know exactly which word it is. You're the one who posted it. Got my eye on you. Was it cold outside? Yeah, I mean, I slipped on the ice, so. It was pretty fucking cold. It was not fun, but it's okay now. Hope you're okay now. I'm good. Don't worry about it. It's just, yeah, it just kind of hurts to cough a bit. Like I said, I've got a wicked scrape on my elbow. The left side of my neck is kind of tight. But other than that, like, I'm perfect. I'm fine. We got through a whole stream today. We're good. Um, NKO Dice taught us well. Exactly. We talked so much about PPs on NKO Dice. <laughs> oh my god. Min, thank you for donating the food funds. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. I can already see the sorry at the end. We're just like saying it clearly for the future. Once again, I sincerely apologize for causing trauma by showing ugly emojis in the eyes of Fuchan and Confidence. It's okay. Just, yeah, now we've said it out loud. No cow emoji of genitalia. <laughs> the fact that that had to be said. The one time it happened before, it was like, that's kind of wild. But yeah, happening again. Let's just not do it again. Thank you for donating the food funds, men. <laughs> we hope we don't have to time you out again. <laughs> have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Mio Art cried, Atsufu! And your throat kun. Your voice sounds so comfy, I've fallen asleep, so I missed the gameplay. But I need to watch the VOD again. So thank you so much for playing my favorite game, The Last of Us 2. PS5 version looks so different than PS4. Yeah, they upgraded it a lot. I've played by PS4. Yeah, I think they've added little bits to the story as well. But I've seen like some side-by-side -side comparisons of the two different versions. And like the emotions displayed on the faces are so different. Like, you could tell it's a full-on remake rather than just a remaster. Because yeah, they must have redone like all of the facial tracking and everything as well. Which I'm really happy about. It's been really beautiful to play. I'm just sorry I was so stupid and let my PS5 overheat last time. Man, that killed some of the hype in the middle of that stream. At least we actually got it working clearly at the end. Like, we'll know that for the future. PS5 get very hot. I've never had a console that overheats that much. I guess it's because it's like next gen and so powerful and everything. Makes sense. Yes, the lag of us, the true horror game. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for toning the food funds me or rock ride. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for being here. I learned a ton in that NKO dance game. Praise the Monko King. Amen. <sighs> he did not want to be there at all. And he won everything. He's probably going to win WrestleMania as well, man. It's just fate. It's just fate. He already won WrestleMania once. He's going to win WrestleMania again. <sighs> Pain. Suffering. I was watching yesterday's stream at the airport. Another game I was happy about. Let's go. Hope you had a fun trip wherever you were after. The lag in the stream is an experience. May it never be an experience we repeat. Oh, that shit sucked. I know seven words in Japanese and all of them were from NKO Dice. That's not good. <laughs> You've got to learn more swear words too. You can't just learn the dirty ones. You've got to learn the insulting ones too. Then you're good enough. <laughs> then you'll know when people are saying shit to you. Then it's perfect. <laughs> oh my god. The legendary old Monko. The amount of fan art that came out of that was so funny as well. Watching that stream was an experience. <laughs> you know all you need to know. If you say so, Air Chan. <laughs> oh, it was Anime Info. So I was going back home. Okay. That's good then. Hope you had a safe trip home. Sorry I'm late. Don't worry about it. We're actually about to start now. Kusogaki? How dare you? Who's a Kusogaki? Couldn't be me. 
I'm an OG son. I'm an old man. I don't know what you mean. Sasu got psychic. Yeah, he influences the games. <gasps> it's cheating. It's cheating. Okay. With that said, I think we're ready to end the stream for today. Kusoji. Kusoji. <laughs> I don't mind Kusoji, actually. I'm fine with Kusoji. <laughs> anyway, we're going to end the stream for now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a good time. Um, later tonight at 9 p.m. EST, so in seven hours, almost to the dot, uh, we're going to be on Millie's channel playing Played Up. So a cooking game. We're going to rage at each other. We might murder each other. We'll see if she's feeling okay first today. <laughs> I hope she's feeling okay. She had a bit of a fever the last few days. And she's been pretty weak over the last few weeks. So she better be taking care of herself. Then tomorrow... Is Thursday? Is it Thursday yet? It is Thursday. Is that my day off? Do I have a day off tomorrow? I don't feel like I should. I do have a day off tomorrow. Doesn't feel right. Okay. I guess I have offline work to... Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of offline work to do tomorrow. I was like, why would I schedule a day off? Next week's going to be hella hectic. Uh, that's another thing I'm going to talk about, like, during the Zatsudan. But we're basically going to have two weeks of a lot, a lot, a lot of streams. Probably a lot of double streams. And then, then yeah, I'm probably going to take a full week off. And then we're going to be back to full energy after that. Because, yeah, yeah, fun times. So with that said, thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, played up in several hours. Day off tomorrow. We come back on Friday for Fire Emblem Engage. Which may well end up becoming an endurance stream. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's every possibility that we also schedule Fire Emblem Engage like two to three times next week. I might be a little addicted to that game. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Hopefully it will be a healthy level of addiction. We'll just do like a normal five hour stream. And not a 10 hour stream which may happen we'll see anyway <laughs> do not be led astray my confidants thank you so much for joining me today i hope you all have a wonderful evening and as always i will catch you guys next time and as usual on the way out i want to say a special thank you to all of the people who have joined the membership today all of our returning members, all of those who have joined for the first time, and everybody who donated membership to the Sheep Pile, including Luthier, thank you so much for the gifted membership, Nola R, Altair, Mir, D Sono, Giselle, Chio Shu, Purple Yura, Mien, Jihon, See the Day, or See the Day? There's no capitals, it could be either. Eren, thank you so much for gifting five membership to the Sheep Pile. Exu, Karu, Shura, Ellie, Shao, Rum Coffee. Itsuka, Gigi, Shaw, Sweet Tori, thank you so much for gifting five membership to the Sheep Pile. Disona, Camille, Yolan Pogda, IVK384, aka Kate, Nabi, Vin Yaku, Coco Bear, Akian, Ray, Shiro, Aika. I'm Ron. I can't believe this name has stuck this whole time. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow is better. I always, I always thought I'm Ron was just a silly joke name that would disappear, but 10 months. <laughs> 10 months. Dark chocolate. Navy. Sofu Sofu Meow Meow. Dior. Morning. Melanie Primus. Efim Macabre. Ming Ming. Oh, and Ming Ming, thank you for donating your membership to the Sheep Pile, too. It's so sweet of you. Izumi. Hey, dear, stay here. Your name. 
Sav Savahagen. Message. Kami of Chaos. Pear Ploy. Mario. Maple Chaw. Zero Thirty. Me Saw. And finally, M. Jane Lim. Thank you so much for gifting five membership to the sheep pile. And with that said, we are going to end the stream here. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you had a wonderful evening. And on my way out, I'm going to send you guys over to Pomu, who's playing Minecraft. Thank you for being here. Do not be led astray, my confidants. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.